Come on, let's go have sex now. It's been too long.
30 on the nose. We're here, Bradford, Connecticut. And we're very happy to have you here on WPIG 1651, rocking out the hits since 1982. And we got a fun one for you today. A very fun one, as always. It, it, it looks to be extremely robust. I can put it that way, right? Extremely robust. We started this employment series thinking that it was going to be maybe a two-time... God damn it! I Justine is still there! The ghost of I Justine, top right of your screen. She wants to steal Cat's backpack. I have to stop that, I Justine. Please! Anyways, I forgot what I was saying. I have to fix that problem. <laughs> I don't know why I Justine is still here, but... Maybe she wants to be here in some way. In some way, she wants to be in the studio as long as possible. And I'll give her that right, if she wants it that badly. Anyways, you know, the employment series, I thought maybe it was a two-parter, but as we've, the more we figured out, the more we went through this, it does, it does seem to be, we're going to need one episode for every stop along his job journey, which means this is part three, Circuit City. Next up, we got Best Buy. After that, it's time for the penultimate, the one that's going to take six hours, the Sikorsky episode. That should be a fun one, a celebration of all we've learned so far. And yes, everything will be on the final exam, everybody. 6051 in the house here. WPIG. Before we get to the show here, let's get to a little bit of business style announcements. Remember, on Saturday, we're starting. Density Scrolls taking a little break, but that's no big deal because we got every Ask the King coming at you starting Saturday night. The title is probably going to be Monkey Spank Monologues because that's a hype name. I just didn't make the, fo I didn't make the thumbnail for it yet, but that's coming up on Saturday night. Get hyped for that. Also, in terms of this stream you're watching right the fuck now, we have two new cards added to the pool of things you can do with that pool command with 10,000 cat coin, which everyone seems to have so many fucking points now already. I'm, 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 I'm eagerly... I, 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 I'm not going to do a reset this time, but damn, you guys got a lot of points fast. I'll say that we got like mil fucking billionaires already. But anyways, the first card available for today, freshly added to the pool just before I started the stream, is the lovely and talented I Justine card. Vapid and worthless content since 2007. That's hype pull right there. Good luck to you getting that one. Also, we have another one for the lore masters out there. This one is more niche, but equally as hype. Say hello to the second Latina. The second Latina. Pretty eyes, but chubby. I used the, uh, the power of AI to create that one. I didn't create it, actually. I stole it from someone else I found on Google. But the second Latina has now entered the fray. And also, I'm, I'm doing a little thing where, you know, as this tries to be a welcoming place for people that aren't as uh, crazy about the lore as all of us are, you, I'm trying to make sure everything has a link. So, for example, if you want to learn about the second Latina, you can do second Latina. And you'll get a link to that part, to a little bit of the story there, and then you'll get a link to the part of the video. So you get, uh, you know, a 180 character breakdown, and then you get the link to that part of the show. So if you ever want to learn about anything, it's all there. And of course, you can do it all in commands as well. All the links are there. So for example, I Justine as well. You can do that. And it will say what? It will say, in 2017, DSP said in his Twitch chat, the only reason I Justine was hired by EA was that she was getting gangbanged by the staff. And there's the link. There's the link there. So it's going to take a while to fill out all that shit. But hopefully for anyone that's not as up to date on the lore, you can learn it quickly. And there is the link for what you need to see if you want to learn more. So everything's going to be in the exam. So get fucking ready, okay? Get fucking ready. Uh, also, uh, sad news. Could be an L news. Brandu cannot join us, unfortunately, because he has some work commitments. But some people might call that an L. And what's the opposite of an L? An A. And I consider that A.W. because Brandy is going to join us for later episodes in the job series that are more impactful than even this one, right? So hopefully, maybe we can get him in definitely for the Sikorsky. That would be a fucking win, right? Sikorsky, we need Brandy in the house. Because Sikorsky is going to be a fun one. But anyways, that's it, for the, that's it for the business style announcements. Of course, that being said, goes live 3.30 Eastern Standard Time today. So we'll see how long this takes. If, it, if I finish before then, we'll get some music going. If not, we'll see what happens. But, with that being said, let's get to it, okay? So, we're going to start our journey, of course, in chronological order today. And we're going to take you to my favorite website and your favorite website, Top 
Haters.com, my friends. And you know this website, right? This was DSP's uh, response to a, a, a website entitled um, TopGamers.com that the people in the Street Fighter community created. And uh, he made the top haters because he's just that cool. And uh, he has to tell us about his time at Circuit City. So I'm going to read through this first to get us started here. This is, as you can see, it's November 28th, 2003. So we are, you know, just 11 days removed from the 20-year anniversary of this post being written, this legendary post <laughs> that shall always be remembered forever. <laughs> but here we go. We are going to get to, ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of year. It's precisely 2.56 a.m. on the East Coast. Can you say gin tweeting? <laughs> Now, this was before Jin tweets. This was, this was even before Twitter was even a thing. This was the, uh, the Diet Coke and rum era when he was losing weight with his rum uh, daily fast food breakfast and vodka with Diet Zero. I believe that is the diet, he said. I can't remember exactly, but yeah. <laughs> I'm awake, sadly. Why, you ask? Well, because today is Black Friday. And for those of you too dense to understand what Black Friday is, so oh, thanks, Phil, <laughs> allow me to explain. It's the single busiest shopping day of the entire year. And since I work at Circuit City, I have been scheduled from 5.30 a.m. to motherfucking 11 p.m. today. All because of you tards. <laughs> Don't you love a website that talks to you like that? Very cool. Very chill. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. That's what kind of Friday is. Nail biting Friday, you know what I'm saying? Nail biting Friday coming up pretty soon. <laughs> uh so uh so he worked five thirty to eleven PM, which is a long shift for sure, but I mean, sometimes you gotta do it. I mean, that's how life works, man. Uh but it, 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 just because you worked to to eleven, does that mean you have to stay up till three AM? That doesn't seem <laughs> they don't seem to be connected. I remember when I had to work late, I would have to go to sleep like an hour after I got home because I had to wake up the next day. But hey, maybe that's just me. <laughs> He's entitled to that free time, right? Anyways, we're going to hear, why is it your fault? It's pretty simple. Year after year, thousands upon thousands of idiots line up outside of retail stores all over the country at 5 a.m. the day after Thanksgiving. We're talking people who normally complain when they have to go to work at 8.30 every morning. How does he know this? We'll never know, but keep listening. As long as they get some sort of physical, superficial belonging out of the deal, physical, superficial belonging, we'll figure out what that, maybe in the, in the replay we can understand what that means exactly, but they get physical, superficial belonging out of the deal, they're willing to get up before the goddamn sun comes up, and that's the sun with the S-O-N, uh, comes up, but if it's for work, by the way, it's 2.56 and he's writing this post, which, you know, you could be sleeping then, but anyways. So pissed about it and so tired from it, he has to make a post about how stupid everyone is. Cool. Uh, but it's for work and, or God forbid, something productive. They'll bitch and whine and complain about how they went out till 3 a.m. last night, and it's bullshit they have to get up so early. If people would just grow a brain and realize that Black Friday is the biggest marketing ploy of all time, then maybe we could cut out the BS and I could not have to work 17 hours today. <laughs> so it's all about making him work in the end. But prepare yourselves. I'm about to reveal to you the truth about Black Friday. And this is the thing I want you to remember for the rest of the stream, okay? Because this, this post from 2003 echoes in the future times of this person. <laughs> uh, that's right. There's a catch to all the merry mayhem, the fighting, and the in-store brawls that will occur today. If you think you were heading out... To oh, okay. So he's, oh, he's up at three o'clock because he has to be at work at five thirty. Okay, okay, that's uh, we were. I was incorrect about that. Excuse me, strike that from the record. He's up at three a.m. because he has to be at work in two and a half hours. But he's writing a post about how fucked up it is. So, uh huh, sounds good. Let's keep moving forward. If you think you were heading out to get a deal, you were wrong. Let's start out with something I know a lot about, Circuit City products. Take this one, for example. Today only, Western Digital 200 gig internal IDE hard drive. So, hype, dude, 200 gigs, man. I can, I can store like a million games. 
Advertised as in-store special while they last. You pay $249, mail-in rebate $150. Price after rebate $999. Okay, sounds good to me. Uh, wow, you say a 200 gigabyte hard drive for $100. Amazing, what a deal. Wrong! Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. Why are we wrong? First, if you could please open up your eyes for a few goddamn seconds, you would realize just how stupid you are. Jesus, man. This, you need to be, you need to love the abuse to enjoy this fucking website. All right. I, I, it's tough. I'm, I haven't quite realized why I'm stupid yet, but I'll keep reading. Maybe I will later. First and foremost, this is a mail-in rebate deal. You will have to pay two fifty now and then get the one hundred fifty back in the mail as a check within eight to ten weeks. Yes, that's. I don't think anyone claimed any different, sir. But let's keep going. Uh, <laughs> now, if you're made of money and time is not an issue to you, then that's fine. But to most of us, most of us, having to wait three months to get our money back, especially after having to buy a million presents for everyone and being in debt for three months after Christmas anyway. This is a pretty lame deal. <laughs> okay, so let me translate. If you don't have, if you need your money so badly, or if you have no self-control so badly that you go in debt every Christmas, you know, if that's how you operate Christmas, then getting $150 back in the mail in the future, you can't do that. Are you crazy? <laughs> you can't do that. You know, you don't have to go in debt for Christmas. You know, you don't have to. Sometimes, unfortunately, life situations lead us down that path where we have to do that. Of course. But you can also make the choice not to. And most of the people that do go in debt for Christmas is usually because they got kids and they want to do, be a good parent even though they don't have the money to do it. Philip Brunel, at this point, is 21 years old with no family, no friends. Who is he buying presents for right now? Well, I mean, he has family. It would be straight. He does have family. Is he, but would your, par would your parents want you to go in debt to get them a fucking present? I mean, would a smart individual do that? <laughs> but anyways, because $250 is such a large amount of money for a 21-year-old, you know, can't... Oh, God, this is a lame deal, dude. It's a lame fucking deal. If you mail us something, we will give you $150 back. That's a lame deal, dude. Lame fucking deal. Man, that's a lame deal. Anyway, so okay, this rebate thing is acceptable. Okay, so okay, the rebate thing is accept what? Okay, so it's a lame deal, but it is acceptable. Now here's the real kicker that I'm sure all of you will love. The store only has five of these in stock. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Circuit City only has five of these babies in store. It's predominantly displayed all over the web in the paper ad on the website, but there's no way that everyone who goes to the Circuit City is going to get one. Okay? Here's the sad truth. 98% of the deals, okay, this top 10 stats pulled out of your ass, 98% of the deals you'll find on Black Friday are just marketing ploys, okay? Um, they're used to draw you into the store, so when you find out you don't have what, they don't have what you came for, you at least buy something else. Only the first five schmucks who lined up outside Circuit City from 4 a.m. this morning are going to get their hands on this hard drive. <laughs> The rest are going to be asked out and end up either wasting their time or spending lots more money on other stuff since they already made the trip. So I love how Phil just assumes no one else has self-control because he doesn't have self-control. Sound good? Keep up. Come on, keep up. <laughs> You'll take another ad that I find pretty hilarious myself. This is a page for taking for Best Buy's Black Friday ad. Now, he hasn't worked for Best Buy yet, but he's already talking about Best Buy. I won't go through this again next week for sure, I promise. Uh, I'm not going to read all this shit, by the way. I'm not going to read all this shit. I'm done with this already. Uh, but I do want to show you that. Okay. So you got up early and got fucked. What do you do? I'm going to let you in on the secret of the smart customer. The best time to shop is not Black Friday, but the week before Black Friday and on the internet. Okay? So he knows how to shop on the internet in 2003, but he doesn't know how to do it in 2023? Remember when he has to get slippers for cat? They go to four different stores. <laughs> Remember when he has to get cat food? He has to make his, his his trip out daily and make a big fucking deal about it. You can buy all that shit online, and it's even better now. Climbing. It'd be great if we could get a bunch because we have almost two hundred viewers. It'd be great if we could get some more likes. It helps the stream. It helps the stream and the channel in and the channel for discoverability purposes. Thank you so much. Okay. Big ups to those New Balance Intelligent Counter Spell. Love the New Balance. Oh no, excuse me, sixty four bit with the New Balance. <laughs> Anyways. I'm not reading all this shit, but anyways, I know you can't see the bottom. I'm just going to read it for you. Uh, so the, at the end, uh, real quick, let's see. You know it's not there. The website blade said it's not. 
Explain one thing to me. How can you advertise a sale on your store for an item that, is, that isn't even at your fucking store? You know it's not there. Your website blatantly says that it's not, yet you advertise that it is, and it's on sale with no remorse. You purposely fool the consumer into rushing into your store just to be sadly disappointed when the item was heavily advertised and not even exist yet. But chances are they'll at least buy something for coming to your store. All right, I'm not reading all this. I'm bored of this, but awesome, cool, cool. But this is the, my favorite part. He says at the bottom, and now I present the TopHaters.com Black Friday Fucked Me Photo Contest. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. For the first time ever, TopHaters.com is holding a contest for our readers. Send in some interesting pictures from your Black Friday experiences today. Juicy stuff like people fighting over items, people getting knocked on their asses, or shelves totally empty at 6.03 a.m. The pics will be posted here in a future article. And the one lucky person who I choose sends in the best shot will receive something very, very nice. This, re this competition was not referenced again in the entire website. So trying to get engagement on his site with, um, you know, it's, it's tens of viewers. <laughs> and uh, I wonder if he was ever sent one. You know, I wonder if he was sent one. Uh, December 23, he talks about it again. I just want to read one thing. Um, uh, uh, more bi I'm not going to read this whole thing again, but another site from Top Haters. He says, uh, they're at it again. The sales that never were. Welcome to America, folks. H hope all of you enjoyed the Christmas holiday. Unfortunately, I had to work from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. today at Circuit City, only to realize that they're at it again. So bitching about work again. Sound good? I mean, when you're on this show, we're talking about employment. It's like 95% complaining. I guess you come to expect that at this point. I'll read the top paragraph. That's right. Once again, stores are cashing in on the commercialism of the holiday season with their after Christmas sales. Best Buy, Staples, Circuit City, Walmart, and a load of other stores are all offering their so-called deals in one form or another. And once again, they are just lying to you and trying to fool your ass into getting into the store and buying something more expensive than you wanted, plus all accessories and protection plans. Pure profit, of course. <laughs> You know, Phil would sign up for those protection plans, you know, like, uh, uh, sir, would you like the two year warranty on this lightning cable? Oh yeah, yeah sure. Go ahead. Add it. Add it in. Oh, you definitely need that. Definitely need that. <laughs> I'll read the last sentence here. Uh, yet the big scam continues yet. People are still packing the stores and will be all weekend. Pretty damn pathetic. If you ask me, no, no, I'm gonna ask you guys, what's more pathetic, uh, not being able to resist buying things. Or, or putting on sales as a company to try to make money. All right? I mean, just because something's on sale, you don't have to buy it. That's kind of how it works, in my opinion, is you don't have to buy things. It's kind of crazy, you know? Like, you have an option to not buy things. It's tough. It's tough. But that is an option, right? You know, <laughs> hey, sir, do you need your lightning cable holder and the two year warranty? Oh, yes, throw that in, please. Thank you, sir. If you can speak English, I'm not sure yet, sir. <laughs> oh, send me to the manager. <laughs> you know, like you don't have to buy things. Uh, but that's the Black Friday uh, spiel for now. But don't worry, we're going to hear a lot fucking more about Black Friday. That's why I put in the fucking title, because that's going to be a big fucking theme with this Circuit City episode. So hold on your fucking butts. All right, but let's get to it. Let's do our first reference. This is from 2006. Uh, 2000, sorry, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. That's not correct. 2000 and let me make sure I got it right. 2016, I believe. July 2016. And um, I don't want to play this now, actually. I want to play this later. So I don't know why that's here, actually. Let's go to 2013. We're going to start with 2013. Keep chronological order rolling. Uh, we're going to get some talk about Circuit City here. Let's go. You know, over the years, I was kind of a very physically oh, active guy. I used to play some sports. In <laughs> addition to that, I used to play competitive Street Fighter. Whoa. Competitive Street Fighter used to be held in arcades, not at home sitting on a couch, playing on your couch with a gamepad or a joystick. Cool, it was all dude. standing up for hours on end in arcades. In addition to that, what most else? of the jobs that I had until I got out of college were jobs where you're standing, whether it was fast food, whether it was selling computers or products at Best Buy or Circuit City. Hey. I was constantly on my feet all the time. And I think because of that- Oh, are you, do you want us to feel bad for you? I mean- <laughs> Breezy style in the house. I was told it's a buyer's market for Hogan's. Oh, it definitely is. Enjoy your, 
I was going to say free pool, but it doesn't count as free pool, does it? I can't say that. Your ball, sundress cat, two gal crystal, hype. All right, Misery Merchant worked for Circuit City. Did you also stand on your feet and, and want praise for that? In addition to the money you were receiving? That again, the fact that in my developmental years, my back always had a big heavy weight on. <laughs> oh God, I forgot the backpack lore. <laughs> yeah. Developmental years. Who says developmental years? Big up Cat the Magical. We got a cat streak going. First of its kind. At Best Buy or Circuit City, I was constantly on my feet all the time. Uh -huh. And I think because of that, again, the fact that in my developmental years, my back uh -huh. always had a big heavy weight on it. During the course of my life, I always had jobs where I was standing up. Uh -huh. That could have contributed to my back. <clears throat> All right, so that's more back back lore. Uh, remember, there was the, I mean, we've heard so many fucking stories about this back injury. You got the car crash that was wasn't a part of it, was a part of it. The football. Now we got the developmental years. What the fuck? But I can point out the one point, okay, the, one, the one point, point in my life where I realized I have a serious back issue. <laughs> I'm not hearing the back injury. My back had been giving me pain. Okay, so my back had been giving me pain. Soreness. Some shooting, like, nerve pain, oh, dude, and it was really pissing me off. I didn't know, you know, what was it? What was the source of this pain? And I remember this one day, I was actually playing This better football. keep me... It wasn't oh, you know, football. physical, it was touch football. It wasn't physical. <laughs> I, know he's, I know what he means, but it's still funny, the sentence. It wasn't physical, it was touch football. <laughs> In a local park, and it was uh, someone's birthday, I believe. One of oh, my friends' yeah. birthdays. Yeah, and we were playing it in touch football, and I remember playing it, and after playing it for about two hours, uh -huh. my fucking back hurt so badly. Whatever. All right, next. <laughs> I'm not hearing the backstory again. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to 2014 now. More Circuit City mentions. Oh, big ups. The rare fly, 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 fly. Nice. That's, that's like a hundred. One, that's like a one in a hundred shot right there. Like me. I worked a job since I was 15. When I was 15, I started working fast food. I worked that job on and off. Oh, God. Fast off food. all the way until college. In college, I stopped working there. Then I started working at a Circuit City. Mm -hmm. After Circuit City, I started working at a financial firm. After the financial firm, I started working at Best Buy. After <laughs> Oh, now it's a financial firm. It's not a predatory lender organization. It's a financial firm. Best Buy. I worked at this office job, and now I'm doing my thing now. But the climate now is so different because what happened was the economy dipped. All those middle class, decent paying jobs went away, <laughs> and the people who, oh, what am I going to do now? They went they down. They became YouTubers. And they gravitated down to those low level service industry jobs that the young people used to take uh -huh. in high school oh, and college. Economic side so too. now you've got incredibly overqualified people taking low paying jobs, uh -huh. and the kids who are trying to learn. <laughs> You think Phil has ever t played touch football in the bedroom with Panda? No, but she wanted to. Her jobs, job she skills, and to. get That's those jobs, can't get them anymore. It's insane. Uh -huh. It's literally head 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 hunting, <laughs> you know, dog eat dog out there. Because it's head hunting, dog eat dog out there. Because that whole middle class has fallen apart. Okay, the part the middle class that you are not a part of, <laughs> but you pretend to be so desperately. 2015. Lego Dimensions controversy with Polygon yet again. All kinds of stuff going on uh, with gaming news that you're definitely going to want to check that out. Oh, yeah. This is how he used to do Week in Review, for anyone who doesn't know. When his, his Week in Review, which is basically like before he made the daily investment meetings, he would do Week in Reviews. And he would just literally open up his YouTube channel and tell you what he put up that week. So, like, he's been doing, like, needless content for many years now. But, like, this is 2015 when he was, like, still, like, I mean, he's already started the decline at this point, but still, like, pretty big, you know? Millions of views a month. And this video has 984 views. That is a mess to him. It's a waste of time. This is a week in review, not preview, down forward punch. Come on. So it's just a 100% waste of time. When he, you know, and he still put, spent eight minutes on this video saying what I put on my YouTube channel this month. Can't people just check it out? Or just say it in a, one of these pre-streams you're rocking and rolling then? Anyways. And there was a back in the day segment. Unfortunately, Ooh. it got cut a little short because I ran out of time, but it is going to continue on the next podcast that I do. It was about my time working at Circuit City when uh -huh. I actually was employed by this company called Circuit City. So it was a great podcast.
How are you out of breath there? Circuit City, when I actually was employed by this company called Circuit City. So it was a great <laughs> podcast. Okay? The one thing that ended up screwing up, though. What, what, what screwed up? Unfortunately, it was the first time that I tried to do this podcast uh, in my new capture software. Uh -huh. Okay? And when I tried to do that. Stop. He tries to make new capture software sound like he's, like, you know, creating the new operating system that's going to take over the world. I got this thing, this special new uh, operating software. I don't know if you guys know what software is, okay? Software. I, was, I worked at the legendary uh, electronics firm known as Circuit City. You guys maybe don't know that. Um, uh, but I used to work on this new uh, – I was using this new capture software. And maybe you, most of you probably don't know what software is. Uh, but I do. So just listen to me. Thank you. Uh, not my new capture software, uh, OBS, which is what I use everything with now. But my new mic, I'm trying to use this OBS program to do everything. I screwed up and I accidentally closed OBS before the, the podcast had processed and it corrupted the file. So I actually had to use the raw stream. That's what you see here. This is the raw stream, which is why it says it's two hours and 43 minutes long. It's not. You can actually skip the first, uh, I think it's like the first 35 to 40 what? minutes to get to the real podcast. Because the first, you know, was the intro where I'm, I'm loading, getting the stream ready. There's uh, dead air for like 25 minutes. and there's You can edit that out, sir. It's the pre-stream where I'm getting people pumped up for the podcast. And it's just oh, getting people pumped up. <laughs> dead air for like 25 minutes. And there's the pre-stream where I'm getting people pumped up for the podcast. And it's I'm just me blabbing. Up. It really has nothing to do with the podcast. So I put very detailed timestamps uh, in the description of that video. Very detailed timestamps, but you can't fucking... Edit the first 45 minutes of Dead Air out? Oh, so if you are going to watch it, I strongly recommend you read the description, use the timestamps to skim around, and skip the Dead Air at the beginning of the podcast. Uh -huh. But so far, so good. In fact, if I actually refresh here... Let me refresh here. Let's see how many views it gets real quick. Hang on. Hang on. 8,308 <laughs> views and climbing so within 20... Channel if you're not <laughs> and climbing. 24 hours. So it's very popular. People very are enjoying popular. the podcast. People are enjoying. What he means by that is there's a lot of people that have watched it. He has no clue of their feelings on it, but it means they're enjoying it because there's a lot of numbers there. How does numbers mean they're enjoying it? And I hope that you guys do too. I hope you'll check it out. 8,000 views in 24 hours. Obviously, people are liking it, right? How does that, that is, they do not, they do not correlate. That is not a correlation you can make, sir. That means for some reason they found something interesting in either the title or the thumbnail. But you have 0.0, .0 idea of their feelings on the actual content. That's just the fact of the matter. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to be crazy here. I don't think that's a crazy leap to say, right? Guys do too. I hope you'll check it out. 8,000 views in 24 hours. Obviously, people are liking it, right? Uh -huh. Obviously, people are liking it. So that is it. That is what you missed this week. So you How might do you say know I missed it? Sadly, a lot of this stuff is gone, by the way. Like that exact hate live is gone. Uh, a lot of the stuff from that you saw on that screen right there is unfindable. Uh, luckily, some people uploaded a lot of, you know, re-uploaded a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that is just gone from there. So what's coming up this weekend? Not on DSP Gaming, of course. Look at this thumbnail. The best and worst. DSP Gaming, March 2015. Yeah. Uh, this weekend, gameplay-wise, is basically a marathon of Persona 4. For some of you, that might be incredible. Oh, I'm not hearing this. Get out of here. I'm not hearing it. I've heard enough of that. All right, so let's hear. This is this is we're gonna be here for a bit. This is twenty eight minutes, and I don't know we can. I don't know how much we can skip because this is a, a literally DSP just talking about his time at Circuit City. So go get your beverage, your gin, your whale tail, your diet coke, and your vodka. This is we're gonna be here a bit. So let's go. Showed me too early. Welcome to the third and final segment of Hate Live. Um, I'm gonna be on. This is what he just talked about, by the way. This is the live. This is the segment. From Hate Live, where he said, I've talked about my time in Circuit City. This is it. Yes, I ran late with all the other stuff I had to talk about. I thought I was going to be done with that stuff in an hour. And we're almost done. We got like 20 minutes to go here on the show. So what I may do, I may do... By the way, he's not a TV show that has, to, has a hard out at any time. He just wants to be done at a certain time. So let's not get it twisted there. He says, like, I only got 20 minutes left. He chooses his own schedule. He could stay later if he wants to. He is choosing not to. Let's go. Do a two-parter about Circuit City, my employment at Circuit City for back in the day segment, because I don't have too much time to go here. We'll see. Uh, but let's start. You have as much time as you want, sir. <clears throat> my back in the day segment <clears throat> for tonight. Oh, the next show is starting then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's going to be talking about my employment at a, a business called Circuit City. Now, for those okay. of you 
who don't know what Circuit City is, maybe Peace, you don't pig, live in pigs, the United States. Pig explain Circuit right? City. Or you just haven't been in the business world in the past 10 years or so. Circuit City used to be a major <clears throat> electronics retailer Whoa. in the United States of America. I'm sure. I think they also were up in Canada as well, but I'm not 100% <laughs> positive about that. Uh, and they were very tuck, on par. Oh, duck I guess the best tuck comparison right that I could compare. That was a nice DuckTales tuck. It's a rare sight to see the DuckTales push down. He didn't want to get too wild and crazy, so he pushed down the DuckTales. Well, but I'm not 100% positive about that. Here you guys push. And they were very on par. Tails, I guess the best comparison tails. that I could compare them with would be like Fry's or Best Buy. Both okay. of those businesses still exist to this day. Circus City does not. Ooh, and nice. I think that Apologize the reason that, that Circus City does not exist Why in today's day and age is because they were a business... That was really 1980s and 90s focused, and they really had a business model that worked well in the 80s and 90s. And then hold on, hold on a second. They had a business focused on the 80s and 90s. Okay, I'm just trying to wrap my head around that statement. I want to hear it one more time. They had a business focused on the 80s and 90s. Does not exist in today's day and age, is because they were a business that was really 1980s and 90s focused. Ah. 80s and 90s focused. Yeah, okay. I got it. So they're saying, all right, guys, we're going to be a company. We're going to be 80s and 90s focused. So when they were in the 80s, they were saying, we're going to be 90s focused. <laughs> so, okay. And they really, really cool. had a business model that worked well in the 80s and 90s. And then when they hit the 2000s and uh -huh. things started to change, uh, <clears throat> they didn't really keep up with the times. I'll explain about that in this back in the day segment. Okay, okay. can you just get to it? So there was a time in my life when I was in uh, oh, a college. <gasps> Excuse me. Oh, some God. of you may call it university. Some of you may call it higher. Why do you have to point this out every time? Why? I do not understand this. I do not understand this. Why do you have to point this out every fucking time? For learning, whatever you call it. What does he say? Excuse me. Some of you may call it university. Some of you may call it higher learning, whatever you higher call learning. it. Higher learning. Yeah, I'd love everyone calling it higher learning. Uh, What time does your higher learning start? 4 p.m., mommy. Okay, you better get down quick. Gotta, gotta comb my hair for my higher learning. It's basically the, this time of four year uh, course load. Are you explaining college? <laughs> oh my God. It's basically the, this time of four year uh -huh. uh, course load uh -huh. where you go to a higher school above what's considered high school here in the United States and you're basically studying to be whatever you want to be. Do you want to be oh uh, <clears throat> you know, someone in the financial field? Do you want to be someone in the arts? Do you want to be a teacher? Do you want to be... <laughs> Where did the course load go? <laughs> in tissue. In, t in, my, in, my, in my textbooks. In my textbooks. <laughs> Next question. Uh, a lawyer. And, of course, a lawyer has to go to way more school, just like a doctor and stuff like that. And so oh during God. this time period, uh, I was commuting. I wasn't a, a live-in student. I was commuting from my parents' house to university and back. Okay, so real quick, we know from that, if you watch the college, you know about the college. Um he, that means this is after, so remember he went, he lived on campus and he was still, uh, working at the yogurt shop, right? And uh, sorry, worked at the yogurt shop, were, lived on campus, did not work during that time. After that, after he stopped living on campus, he worked at the yogurt shop a little bit. Yogurt shop got closed down, turned into a Taco Bell. That's when he started working at Circuit City. <clears throat> and I had bills, I had gas bills. Gas bills? And he's not talking about gas to heat shit in your house. He's literally talking about gas you put in your car. Who calls it gas bills? All right, I got to pay my gas bill real quick, honey. We got to pull, pull over. We got to get our gas bill. Pull over. I got to pay my gas bill. All right, who says it like this on earth? And only reason you do this is to make it sound like a bigger fucking deal, too. University and back. Uh-huh. <clears throat> And I had bills. I had gas bills. <laughs> I had credit card bills. I uh, had bills of all kinds of expenses and things to go to school. That and literally, that's the that's the end of it. By the way, that's the that's the start and end of it. He's saying he had all these bills, but that's the beginning and end. <laughs> so he said one bill, and that's a bill that is self inflicted bill. If you know what I'm saying, you know, a lot of people live their life without a credit card for a large portion of it. Some people never fucking do. But he had a, the credit card bill, which he maxed out to get to all these uh, Evo and stuff. It, cash advances, excuse me. So he definitely had those bills. And he also had the gas bills, which, as you know, those gas bills you pay after you pump gas 
at the fucking gas station. But yeah, those gas bills. And so I needed to work. I was not one of the, uh, unfortunately, I was not one of the fortunate people, young Excuse me, sir? Your parents helped pay for that, and you also had a scholarship. People. And so were you fortunate or not? Work. For the car, he was gifted from his parents. Thanks so much, Ian So Rare. I was not one of the, uh, unfortunately, I was not one of the fortunate people, young people, who had a free ride paid for them by their parents and didn't have to worry about paying bills or anything. Okay, I had to so the extremely, extremely minority case where someone's parents pay for fucking everything, you were one of those people. Okay, let's give you some praise. Hold on, where can I tip? Where can I tip? You didn't get your parents to pay for everything? Come on, I'll pay you. Pay a lot of it myself. So I had to find employment in order for myself to go to college. And I decided to look all around <clears throat> during this time period. And as I've told you guys before, in my previous life, before you two, I, I, was, I, was an actual, I was actually an alien. That's why I have this speech pattern and call things gas bills. And I use words like, <laughs> I use words like thus incorrectly. I used to fiddle with computers. I used to build <laughs> I computers. To I actually built three high-end gaming PCs from the ground up in the early 2000s. From the ground up. You do not call building computers from scratch. Not even from scratch. I'm saying it wrong now, too, because my mind is melting. You don't build computers from the ground up. What? You, you, uh, you molding the case? <laughs> You getting out, you, you welding the case up? Come on, you welding it? Where's the welding? You, you know? <laughs> Are you getting the dies in place for the, for the fucking motherboard? Uh-huh, okay, cool. From the ground up, dude. From the ground up. He's, mel he's smelting. <laughs> his life, before you two, I actually used to fiddle with computers. I used to build computers. I actually built... Three high-end gaming PCs from the ground up in the early 2000s. I had them networked in my parents' house. Networked in my parents' house. Does that mean you plug them into the internet, sir? You you Six plug. You you put please. you put an like Ethernet stream, cable all into all them. Okay. Sound good. <laughs> all right. So man, I've done that too. I actually in my house right now, I have networked uh I think four computers are networked. And you know what else I've networked? A Nintendo Switch. I've networked a Shield um uh, uh Nvidia Shield broadcast thing. I've networked so much stuff. I'm networking now. I can network anytime I feel like. I'm networking now. <laughs> Three high-end gaming PCs from the ground up in the early 2000s. I had them networked in my parents' house. Holy People shit. People would come over and we'd do a network match online playing like Unreal Tournament and stuff like that. Oh. So I was a real techie kind of guy. <laughs> I was a real techie kind of guy. X to fucking gout. <laughs> and uh, because of that... I thought, gee, what kind of a job would I want to have? <laughs> now, at the same time, I was a very... <laughs> he installed the cooling gel himself. Oh, absolutely. And he knows what you do with it. He knows exactly what that is. Put the cooling gel in. Independent-minded person. If you saw me at that time period... I, what? Okay, hold on. I'm an independent-minded... Oh, Muhammad uh, B. First pull for that card. That debuted on Tuesday. Big ups, dude. That's a nice pull. Utterly insane. That was made by Dayglow, by the way. Shout-outs to Dayglow. Yeah. Now, at the same time, I was a very independent-minded person. If you saw me at that time period in my life, I'd be wearing, like, either uh, a wrestling t-shirt... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I missed something. ...of a job what I want to have, and... I gotta hear So I was a real techie kind of guy. That kind of guy. And Not true. Go ahead. Uh, Next slide, because of that, I thought, gee, what kind of a job would I want to have? Now, at the same... Oh, God, that... There you go. What's that high pitch? That pitch... It's so annoying. What kind of job do you are wanting? Dude, what ha what is going on? Every time I was a very because of that, I thought, gee, what kind of a job would I want to have? Now at the oh, same God. time I was a very independent minded <laughs> person. <laughs> if you saw me at that time period in my life, I'd be wearing like either uh, a wrestling t shirt <laughs> from like pro I was a big fan of pro wrestling as you guys know. Whoa. Or I'd be wearing some kind of a character t shirt, you know what I mean? You're it cool. You're fucking cool, dude. We had a wrestling t-shirt? This guy was a badass, dude. Does not give a fuck. I was an independent textile person. I was wearing wrestling shirts. Something like that. I'd be wearing very skaterish kind of stuff, too. Like, I wore, uh... Skaterish? Vaughn sneakers and stuff like that. <laughs> and skater shorts. I was wearing Vaughn's. 
I was wearing Vons. <laughs> oh, God. Had I never heard that before? How have we not heard that before? I was wearing Vons. <laughs> All right, well, that's, that secured itself as the card that is going to be debuting on Saturday. Those fucking Vons. <laughs> I like all sorts of Vons. Vince Vaughn. <laughs> Vons. Von Diesel. <laughs> oh, God. All right, we got to hear the Vons one more time. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Jenna actually lives in a Vaughn. Uh, she lives in a Vaughn on the streets of, New- of, of Los Angeles. Uh, she has a, a nice Vaughn. She does her content out of the Vons. I'm interested in the... Uh... Oh, Look, God. I wore a stop. t-shirt. You know what I mean? It would be something like that. <laughs> yes. There she is. Big ups, Logan K. We got the person living in a Vaughn. Logan K says, independent guy identifies through brand consumption. Sound good? My Absolutely. Face is beautiful. <laughs> why did that go twice? Uh oh. $300 Keurig in the house. I don't know why that went twice. I'll fix that. Fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, Fonz. <laughs> yes. Thank you, whoever put that in. <laughs> oh, God. I love the Fonz. That's my favorite. This is my favorite. The Vons. All right, there we go. It won't go twice now. I promise. It does stream over. <laughs> big ups, man. Big ups, Logan. And big ups to Down 4 Punch. I wore Jenga jeans with my Vons back in the day. Oh, yeah. Vons were hype. <laughs> Here we go. All right, one more time. Last time with the Vons. I be wearing very skaterish kind of stuff, too. <laughs> like, I wore uh, Vons sneakers and stuff <laughs> like that and skater-style shorts. That was kind of the kind of... <laughs> fad group that i belonged to during those college years all right that was the fad and group i belonged to with the vons you know how fucking hard those college kids were laughing like i hope in my mind the college people that that you know that fucking dorm with all the hot girls were in like they never told him it was wrong you know you ever done that you don't tell someone they're making a mistake so then you just let them keep doing it <laughs> you know <laughs> he was saying vons all through college <laughs> <laughs> that's it. that's my head cannon, you know. So they kept making him say it, you know. <laughs> right. And so I actually went. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> around, I went around looking for jobs. I applied at several different places. One- yeah. Well, what if someone comes up to him and says, "Hey, you skate, dude? Want to go over down to the skating thing this tonight?" Uh, I don't skate, dude. I just wear my Vons and my skater style shorts and my wrestling shirts. I got my DX shirt, my skater style shorts, and my Vons. Where are we partying, boys? Where are we boarding up? Come on. <laughs> One place that I had gone to was a complete flop. It ended up not paying me. It was a shitty internship. I don't know if I've told you guys about that before. Oh, that's new. That's new. It was a complete flop. Around, I went around looking for jobs. I applied at several different places. One mm-hmm. place that I had gone to was a complete flop. It ended up not paying me. It was a shitty internship. I don't know if I've told you guys about that. Before. Uh, that was the, the um, obviously we talked about that already. That's the one, the uh, mortgage one that he left when they offered him a job. Or selling life insurance, but then life insurance, excuse me, life insurance. He didn't want to do that job because it was hard. Finally, I went into Circuit City mm-hmm. and I got a, 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 a interview schedule. And I remember, right. I remember the day of the interview because I was an idiot. Like most people, like today, Uh-oh. I'm a much more mature. I'm 33 years old. <laughs> I know about stuff. When I was 20, <laughs> 33 years old, I know about stuff. Do you? Do you know about stuff, sir? <laughs> okay. Years old, I think I was about 20 years old when this this happened. Uh, the day of my interview, I come into the interview with like messed up, like not good looking hair. Uh, 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 okay. With we'll you know, I, I was unshaven. I remember I had like a st- uh, we'll move forward positively. Stubbly beard. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I had a you know character shirt on. A- character shirt. Character shirt. Well, I wonder what the character was. You, you look like you always do. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> so basically, you were looking like you always do. I think I was wearing like these skater style shoes with like skater style shoes. Red shoelaces. Nipples. <laughs> my nipples were very visible. My moves were on fire. My ducktails were flaring out. I, I look so different than I do right now. Is, and I walk in, I sit down for the interview. And my PJ pants were there. I had my, my Zelda pants were freshly pressed. 
And the store manager, the store manager was actually interviewing me, and he was actually a younger guy. He was probably, I'd probably say mid-30s and tops. So he was Whoa. about my age Whoa. when he was 13 years ago. And he's interviewing me. Mm-hmm. And he's asking me all these questions about selling. He's also asking me about different departments. I said, obviously, I would definitely like to work in the PC department because I know all this knowledge about techie kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, the funny thing is, I've told you guys about this before. I'm a well-spoken person. As you can hear <laughs> now, I'm well-spoken. I could do a Oh, oh God. Come on, dude. Who says this about themselves? I'm a well-spoken person. The skater style. We're four, five minutes in, finally getting to the story after wearing his fucking Vons. I've told you guys about this before. I'm, oh, because that. I know about different departments. I said, obviously, I would definitely like to work in the PC department uh-huh. because I know this dude is like, <laughs> the, you know, the manager's like uh, just letting him get his spiel out. Like, all right, so when can you start, brother? We just need people. You know, I don't give a shit about your life story, brother. But all this knowledge about techie kind of stuff. Now, the <laughs> funny thing is, I've told you guys about this before. I'm a well spoken person, as you can hear. I've told you about this before. I'm a well-spoken person. Hey, guys. As you know, I've told you about this before. I'm very cool. Hey, guys. You know, I told you about this before. I'm pretty cool. You know? So, you know, I'm cool. I told you about that earlier, right? How do you guys not know I'm cool? I already told you that. Okay? Fuck out of here. Who's saying I'm not cool? I already told you that earlier. Here now, I'm well-spoken. I could do a two-hour show on about this before. Oh, I'm a well-spoken person. As you can hear now, I'm well-spoken. I could do a two-hour show uh-huh. on the fly, unrehearsed, uh-huh. and I'm easily able to do it. I'm a very good public speaker. And so when I... I'm a very good pub. This is when he was max, max sucking his own penne. You know what I'm saying? Holy shit, man. He thinks he's on top of the fucking world. And now he still does, but it's just harder to... Explain it away, you know? He has to go through a lot more hoops to explain how cool he is. But there's no, there's less people, you know, saying how stupid he is on the internet at this point, 2015. They still are out there, but he still has more admiration. There's the, the percentage of LARPers in that chat is extremely low. Now it's, you know, 75%. But back then, it was more people legitimately enjoying what he was doing. So you see the results. Unrehearsed, and I'm saying as you can knowledge about techie kind of stuff. Now the funny thing is, I've told you guys about this before. I'm a well-spoken person, as mm-hmm. you can hear now. I'm well-spoken. I could do a two-hour show on the fly, unrehearsed, and I'm easily able to do it. I'm a very good public speaker. And so when I was answering his questions, and I was speaking this way. If someone said that to you in your friend group, you'd be like, "Shut the fuck up!" And we're not friends anymore. <laughs> you know, like you wouldn't even make friends with that kind of person. This is what happens when you have no friends, you know, and you can live your life thinking that you can talk like this and people don't say, like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> if someone said, I'm well spoken, I mean, I don't know if you guys know this. What? Get the fuck out of here. Skater boy, go, go away with your Vons. We do. Your Vons are cool, though. So keep saying Vons. After that, though, don't talk to us. And that's probably why I fucking left that fucking dorm in college. I mean, obviously, we never know the true story. He says it was after that party, but. We never know the true story, what, what it could have been. He was very taken, like, taken with me. He's like, wow. He, he was taken with me. He basically started, he really wanted me to get nude, and he wanted to have intercourse. It was really weird. He was very taken with me. So when I was answering his questions, and I was speaking this way, he was very taken, like, taken with me. He's like, wow. <laughs> he asked for my number. <laughs> he asked for my number. <laughs> so when I was answering his questions, and I was speaking this way, he was very taken, like, taken with me. He's like, wow. He's like, at the end of the interview, I remember, it was like maybe a 20-minute interview. Okay, yeah, let's get, hold on to your hats. Top five thing that never was said in the entire universe in any timeline. At the end of the interview, he goes, wow, he goes, you really impressed me. You have knowledge of product. Oh, it seems like you're good, you know, a good speaker, good with people. He says, I got to ask you something, Phil. Why the hell did you come to the interview dressed up like that? Like most people would come in here, you know, with a tie or an, and, a, and a button down shirt and nice slacks, or they would dress up for the interview to look nice. Why did you come in here looking like that? And I said, because the bottom line is, I don't... Oh, there we go. It's been a while, actually, since we got one of these. Let me make sure I get it ready. There we go. It's been a while. I don't want you hiring me for how I look. I want you... Oh, it, this, now it's going to be intentional. Oh, dude, this clip, man. I can't handle it. He He's saying it was intentional. It was intentional because I don't want to be hired for how I look. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. This is a social experiment, Dennis. You got it. Social experiment. Slacks, or they would dress up for the interview to look nice. Why did you come in here looking like that? 
And I, I was very taken with how well you speak. I almost thought we could be dating if just based on your speaking alone. But you look so scrubby, I almost don't want to uh, take you out on a date right now. I am still taken with you, though. I said, because the bottom line is... <laughs> He's quoting the pursuit of happiness, Logan? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only thing I fucking know is none of this happened. Not in the realm of possibility. The dude probably said, like, hey, man, cool interview. So if you want to start, we can get going. That's, that, that was beginning and end of it, I bet. I don't want you hiring me for how I look. I want oh. you hiring me for me, for my intelligence, Please. for my sales ability, because that's what's going to sell computers, not because I look a certain way. So I could be <laughs> coming here in a fucking tuxedo and be a bumbling idiot. Tuxedo, bumbling? Okay, extremism, Phil. And be the worst employee ever. What would uh -huh. that matter? I'm going to come in looking natural and then sell you on me. Sell you on me. And the guy was like, that's the best answer I've ever heard. And he hired me on the spot. He really did. He said, start, you know, you're st <laughs> starting on this day, your training will start this weekend or whatever, right? Yeah. We really need people. So I don't, I don't really care what you said in this interview. We really just need people. There's an entry level position. You're making minimum wage. Sound good? <laughs> uh, and it was great. I mean, that was awesome. That was the best interview I ever had in my life. It really was. Like, I felt confident walking out of there like, damn, I did it all right. And so uh, I remember why would you feel confident if you already got the job, right? You don't need to feel confident about a job you already obtained. As you just said, if you already had the job, there's no feeling of confidence because you already had the job. It's a small slip there that could be telling. When I first started working, they didn't let you work in the PC area because the PC area was considered like the high end area with a lot of high dollar items. So they had me training all over the store. They so good, he couldn't even get the job he wanted. The interview was so fucking good that they didn't even get it, hire him for the one he wanted. Okay, cool. They had me over in speakers, then they had me in media where you would sell DVDs and games and stuff like that. They had me in cameras in uh -huh. particular a lot. The one place I never worked was uh, car audio because I didn't know jack shit about car audio. I would have been talking out of my ass. And also <laughs> stereo systems and stuff like that. I didn't know too much about TVs every once in a while they would put me in the TV section but even then that was kind of like one of the So basically they just throw you out wherever the fuck they need somebody they put someone out there. I mean that that's what it sounds like to me, you know? That's not I mean <laughs> Misery Merchant if you're still here, were you like assigned an area or were they like all right, whatever we need people just go there? Like let's get real, you're not like getting that detailed on the floor, are you? And if you need help, you can ask somebody. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know, but you tell me. <laughs> I mean, the high-end areas that they would try to have TV acquainted people work in. TV acquainted so, people. So, uh -huh. there are people that are in a relationship with TVs. They can work in the TV acquainted area. I actually remember uh, when I first started working there. Uh -huh. It what was happened? it was this interim transitional time for Circuit City because if you can figure uh -huh. if you interim transitional period, I believe it. Six months prior to when I was hired. Circuit uh -huh. City had been based off of commission-based sales. Now, based on commission-based sales. Now, if you don't know what that means, what it that means mean? that it's not about you come in and you make a, a solid paycheck that's like a certain amount an hour and that's a good paycheck. It's you go in. Don't want to say the amount because he's embarrassed, but go ahead. And you make money based off of what you sell. So if you sell a high-end PC with a <laughs> keyboard and all this software for it, you get a big... <laughs> so a TV... This is this is very nitpicky, but it's just stupid. A TV, a keyboard, and all the software for it. What needs that 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 TV software and the keyboard software? It's very popular. They... <laughs> oh, so Mr. Merchant say it's true. Okay, cool. Sell a high end PC uh -huh. with a keyboard and all the software for uh -huh. it. You get a big cut of that, and that's your PC. It's you go in and oh, you okay. make Maybe money based off of what you sell. So if you sell a high end PC, ah, uh, he said PC. My bad. Re retract it from the, the history books. With a keyboard and all the software for it, you uh -huh. get a big cut of that, and that's your pay. So the more you sell, the more money you make. And it was kind of cutthroat. Like <laughs> it's kind of like a sales job, oddly enough. Like that, because there were some salespeople at Circuit City who were like the big fish, the big sellers. They were the ones who could really sell a ton of shit. So at, good at their job, in other words. Okay, I'm following you. Right. And... Circuit City, for whatever reason, business-wide, decided to cut this practice off, and they got rid completely of the commission-based sales and made it hourly. Oh. And that's really why I was hired with no real sales <laughs> experience, because it was an hourly job. <laughs> yeah, they just needed anybody, because they lost a lot of fucking people. <laughs> yeah.
yeah. Now they get the truth. So Misery Merchants, it says that is true. They did switch from commission to not commission. So we see he got higher then when they lost people because some people dipped, as Misery Merchant added. <laughs> and so they're like, we just need fucking fresh bodies, dude. Can you get in here? We loved your interview. Oh, yeah, it was great. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're well spoken. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, yeah. We don't give a shit about what you wear. Just we need you in here. Hourly. And that's really why I was hired with no real sales experience because it was an hourly job. So <laughs> there were people who were working there who were like, well, this is my job and I'm good at it. But they kind of had like these weird arrangements where they were to give, be paid way more money for a certain amount of time. And then eventually. Uh, it's tough to read through this to get the facts he's trying to say here. But the more you work, the more you get paid. That's. Is that is that the strange phenomenon he's talking about here? Where they were to give, be paid way more money for a certain <clears throat> amount of time, uh -huh. and then eventually it would go away. So it was weird because it was like this old guard of like maybe eight to ten guys who were like middle aged guys who were working there, professional salesmen. But they were like, we're not going to stay here forever because we were told after like uh, six months our paycheck's going to dip. But we're getting this compensation for being great, like commission-based salespeople for so long and being here. So it was almost like the old guard training the new guard, but the old guard made a shitload of money working there on commission. And yeah. they're like giving us a pat on the back, like, <laughs> you're going to be doing all the hard work we did and making like one-tenth what we did. So good luck with that, assholes. That's what it sounds like to me. So it seems like Phil understood this. How does he handle this news? And I was like, damn, that really sucks because... Just <laughs> Again, a situation... Philip doesn't understand until who knows how long he worked here. Think about that. Commission-based, just like, for example, what I do now on YouTube. View-based. Really what I do. <laughs> oh, God. Is he going to say it's, it's YouTube is commission-based? <laughs> do on YouTube is commission-based. Based on how many people I can get to watch my content, I make a certain amount of money. If uh -huh. my content's better or more entertaining, I make more money. Uh -huh. If it's not as good, I make less money. Uh -huh. Same thing. I'm an hourly YouTuber, guys. I'm not commission-based. I'm hourly. <laughs> I am the hourly. I'm the new guard of YouTube. I'm hourly base. I get $3 an hour. <laughs> if you sell more stuff, make more. Sell less, you make less. So it's all about <laughs> your actual personal performance. Okay. And personal performance. And it wasn't like that. When I got hired, it was like, nope, guess what? Hourly. Yeah, this is the title that Tommy Turkey, Turkey, with the Turkey Tom should have went with. A decade of commission-based decline. <laughs> and I remember, I think at that point, it was like, Ten dollars an hour? I want to say it was around ten dollars an hour when I, I think ten fifty hey, an hour was when I started. Alert. And uh, I definitely remember, you know, being trained by these big dogs, right? These guys who basically their time <laughs> Great Danes, dude. Time there was limited. They were getting paid exorbitant amounts of hourly money. Always knows how much other people are making. Always. Just so that they would train the new people before they were out the door because they wanted to go to commission-based businesses where they could. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they paid them more to train people because they were on their way out. Hey, we know you're on your way out, big dogs, but can you train these new assholes? We'll pay you exorbitant amounts of money. Dogs, right? These guys who huh? basically their time there was limited. They were getting paid exorbitant amounts of hourly money just so that they would train the new people before they were out the uh, door. Cause very... Very realistic, very true. They wanted to go to commission-based businesses where they can make more money. Uh-huh. And, uh... Oh, God. So I remember that. And then, of course, when you actually get down to it and you learn about the ins and outs of selling ele uh, uh, electronics and an electronics business, you find... It fucking sucks. It was tough. That's what he's going to say here. Watch. I guarantee you. ...out the silly stuff. Like, for example... You have to work and at tell sell stuff. It's really tough. <clears throat> customer comes in to buy a PC. They want to buy... Uh, a PC that does a certain thing. Now you're... <laughs> yeah, they need help with how to network. <laughs> Your job is to make sure that they buy the PC that does the certain thing, okay? <laughs> is this news? <laughs> is this news? But here's what you don't realize. What don't you realize? This is what I was trained at this job to do. Do not oversell the customer. Do not sell them the $1,000 PC if they only need a $500 one. No, no, no. Don't do that because actually these companies like Circuit City, Best Buy, Fry's, these electronics retailers uh -huh. don't make a lot of money on the base hardware. Same thing goes with game consoles. If you don't know this, when you buy a game console at a retailer, they make zero dollars. They sell it at cost. What they make their money on is all the accessories that you pile on top of it. <laughs> Accessory all shout the out. extended warranties and protection plans that they pile on top of it. That's where the money and profit is made on these okay. things, okay? Mm -hmm. So, 
a guy would come in and say, listen, all I need is a very basic PC to do word processing. It's for my kid to do their high school homework. I'd say, great, buy this $299, uh, what was it called? Celeron, Celeron processor oh, PC right Celeron. here. Oh, well, you said that it's your kid, right? They need Microsoft Office Student Edition. That's $100. Again, that you're doing your job of giving them all options of things they can buy, but what's is this? Yeah, anyone that wants to get a sales job, take notes, okay? And all, offering things for the person to buy is being an asshole, apparently, because you're apparently forcing them to buy it. Remember, Philip Burnell thinks that because he can't control himself, that means no one can, right? I mean, every fucking likes, place, you, everyone, eighty likes. That's the goal for the night. Everyone who goes to a store like this knows they're going to ask about the extended warranty and all that shit, but you just say no. Unless you want it, then you say yes. But if you're not a fucking idiot, you just say no. <laughs> okay? Oh, but they're a kid. They need a printer to print out their homework. That Here's a printer here for $200. Oh, but you need the $30 USB cable that doesn't come with the printer, and you need extra ink, and you need paper. Oh, but Ooh. I also bet that they need internet. So here's a, a, you know, a demo disc for this internet service. <laughs> yeah, sell me on the demo disc. <laughs> I want the demo disc. How much does the demo disc cost? Could you, could you please give me the demo disc? Oh, but I also bet that they need internet. So here's a, uh, you know, a yeah, give me one of those nice AOL demo discs. Those are extremely expensive. Those are the fat commissions. Demo disc for this internet service. They would walk out of there looking for a three hundred dollar computer. They would walk out of there spending eight hundred dollars. With all this shit. No, no. Only idiots. Only idiots are doing that. It's not wrong to ask people to buy extra stuff because you know what? They don't have to buy it. Half of which they probably will never even hook up. <laughs> and that's how these, these bits. Oh, half of that shit they never would hook up. Sounds like when you got business internet and got all those extra shit that you thought you'd never need, huh? It sounds like this is something you're talking to yourself here. You know? <laughs> Joel L. Tractor, Phil, the only adult ever to adult. That's it. He knows when someone buy, asks you to buy something, you have to buy it. I don't know if you knew that. You cannot turn it down. Businesses made their money. Oh, of course, the extended warranty. That was the biggest fucking thing. Get the extended warranty because the manufacturer will only cover you for up to one year, and it's only on manufacturer's defects. So if you buy this and it's found that the RAM stick dies within six months, they'll cover that. But if you bring this home and, uh, you know, it just won't turn on, they're not going to fix that. Unless you can blatantly prove that there's a hardware malfunction, they won't <laughs> fix it. Uh -huh. You need to have this extended warranty. You'll bring it in here. We'll outsource it to a company that'll fix it for you. Or <laughs> Was this part of the sales pitch? We're <laughs> what? You need to have this extended warranty. You'll bring it in here. We'll outsource it to a company that'll fix it for you or we'll reimburse you the cost. From what I'm going to understand, what those extended understand? warranties never work, and probably about one... From what I... So, from what I understand means, from what I'm making up, what from what I'm pulling out of my ass right now, what I'm just completely making up right now, that, let's just switch that word to what it is. From what I'm going to understand, uh -huh. those extended warranties... From what I understand means that what I think, and I'm making up now because I'm trying to say shit for this stupid podcast that I'm a good speaker on... Never work. Uh -huh. And probably never about 1% of the people who buy them actually, oh, 1%? Okay. actually go to the store, trade back in whatever it is that broke, and get either their money back or get it repaired. It's a complete, utter fucking scam. Uh -huh. And I remember I sold so many of those fucking things. I felt so bad because I knew people. <laughs> I felt so bad. Uh -huh. People would never get. And there were people who bought it, right? Yep. So this is the second job he felt bad for doing. It came to me in the department, you sold me this and I can't get the service I need to fix my PC. And I'm like, what do you want from me? I didn't fucking create the program. I just sold you on what I was told to sell by management. Go complain to my manager. <laughs> what a great employee. <laughs> Don't complain to my manager. What did I do? I just sold it to you. What? Go talk to my manager. You create the program. I just sold you on what I was told to sell by management. Go complain to my manager. And that was how I had to handle it. <clears throat> oh, what a great! So it was funny you because uh, during these days, yeah, uh, I learned I didn't really learn that much about PCs working there because I. So he, we we learned that he can't handle Karens while being a Karen. I've known about PCs. I learned a lot about digital cameras because right next to the PC department <laughs> was the digital camera department, mm -hmm. and I learned about SLR lenses. I learned about digital. <laughs> 
He also, this is where he learned that the, the, to have a great camera, you need the hugest of lens. The bigger the lens, the better the camera. And that's the, still what he believes to this day. Versus optical zoom, I learned about how there's internal memory versus the external. Well, audio. you learned, well, hold on a second. He learned about internal memory and external memory. So wait, hold on, let me get this straight. I mean, I, I'm trying to understand too, because I want to learn new stuff. So wait, internal is kind of like inside. And external is kind of like, I mean, I don't want to, I'm not sure. But it, it sounds like it could be outside. And, and like, this is a new world. Internal, external. You, internal and external, you can like, it's different. Like, I didn't know that. Like, that's stuff you can only pick up when you're on the inside, okay? That's only stuff you can pick up from the inside selling extended warranties, okay? We're all learning something today. Digital versus <laughs> optical zoom. I learned about how there's internal memory versus the external, uh, you know, memory card memory. Whoa. I learned about different scene modes and different cameras. I learned about <laughs> different resolution. The thing back then was mega. I learned about, I learned about different resolutions. So you can change the resolution on things. Like some things are like not as big. Some things might be like 1080, you know, some things might be 720 and you can choose it. That is intense right now. Oh, megapixels. What's a megapixel? I can't wait to hear about what a megapixel is. It's like a pixel, but it's mega. That's what I'm guessing, but I don't know. I learned about different scene modes and different cameras. I learned about different resolution. The thing back then was megapixels. Whoa. And today, let's be honest, today, you buy a, an iPhone, right? Uh -huh. Your iPhone is probably like an eight megapixel camera built into it. So today you can get anything you want, you use, you can get a, an amazing picture using any device. Back then, <laughs> cameras were shit. Like you get a two megapixel camera, your picture looks- <laughs> You're talking about 12 years ago, sir. You know, technology advances. It looked like shit. So things weren't shit then, you know? I mean, you didn't think it was shit at that time. Yeah. And people would get come back. When we were watching 720p YouTube, we weren't like, fuck, man, this fucking sucks. <laughs> all angry. I'm like, but you bought a two megapixel camera. Your picture looked like shit. And people would get come back all angry. I'm like, but you bought a two megapixel <laughs> camera. camera. I told you the four megapixel looks a With the work. It looks like a work on computer. Really cool. Amazing. And it's only $50 more, but you wanted to go El Cheapo. And now you're complaining <laughs> to me that your shots look like shit. That's your fault. I hope he did that on the store floor. <laughs> I gotta hear this again. <laughs> Are you what? You came in here asking for the LG, Bobby. What do you expect, honey? I'm gonna do what they say. Like, but you bought a two megapixel mm -hmm. camera. Your picture looked like shit. And people would get come back all angry. I'm like, but you bought a two megapixel camera. I told you the four megapixel looks amazing. And it's only $50 <laughs> more, but you wanted to go El Cheapo. And now you're complaining. <laughs> El Cheapo. We gotta make a card for that. Like, a, you know. <laughs> Typical guy, you know, <laughs> the El Cheapo look to him. Sombrero, El Cheapo, like it's a Mexican restaurant, El Cheapo. <laughs> Me that your shots look like shit, that's your fault. <laughs> and that was the thing, megapixels was the big thing back then. Now it was, uh, you know, 13 years ago, cameras were so different. Like, technology has really advanced so much mm -hmm. differently. But yeah, so things are better 13 years later than they were then. This is crazy, dude. This is nuts. Yeah, yeah, that's a good bit right there. Make it really low quality. <laughs> Two megapixel versions. Since then, it's just exponential growth. No, and can, wait, hold on a second. There's exponential growth in technology? What the fuck? It's incredible. I remember people used to walk out there spending $1,000 for like a five megapixel camera, a bag. A so that they made the right choice though then because their picture was good, right? That you sold them on? Memory card and a battery. And it would be like, are you serious? Just for, for five megapixel shots, which today, on your phone, you can get better shots. This than that. is Out ridiculous. <laughs> on an iPhone that costs $1,500 or whatever it was, you can get a better picture in 2015 than you could in 2003. It's incredible. Think about all those stupid idiots in 2003. Those stupid fucking idiots in 2003 were spending $1,000 on 5 megapixels when, if they just waited 12 years, they'd have 10 megapixels on a cell phone. Those fucking idiots. That is, that is the argument he just said right there. I am not making a joke. That is what he just said. A bag, a memory card, and a battery. And it would be like, are you serious? Just for, for five megapixel shots, be great which today... That's what he just... Hold on, pause it there. Stream it. Big ups to Joe El <laughs> Felipe El Chipo del Ocho. Yes, that sounds good to me. But I want to hear this again. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, people used to spend like $4,000 on computers with like, you know, one, if they would dream of one gig memory, one gig memory was like, I was, no, I know I'm setting myself up for the joke. I don't remember those days, but there were days where one gig was like unfathomably large memory, you know? But those idiots, they paid for it. Those fucking assholes, dude. If they waited 20 years, one gig would be nothing. On your phone, you can get better shots than that. There is a camera, right, a bag, a memory card. Walk out there spending $1,000 for like a five megapixel camera, a bag, a memory card, <laughs> and a battery. And it would be like, are you serious? Just for, for five <laughs> megapixel shots, which today... On your phone, you can get better shots than that. It's out of control. Out of control, dude. 13 years later, it's on your phone. Out of control, dude. Those fucking assholes, man. 2003 fuckers, man. So dumb. Waste of money. So, I remember uh, just a few stories, a few fun stories, because I have a lot to talk about Cirque du City, but I know that I'm running out of time at this point. Uh, so, a couple fun stories. Okay, um, we, okay let me well, make up my first one. You know... A quick one. I actually uh, remember at one point... Uh, my our circuit city was flagged as one of the circuit cities in the district that had the highest amount of product loss, and it was determined that <laughs> there was internal theft and or some kind of a theft theft ring going on that people <laughs> theft ring people were finding a way to sneak product out of the building. Okay? okay, sounds good. Okay, now let me think of the second half of the story. I, of course, I always did my job. I always did due diligence. I was watching at night when things were going on when the store was closing to make sure the doors were securely sealed and, you know. <laughs> securely sealed. He got the caulking gun, making sure it's securely sealed. How do you make sure a door's... <laughs> don't you just say closed or locked? You don't say sealed. Not in the submarine. <laughs> make sure the door is sealed. Let me check this edging on this door. Seems good. Hang on. I feel a little air coming through there. This is not properly sealed. <laughs> at night when things were going on, when the store was closing to make sure the doors were securely sealed and, you know, nothing, <laughs> no funny business was going on. No but funny it was fun business, yeah. Because <laughs> at night, like, nothing would be locked up. And what I mean by that is you would have your PC huh? display where your PC would be on the top shelf of a desk, right? Uh -huh. You'd have your PC here, your, your whatever, your tag to show how much it costs and what's inside of it. The PC would be directly below it. So if you're going to make the sale, you just grab the PC and go. And yeah. it makes sense. But nothing was secure. There was a back door. So, yeah. So why do you know about all this bad stuff that was happening while also doing due diligence? But you were doing dil due <laughs> You were doing due diligence. I can't say. It's like black brackets. You were doing your due diligence by noticing how fucked up shit was, but yet you didn't do anything. Okay. Sale, you just grab the PC and go and it makes sense but nothing was secure there was a back door uh -huh. right there at the back of the, where someone could just push the door walk right out with the pc and if no one's looking they could have escaped with it is that due diligence and then, so sir? if you let that keep going on remember at this one point <clears throat> at this one point uh -huh. they brought in oh my god I'm, it must have cost thousands of dollars they started building secure cages around the pcs Okay. So you had like cages around with, with some of them were plexiglass like like lockers and others were like metal cages. You needed keys. To metal cages. <laughs> metal cages. <laughs> on keys to get, you know, into these things to get the PC out of the. So now you're going to make a sale, right? Oh, okay. I'm going to make a sale. Uh, all right. Sorry. Hold on, sir. I have to go find. My supervisor who's... Ah, uh, making it more difficult on his job. Yeah, after you made the sale, you have to wait a second to pick up the item. So, they were just trying to stop this amazing product loss that you told us about, right? He's probably busy on the other side of the store. I have no clue where he is, and we don't have walkie-talkies, so I can't call him. So I <laughs> Did you tell the customer that? <laughs> Sorry, we don't have walkie-talkies, dude. Hang on a second. You're gonna be here for a while, brother. <laughs> probably busy on the other side of the store. I have no clue where he is, and we don't have walkie-talkies, so I can't call him. <laughs> so I gotta go... Oh, uh, sir, I'm just trying to buy a printer. Yeah, we don't got walkie-talkies here. I don't know if you knew this. Uh, as you can see, I'm a good, I'm a good public speaker. But unfortunately, our store is uh, a lot of people stealing stuff. So hang on a second, sir. We don't have walkie-talkies. I apologize. Hang on. Find them. Hopefully, get the keys. He. Oh, by the way, I'm not allowed to have the keys because I'm just a lowly regular <laughs> salesperson. I thought you did an interview so awesome. You should have been fast tracked. Lowly salesperson. I thank him as the merger for that. There were phones everywhere.
I'm just no. He's got to go run, dude. He's got to make his uh, little power walk over there. So I have to find the ground floor supervisor to get the keys to come over here to open the cage to get your PC. And the guy's like, "Fuck you!" And you leave. He's like, "I'm not gonna wait 45 minutes to get my PC. Forget it." <laughs> never, never happened in that way. Never ever happened in that way. 45 minute wait. <laughs> I mean, how slow you walking? If any manager on earth would be quick when a sale is at is ready, they're buying it. You know? All right, we got a sale going. Can I get the keys to the thing? They were running. They are running. Your PC, and the guy's like, fuck you, and you leave. He's like, I'm not going to wait 45 minutes to get my PC. Forget this. <laughs> yeah, right. So. Uh -huh. Very true. <laughs> really very funny. Real. Um, so basically... I remember it was a big, it was a big snafu. But here's the funniest part about the whole thing. It was a big snaf. Hold on, let's hear this little throwaway. It was a big snafu. What's the big snafu? So basically, I remember it was a big, it was a big snafu. But here's the funniest part about it was a big snafu. Do you know what snafu means, sir? <laughs> What's the big snafu? The whole thing. Locking stuff up is the snafu. They hired a loss prevention. Oh, if it's the funny, okay, our first of the day. Let's see if this is funny. Let's see if this is funny. Did he say hilarious or funny? Let me hear. I remember it was a big, it was a big snafu. But here's the funniest part about. The oh, here's whole the funny. Thing. Okay, we're getting to the funniest part. So here's the funniest part, and you guys got to tell me if it's funny or not. Okay, I have, a, I have a, a, a button to push for each one, funny or not. You tell me. Here we go. They hired a loss prevention manager, uh -huh. who was basically supposed to be studying everything going on in the store. <laughs> I want to know what's going on. He's <laughs> studying everything. In this store. <laughs> Who's stealing what or whatever? She supervised putting all these cages in. Oh, she was it? She? Because if it's she, that's why he feels this anger. Let me hear it again. I think he said she. Not in this store. Who's stealing what or whatever? She supervised putting all these cages she? in. Uh huh. Right? I heard all she. These cages. Right, get ready for anger. Okay. One week after all this stuff was was put in, we had the largest loss of product in the store's history. It was something like four high-end PCs, the highest end, the media towers, the ones that were multimedia towers, they cost like thousands of dollars each. Those went missing. Car audio stuff went missing. Everything went missing, right? I'm making the choice. No, well, yeah, it, it, how could this be? How could this possibly be? Apparently, the loss prevention manager was such a fucking idiot. She had the cage with the highest dollar product, I kid you not, positioned next to the back door. So all that happened, whoever it was internally that was stealing all this product, they would wait for the very end of the night. They would put a piece of cardboard in the back door so they could get in. They would look, oh, everything's secure, right? So now they can get in. So they wait for everything. Dude, if you know all this is happening, so remember, there's been a history of things being stolen, okay? A history of things being stolen. It's not a one-time thing. How do you know how they're doing all this? Everyone to leave, because this, by the way, the circus... And if you think this is happening, why not? I thought you did due diligence, brother. This is the 0% due diligence. The city was at the mall, so it was a mall parking lot. It was a public parking lot. It was easy. God, he, his life uh, revolves around that fucking mall. I'll tell you that. This is the mall, too? You drive away, hide out in the parking lot, wait for everyone to leave and come back. Uh -huh. Come right back. Zoop. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, that was a longer one. Zoop. Zoop. Hide out in the parking lot, wait for everyone to leave and come back. Come right back. Zoop. Oh, look at this. <laughs> the That's a new one. Zoop. Whee. The door. The door opens. Okay. And then they would just jimmy the lock on the cage. It's right next <laughs> Jiminy, to Jiminy. Jimmy the lock. The back door, which takes five seconds. Boop. Steal the PCs, load them into a pickup truck, drive away. And they got all this on camera. <laughs> Seriously. They got the whole thing on camera. And it's like... It's like... you, you spent, obviously, you spent... So, yeah, hold on. I don't want to go through this because we have so many fucking videos to play today. But they, they both had cardboard in the lock and they both, and they also jimmied the lock. So are they cardboarding the lock or jimmying the lock? I'm not quite sure which, but we'll keep moving forward positively. Thousands of dollars to upgrade your store to prevent loss prevention. And then you put... <laughs> to prevent loss prevention. Uh-huh. That's why they did that. To prevent loss prevention. Oh, what the fuck? Don't be muted. The fucking door, so there was prevent loss prevention, and then you put the highest dollar product near the fucking door, so there was no chance anyone could have caught this guy doing what he was doing. So he, his, his gripe with this, this lady 
is that they put the high-end products near the door. Hmm. Uh, does that... What? Be where? <laughs> they were caught on camera, number one. So, I mean, I'm not sure how big this fucking store is, but does it matter to have the, the high-dollar item 10 feet away from the door as opposed to 30 feet away from the door? I mean, it seems pretty fucking stupid. All of this. All of this sounds ridiculous. Product near the fucking door, uh -huh. so there was no chance anyone could have caught this guy doing what he was doing. Uh huh. So that was one case. Then there was another case I remembered. I don't think they ever caught that guy, by the way. They never caught the guy who was doing it. I guess he, I think he was a friend of a worker. I think what oh, let me cover my lie here real quick. I said it was internal, but now I'm going to tell you how it wasn't actually internal, okay? Keep up, all right? You got to keep the lies straight. It was internal, but hold on. It wasn't internal. It was his friend. Caught this guy doing what he was doing. Uh huh. So that was one case. Then there was another case I remembered. I don't think they ever caught that guy, by the way. They never caught the guy who was doing it. I guess he, I think he was a friend of a worker. I think what the way that they. He goes to a different school. Okay? You guys don't know. He goes to a different school. Guys, my sister's not being abused. <laughs> Big ups, Logan. According to Phil, he knew everything but did nothing. He's always a bystander, just like the Wister Wizard drama. None of this checks out. Yes, Logan. Good call there. Again. Everyone knew all this bad shit was happening, but he has to, somehow he tries to ride this line of knowing all the bad shit happening, yet doing nothing, yet still saying, I did my due diligence. This doesn't make sense in any universe. I, do, I knew all this happened. I knew all this happened. I also did my due diligence. They never got caught. But here's another example. I'm going to tell you about something else bad that happened. But I was checking the seal on the door, trust me. I was doing all those fucking seal on the door. Trust me. You ready? Let's see what this story's about. Sherlock, <laughs> I'm trying to, what rhymes? Sherlock Holmes, I couldn't think of a good alliteration there. Sherlock, pig is not funny. They explained it was <laughs> someone something. who worked there uh -huh. was purposely putting the piece of cardboard in the back door so someone from the outside could push it open, uh -huh. but it wasn't the worker who stole the stuff. It was, must have been like a friend or an associate uh, of the worker. They go to a different school. Worker would come by at night. Piglock Holmes. That's, that's fine. Yeah, I'll take that one. Piglock Holmes. And push the door open. You're, 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 and get Sherlock it. hooves. Like that. Out of there. Okay. Yeah, we, they never caught the guy, but they know it was his friend. <laughs> They know the they know their relationship, but they don't know who it is. Okay, uh, sound good? <laughs> but I, where were you? Where were you, John Rambo, in the night of uh, April tenth, two thousand and three? I wasn't anywhere. Uh. <laughs> what do you know about high end media towers? <laughs> you seem to know that the computers were very close to the door. Do you own any cardboard? Do you have any experience jimmying locks? Do you hate women? It all doesn't add up, Rambo. <laughs> or, as you might be known on the streets, Snoz man. <laughs> You'll get your due one day, Snoz man. Even if it's not today, you will rue the day you messed with our new loss prevention preventer. I really feel the, uh... <laughs> the... Yeah. Maybe it was Hole Punch. <laughs> That's why he got his name Hole Punch. He punched holes in doors. The wor the silliest thing that ever happened there when it came to loss prevention. Okay, here's the silliest. I'm counting this for funniest because the first one wasn't funny. It wasn't his worst example of, of this is hilarious because I don't think anything's hilarious about this. But let's see this one. This is the this is the what? What do you say again? The, the, wor the silliest thing that ever happened. Oh, silliest. Okay, silliest. I'm counting this. I'm counting this. As, as, let's see if this is funny or not. And there, when it came to loss prevention. And this this is gotta be so silly. You're gonna fall, like, fall out of your chair how silly this is. I guarantee it. Let's Probably go. Probably will end my back in the day. And I've got so much more to talk about that I didn't even scratch the surface. This will be the next back in the day segment I do again. We'll continue with stories of Circuit City. Okay. Uh -huh. Right, great. Can't wait for that. Uh, I remember. What do you remember? Um, I remember there was uh -huh. a guy. <laughs> there was a guy. Uh, they called him Brooklyn Tom. Uh, he was a. Uh... He was a tall guy, you know, he had a mustache, kind of greasy, uh, he was a bowler, I think. Oh, no, not a bowler, he was a farmer, a farmer back in the day in Connecticut. Uh, he used to sell, uh, what was it again? Tomatoes. Uh, maybe, I can't remember, coffee, I can't remember. Yeah, you know the guy, you know the type. That's what he's telling stories like. Like, you know, in the movie, I miss doing a movie character, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Those dudes that just make shit up every single time. Like, just make 
make up objects of the story. <laughs> they used to call me Philly Tight Lips, you see? And I, was, I kept my secrets tight. <laughs> Who, he seemed like the nicest guy. And uh -huh. you know how when you know someone, and they seem too nice. You know what I mean? Someone... <laughs> He was he was friend he used to rug in the wrong crowd, you see? He used to hang out with the Chicky Chang Wang, you know what I'm saying? See, guy from the Orient. He was a he was a rough type, the kind you don't want to mess with. He just seems overly <laughs> incredibly fucking nice to everyone. Overly you know what I mean? Incredibly Someone who just nice. seems overly incredibly fucking nice to everyone all <laughs> the time. But it was funny because the guy would overly incredibly nice. Swear you would hear him swear under his breath when he was pissed about something, and you could tell <laughs> His worst trait is being overly nice and swearing under his breath. This guy deserves death. He wasn't like a super hyper hidey ho Ned. Oh, he wasn't super. I'm pausing too much. This clip is good. <laughs> about something, you could tell he wasn't like a super hyper hidey ho Ned Flanders from The Simpsons kind of guy. He was more just <laughs> in person. Two people would act overly. <laughs> Nice. I remember he was. <laughs> he wasn't Heidi Ho, Ned Flanders type. He was just overly nice. So he wasn't a cartoon character, but he was just overly nice to people, which probably means he was nice to people. Sound good? The kid, he was probably late 20s. He was older than me. And he was a short Thank kid. Thank you all he was... very much for the engagement uh -oh. today. I appreciate 100. it. Jenna gets to see it as she makes her own bubbles. Smoke bubbles. Go ahead, Jenna. Do it with them. Take it off with them. Come on. How was this one, Phil? This is pretty good, I think. That wasn't a very good one. It kind of sucked. I'm not going to lie. God damn it. Waiting for a good one one day. Remember, he was a kid. He was probably late 20s. He was older than me. And he was a short kid, but he was uh, kind of pudgy, white kid, glasses. Okay. So the first two traits are the same as you, but he had glasses. That means he's a nerd. He's a little nerdy looking. but <laughs> Glasses means he's nerdy looking. Sound good? <laughs> Not necessarily a nerd. <laughs> Big ups, Mr. Grower Hal. Snitchinator coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I'll, I'll be sure to hit that button when this is over. It's here to Snitchinator's tail here. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like he was into geeky stuff. He just kind of looked like that. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. He called and, him uh, uh, Minnesota. <laughs> so I remember. Minnesota geek. <laughs> he was the geek from Georgia back in the day, you see? I don't want to be Mr. Views. <laughs> He had worked in the camera section, and he would worked in the video game section for oh. about six to eight months. And okay. so he's relatively new for like two months. He's a newcomer. He's just learning months, stuff right? anyway, right? And then like after that? that, after the two or three months, they finally like treat him like a normal employee, uh -huh. and he's working the floor. Uh -huh. And then I remember after maybe he was there for six to eight months. <laughs> well, who says six to eight months when telling stories like this? I worked there for mm, seven to nine All months. Right. Thank you for re-upping your membership. I Big appreciate swaggy. that. Swaggy Davis in the house. One day, hey, uh, uh, he wasn't there. He was supposed to be working, uh -huh. okay? And he wasn't there. And I asked my manager what happened. He says, don't talk about it. We're going to have a big discussion about it in, a, in like a group meeting coming up. But just so you know, effective immediately, this employee was fired. And that's all you need to know. We will tell you later <laughs> on what's going mm -hmm. on with this employee. Uh, but he was fired and actually, mm, you know, some that serious part. consequences. Okay. I'm like, okay, they keep adding. That's all you need to know. Here's some other stuff we're going to tell you though, but that's all you need to know. Here's some more stuff you need to tell you, but that's all you need to know. Okay. Okay. Damn. I wonder, I mean, I wonder, cause at this, this point we, you know, there was this ring going on people stealing PCs and all this. So <laughs> now it's, he literally says it's the ring, the ring before was a, was a, was a theoretical crime ring. Now there literally just is a ring. So the ring is on, and it's hitting Circuit City hot. Jesus, man. There's a crime rings in Circuit City. Oof. This is a rough part of town, man. Crime rings. We got, yeah, good, good shot there. We got the Circuit City crime ring. We got the Chop Shop crime ring in Washington. Phil just, crime precedes Phil. He doesn't do it but it precedes him or surrounds him in every way possible. You're thinking, damn, this kid, did he make off with thousands of dollars of product or something, and he got fired because he got caught out for it? What is going on? Uh-huh, what is going on? So finally we had uh, the what meeting. Uh -huh. You know, finally we had the meeting. What happened? And the manager, uh, his name was Sly. Ooh. I actually really... Shout out to Sly. We found King Sly. We had the meeting, 
And the manager, uh, his name was Sly. Ooh. I actually really liked him. I'll tell you stories of this guy. This guy, a man, he talked about, this guy talked about anal sex with women on the fucking job floor. This guy was wild. I'll tell you about this. <laughs> this guy was fucking nuts, dude. This guy Sly more in the future. Sly talked about anal sex while working? Come on, Sly. You can't be doing that, man. You cannot be talking about anal anal sex on that. Any anal sex on the floor. I actually really liked him. I'll tell you stories of this guy. This guy. And he really liked him. <laughs> I really liked him. <laughs> He said he really liked him, too. <laughs> I mean, uh, to be honest, like, dudes talk about dude stuff no matter where we are. I mean, maybe that's just me, but it's not that crazy when no one's around. You talk about all kinds of stuff. <laughs> you call him nuts. The manager, uh, his name was Sly. Sly. I actually really liked him. I'll tell you stories of this guy. This guy, a man, he talked about, this guy talked about anal sex with women on the... So what that means is the guy was saying, like, yeah, I hooked up with a chick last night. Anal sex, dude, crazy. And, like, you know guy just saying stupid shit out of his ass but like phil took it seriously like, whoa you're really cool man yeah i banged three chicks last night and phil's probably like whoa you're awesome tell me more about that and then sly here is all excited by that and tells him more and more lies and phil's like whoa you, you're really a badass dude and then sly's like you know there's a crime ring around here right and phil's like oh yeah cool tell me about it you're never gonna get this buddy they put cardboard in the door, and they steal the stuff. Whoa! That's awesome, dude! Like, you know how that's how Phil listens to these stories, you know? Everything is truth, you know? Everything is truth. Fucking job floor. This guy was wild. I'll tell you about this guy, Sly, more in the future as well. Um, but anyway, we have the meeting, and the guy uh -huh. tells us, he's like, so here's what happened. We noticed over the past, say, a couple... <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's Samurai. <laughs> dude, how many bangs have you done? I did one bang in high school, in college. It was like a revolving door, dude. <laughs> a couple of weeks since we had this guy in the gaming section. Okay. That games have been vanishing. Oh, shit. And we couldn't figure it out, like, who was doing it. But he was the only real change to the areas that this guy had been put into the gaming section. Okay. And they started looking, and they actually found out uh -oh. that boxes, like empty game boxes for Game Boy Advance games were being found all around the department, like torn apart, but the cartridges were missing. So they knew <laughs> someone was doing it, but they didn't That's know who was Phil doing it. That's where Phil got his giveaway stock from. And so uh, they looked into it, and one night they caught him. It was late night. Again, it seems like all the theft happens around late night. Ooh. Late night, people are supposed to be cleaning up and getting ready to close. So he was basically gathering games that were loose or whatever and locking them up or whatever, and he would just go... Shh, Tear the box open, grab a bunch of them, put them in his backpack because the kid, I guess, was like a college student. Toss them in his backpack because they were small. They didn't have the boxes with them. No security or nothing on the cartridge itself for the Game Boy Advance games. And every every week, he would hightail it out of there with like a dozen Game Boy Advance games. Okay? And... <laughs> Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> Thief. <laughs> Deadly. A new crime wave has entered Connecticut here, taking place at Circuit City. All the Game Boy Advance games are getting stolen. Stay tuned. We'll have more at 11 here. It just blows my mind because he said, listen. Okay, hold on. I want to hear this pause where he has to think about the next thing to say. He would hightail it out there with like a dozen Game Boy Advance games. Oh, okay. Man. And it just blows my <laughs> mind. Because he had no clue what to say here. Watch this. This is real speed. He has no clue where his story is going or ending. He just he just shut down. The program shut down of this lie. Okay. Watch. And it just blows my mind because he said, listen, this was serious Like because they had this big loss prevention. He just did not. He had no clue where this lie was going. He forgot where it started, where it ended. And he's just like, uh, shut down. Thing going on with the store. They caught the kid. They held the kid. They called the police. The kid went to jail for theft. So we're talking a felony on his record. For a, for a dozen Game Boy Advance games? Because he had stolen like a dozen games worth $30 each. I guess it went above whatever the, the requirement is. That it's okay, what's a felony? I, 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 I know he's remembering a story that's very old, but I believe a felony is not even... It's something like 2000, isn't it? I, I I thought so. What's a felony? Okay, so felony amount. Uh, so for theft, <clears throat> it has to be $1,000. It depends on the state. 
in the state. So felony amount in Connecticut. Let's see. Just for fun. Um, <laughs> criminal charge felonies. Uh, theft. Let's see. Uh, this occurs. Okay, here we go. The most is this Connecticut law. The most serious degree of larceny is first degree felony. Oh, I don't want to see. It's not first degree felony. Where's like the final form is sixth degree. The final form of larceny is sixth degree larceny. This occurs when someone steals something worth two hundred fifty dollars or less. Uh. Anyways, it, it it's it's not a felony. I mean, that much is fucking clear. I'm not looking for larceny. I want to have much is how much is fucking felony. Class C felony. Punishes for larceny crime. Here we go. Here we go. Now we're on to it. What is the larceny crime? Okay. So, if you steal up to... Yeah, so felony starts, guys, in Connecticut at $5,000. $5,000 is felony. That's a class D felony. So, <clears throat> class D felony is fi up to $5,000. That's the fine. Excuse me. That's the fine. Oh, I'm fucking up here. Uh, anyways, it's not a fucking felony. It's considered like a felony on his record. This kid ruined his life uh -huh. to ruined steal his Game life. Boy Advance games. Now, I just got to say this. What do you got to say? I have uh -oh. to say this. I do not condone theft. I'm making a stand here. I do not condone misbehavior. I do not condone crime in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> okay. But is he going to go for but here? But if you're going to commit a crime <laughs> and you're going to potentially lose your, 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 your criminal record, is going to be horrible. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to get a job now because you have a horrible criminal record. Make sure that the risk and reward are in level. Are okay, so he's telling you now that if you want to do that, if you want to break the law, make it worth it. This is what Philip Burnell is telling his audience right here. If you want to break the law, make sure it's worth it. All right. If I were going to steal from an electronics store, I would steal a high dollar item. I would find a way to steal. It's almost as if this guy wasn't thinking about the potential negative, re negative, um, the negative effects that might happen when you steal. It's almost as if he wasn't thinking rationally and was just stealing. Hmm. Okay. Something that's worth $1,000 or more. So if I get caught and I ruin my life, hey, at least I, I had $5,000 of product on me. No. <laughs> so it's better if you get arrested with $1,000 of product on you. Okay. 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 Uh, hang on a second. Hold on a second. Real quick. Our battery door is out and Chew is outside. I got to let her in. So hang on a second. I'll play a song for you, though. Got to help Chew. Got to save Chew. You got to save Chew. Let's do direct capture. Oh, Misery Merchant, you're helping out today. Let's get a Misery Merchant song in the house. Let's do... Let's do one of my faves right here. All right, be right back. Enjoy. I have a legacy. I put in the work <laughs> after all this time. I know for a jerk. And if you have a membership, I'll give you a perk. I was a pioneer of making commentary. I was right up to the top, despite my adversaries. I'm never gonna stop fight the contrary. When you're the best, you outlast the rest. I outlasted those motherfuckers. But now it's time to put on a vest, right? watch my streams to see if I fail and yeah, then try to strike my channel but to no avail no matter what they do I always will prevail 
This is how you don't play. How about DSP tries it? The fact I'm still around, I know the trolls despise it. You'll miss me when I'm gone. I know you can't deny it. When you're the best, you outlast the rest. I outlasted those motherfuckers. But now it's time to put on a vest, right? Three, two, Up to Misery Merchant for that, of course. So, crime ring here where my house is. The front door battery's out. So I had to open the door, run out there, and then um, Chu tried to go to the back fence gate. I'd run out there, find her. So, we're okay. I'm back. Whew. Power walking was tough. Let's get back to it with this amazing eye pick. I forget exactly where we were, but let's hear. <laughs> if I get caught in a dollar item, I would find a way to steal from an electronics store. I would steal a high dollar item. I would find a way to steal something that's worth a thousand dollars or more. So if I get caught and I ruin my life, hey, at least I I had five thousand dollars of product on me. Now I stole ten Game Boy Advance games, so I basically ruined my life for three hundred bucks. Like that blows my mind. You know what I mean? Like. How dumb was the kid that he thought... Now, here's the thing. Maybe the kid got away with this for, like, four months. Who knows, right? But they said that they had just moved him to that department, and that's when they noticed it. So, I doubt it, but that just... It, risk, reward... Uh-huh. Oh, here's the risk-reward talk. Got it, got it, got it. ...should be on the same level. Now, I'm risking my entire <laughs> livelihood. I'll never get hired again because I'm a felon, uh -huh. and I got 300 bucks with Game Boy Advance games. I almost even guarantee you, seriously, he didn't even sell them. He probably was for him. Steal. He's probably one of these kleptos who can't help himself from stealing when he sees the opportunity. And he's sitting at home playing fucking, you know, Mega Man, uh, what was it, Battle Network or whatever. Shout out to Battle Game Network. Boy Advance. And I don't know. That just, that, that kills me. Because if you're going to be a criminal, go all the way and do it and make it worthwhile. Don't just be the petty idiot. And he was. And that was just really dumb. So. <laughs> really all dumb. right, ladies and gentlemen. All We've right. gone long. Whew. We've gone over two hours tonight on Hate Live. I hope that you guys enjoyed the show. The return of Hate Live oh, I love after it. a two-month hiatus. I'm tired out now from talking for two hours. I'm not used to this. <laughs> I will... I thought you were a great public speaker. ...save many more stories about Best Buy for next time, including characters. I'll tell you about my manager, Sly. I'll tell you about other people who worked in the store that were just really quirky, creepy people. All right, so I got some bad news for you, but we're going to wait till this is finished. Uh, working Black Friday at Circuit City, that was a wild ride. Uh, all kinds of stuff. I actually went back there later on to look for a job again later on in my life. I'll tell you all about that stuff. The next time that we do Hate Live, that will be the Back in the Day segment. So it'll be part two right. of Circuit City Stories, all right? So sadly, part two of Circuit City Stories is no longer online. Um, I searched fucking everywhere, asked everyone, my usual contacts... Um, and this, the hate live that that circuit city second part is not online. 
Uh, this one itself is already down. Like the one we're watching here, this Hate Live, is not on YouTube from Phil's channel. This is from Vic Voss, as you can see. So it's lucky we have even this one. So if anyone has it, obviously it, you would change the world if you had that video to drop it, but that Hate Live is not there. It doesn't mean the show's over. We got still a lot more shit to cover, but uh, we don't have the exact stories of Sly and the, you know, <laughs> and the crazy characters on there. Uh, it is sadly gone. But somehow there's two minutes left in this video. Let's hear what else is going to say. All right. <sighs> so that is it, everyone. Ooh, I just talked. Hate Live tonight. I hope that you have enjoyed this podcast. I hope that you had a lot of fun, whether you're watching on live stream or you're watching on YouTube. If you have watched this show and you enjoyed it, please spread the word. I haven't done <laughs> one in two months, and the tendencies is that if something doesn't happen for two months, people tend to gravitate away. Let them Imagine know that, that I'm back, so maybe some people will come back and check out the show. I would hate that I'd come back after two months with a loaded, entertaining show, and people miss out on it, especially with the new audio setup and all the announcements and stuff that I had in this episode. Oh, God. They're definitely going to want to check it. Thanks very much, everyone, for being here. Have a good night. I will see you on the next Hate Live, whenever that may be. Keep in Hurry mind, up. you always find out when you watch things like my Week in Preview video. You stay tuned to my Twitter, at they call me DSP. And, of course, Holy I will shit. give a gratuitous plug. Shield. To my Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash DarksideFil. Made this possible. Made all the cool events Shell that I've done King. over the past two months possible. Going to make this new montage series of... Oh, uh, this is when the Patreon was still flying high, by the way. Heavy Rain possible. The page Persona 4 playthrough. Oh, Persona 4 playthrough. The more people who pledge, the better content I can put out. It's a you give, I give, you take, I take relationship. Uh, you know, it works back and uh, forth. And it's I a you take, I take relationship? <laughs> you don't say that. It's a you take, I take. What exactly are the patrons taking? I hope that you enjoyed the show. And Excuse I me, sir. Uh, patron, what do they take? <laughs> I hope that you enjoy all of my content. Thank you very much for your support. That's it, everyone. Have a good night. Peace out. I'm Darkside Phil signing off. I'll see you for new gameplay real soon. And I'll see you next time. Eat live. Have a good night. 40 seconds left. Peace out. Oh, God. I'll see you later. Yeah. I'm letting it play. You give, I gamble. Mr. Fuck it. At least that's some effort. I mean, it's better than most. Oh, this is still playing. I'll let it go. 20 seconds left. Castration hazard when inserting balls, not for children, period. Very funny. Very funny. Very cool, very chill. I'm letting this video go. <laughs> Guys, my sister's not being abused. <laughs> January Rose in the house. So I know I'll catch hate, but DSP is a bit attractive. But the snorts and post-nasal drip drops from a 7 out of 10 to a 3 out of 10. Hey, January Rose. No hate here. No, no, we, don't, we, we had no hate. We loved all kinds. We love all fetish. We're not, a, we don't fetish shame. <laughs> All right, next up, we're going to 2015. Same year. Same year, my friends. A little bit later in that same year of 2015. Let's roll. We will be doing it this coming week. Uh, we're going to cover all kinds of topics, things going on in gaming news, covering all the things that have been going on with me, my Patreon, all the events. What about the beans that have been Rose? happening? Does that add points or subtract points? We're also going to talk about my thoughts on MKX. Now, I oh. haven't beaten or, or I haven't gotten to the point where I want to review the game yet. I want to do a few more online sessions, but I may be giving you my initial thoughts after playing the game for a week. What do I think about it? Improvements, things that weren't improved, etc., etc. Thanks for the membership. <laughs> Big ups, Chillbot. You got the burger. Bro, okay. <laughs> so that's going to be a cool segment. I am going to be doing the second half of my Back in the Day segment about my days at Circuit City. Circuit Ooh. City Stories. Where yeah. I, I basically just scratched the icing on the cake last time. I'll elaborate a lot more on those stories this coming Thursday. So this Thursday, Hate Live returns. We had great viewership on the last Hate Live, guys. We had 13,000 views. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy that doesn't shit. show that people wanted to see Hate Live. They were craving it, and they, you know, where is it? Look at all this fucking doxing of all the patrons. Just straight up names. It's not like screen names. It's just names. I hadn't done it in a few Oh, did he say I scratched the icing of the cake? Hold on, let's go back. I missed it. Time. I'll elaborate a lot. City Stories, where I, I basically just scratched the icing on the cake last time. <laughs> I'll elaborate a lot more on those. I scratched the icing on the cake. I scratched it. <laughs> Stories this coming Thursday. So this th views. The Holy icing shit. has been scratched. It doesn't show that people wanted to see Hate Live. They were craving it, and they, you know, where is it? Because I hadn't done it in a few months. Thanks for the viewership. I hope to, you know, we'll bring in the same. People. Oh, Kevin Styles, shout out, Kevin Styles in the house. <laughs> Week, okay. 
And then for the weekend, again, it's going to be determined primarily on what happens during the week. Okay, uh, not as that again. So again, sadly, Sunday, you know, Saturday and Sunday only. Sadly, of course, that uh, he says the hate live's coming. That hate live is not online anymore, my friends. So fortunately, we can't watch it. Uh, we still are in 2015, though. Let's enjoy this week in review from April 24th, 2015. Okay. So that is it. Here's another week in review. For the week in review. Like I said, it was a busy week and a lot of things going on everywhere. So I apologize. This was a longer version. Uh, I hope that you guys will get caught up over the weekend. Especially, again, if you're a fan of MKX, there's lots more coming. I want to play with all the characters in the game. So I'm going to be doing that this next week. More uh -huh. multiplayer, more challenge towers. There's lots more coming. I hope that you'll check out the content and you get caught up this weekend, of course, for Persona 4, which we'll be continuing as well. Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. See you for new content soon. Peace out. I'm guessing he said Circuit City there somewhere. Maybe I fucked up the link. About Circuit City stories. So check that out. Yeah, right here. Game news. And we did finish my this back right in here. the day. That hate live right there is what we're after. That hate live episode 27. Uh, that's the one we want. Unfortunately, it is gone. And all the legends that usually help me find shit like that don't have it either. This is Lost Media right here. And this has the second part of the Circuit City stories. Unfortunately, that is dead for now. But we'd love to see it. Someone can pull it out of their internal, external hard drive somewhere. <laughs> All right, let's move forward positively. Still 2015 somehow. What's going on? It's the day after, after Christmas. Yes, it is. And that means that many of you are settling in for a nice weekend of relaxation and enjoyment mm -hmm. of your presence. For some of you, it probably means that you're, you're working extra hard because i realized the weekend after christmas is a pretty busy weekend um okay. for a lot of people okay not for me though. in particular those in the retail industry right, right. who uh, unfortunately have to now deal with a slew of uh angry shoppers <laughs> it's like an assholes that are working trying to uh return things that they got for christmas that they didn't want None of which actually have gift receipts. I agree, but I agree with that misery merchant, by the way. This is very much how Rambo talks when he starts his show. He, like, it seems like he's searching for the next word. Like, if you don't know Rambo, this is going to be stupid. But he says shit like, I uh, hope y'all had a great weekend. I hope y'all had a nice Friday night. Hope y'all had a great breakfast on Saturday. Hope y'all had some entertaining activities in the afternoon. Hope y'all had a good Saturday night sleeping. Hope you all had a good we uh, Sunday evening. That, that's exactly how Rambo talks. <laughs> and, and now Phil is doing it. Things that they got for Christmas that they didn't want. None of which actually have gift receipts. <laughs> and also a slew of people who all got gift cards they really didn't want. And now they got to find... Who doesn't want gift cards? Find something to spend the gift card on without breaking their bank. What? This is an insane statement. Okay, we're going to analyze it right here. I wasn't expecting to stop on this video so long, but hold on a second. You didn't want have gift receipts <laughs> and also a slew of people who all got gift cards they really didn't want. And now yeah. they got to find something to spend the gift card on without breaking their bank. Okay, so two insanely, insanely crazy statements there. Okay, so first one is you got gift cards you don't want, which... Okay, I guess that's a possible thing, but I mean, pretty much every human on Earth can find something to buy at every fucking possible store. So after that, though, once you have that, you have to find something that won't break the bank. When gift cards kind of mean you don't spend anything unless you buy something that costs more. But again, only people with zero brain cells would buy something that they don't want that costs more than the gift card. Let's move forward. I know, because I worked this firsthand. Uh-oh. So I know exactly how that is. Uh, I go. did it twice. Two completely different uh, stores, but both were electronic stores. But they are completely different, okay? <clears throat> <clears throat> but, um... Hold on a second. <laughs> Saw a little tweet there. Someone asking, what's my email? They want to send me an email. Great show. Um, but yeah, I were two different electronics stores. First Circuit City. Okay. And then Best Buy. Both hang on of a second, guys. I just got a tweet. Hang on. Okay, someone's got a tweet. Let me write this tweet real quick. Someone's got a tweet for me. Someone added me here. Oh, it's a funny meme. Hang on. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Let's continue the show. Sorry about that. Guys. This holiday season can get...
Pretty insane. <laughs> oh, God. I'm Absolutely sorry. Absolutely pretty insane. Oh, God. Uh, with the I apologize. shopping, with the consumerism. Consumerism, ism, ism. <laughs> so, <laughs> I am yeah. the best. Da Danny Darko in the house says, you save gift cards for when you don't have real money on a rainy day. Yep, that's it. That's what you use them for, rainy days. When Many of you are going to be uh, very busy in the next few days. Foil Dave's fish. Now that's a pull. That's a pull you're after right there. A foil Dave's fish. Single silver star. Uh, I want to thank you for taking some time out. Uh, Can to... you get to the point and stop reading Twitter? Uh, I want to thank you for taking some time out. Uh, to join me here for our first of four days of fan appreciation. This is an event that originally I had uh, scheduled for back in, I think uh, that's in uh, November. I actually had s lots of people contact me and basically that weekend with Black Friday and such. They won't oh be able to goodness. attend. And number two, a lot of people are going to get games for Christmas. You know, these mm -hmm. games that I'm playing over the next four days. Today I'm doing Call right. of Duty. Abort. Bl Nothing happened here. Go next. <laughs> Boy. 2000, we're, we're fast forwarding here to 2017 now is our next mention of Circuit City. I don't know what this, this fan art means, by the way. If anyone knows it, let me know. But I want to ask about the crocodile for DSP tries it. I mean, thanks for the membership. Big ups, January Rose in the house with the Jaha. Boy. <laughs> and good luck on your pool. For those of you who live in the United States of America, you're probably cringing with. Bradley Quinn's fear today. at the notion of Black Friday. Oh, the day again. This, this, we're back on track of, of everything. Black Friday is like the worst day of the year for because people spend money that they don't want. Day when for, on things they don't want or don't need, but they can't control themselves. Sound good? <laughs> oh, sorry about that. It's a day when two things, ha well, three things happen. Okay. Number three, three prong plan. Number one, consumers who are uneducated. Rush out to physical brick and mortar stores to try to get desperate deals. Non college educated consumers. On things that they don't need. And That's not me, Morton. Can't afford. All right. Number two, poor employees of these said stores. Uh huh. So I'm Ooh. opening my seltzer water here. Employees of said stores are forced to work exorbitantly long hours. He's still talking about his job that he had now 14 years ago. And endure dangerous driving conditions. Endure dangerous driving conditions. Because said customers are so stupid. And mm -hmm. number three, those of us who are intelligent stay home and buy things online. If we want to actually buy anything. <laughs> okay, that, that, that quote could be used today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all laugh at those idiots. <laughs> By the way, going to my uh, buy my cat's my my cat's pet supplies tomorrow, and also going shopping to eighteen thousand stores to find cat slippers. But yeah, those idiots. Because <laughs> the bottom line is, folks. Uh oh, there's number two. That's a nice one. Finally, number two. Thanks, cat. <clears throat> Most of those deals that you hear about, number one, aren't real deals. A lot of the Where stuff that ends up being on sale on Black Friday. In the United States, literally, there's two cases. Number one, it's crap that the store's trying to get rid of. Uh -huh. So that 40-inch TV for $100 is probably a piece of garbage TV with low response rate and probably low response busts rate. easily. And no busts easily. I bust easily, though, to be fair. I wanted it to begin with. They're just trying uh -huh. to clear their inventory. And number two... <laughs> oh, sorry about that. They uh, Actually, this used to happen all the time. They what mark happened? up the prices. So they'll say, oh, you know... A thousand. I love when he says that. Oh, like we talked about when Snood was on the fucking that being said. Oh, he has to add that. Oh, when he knows like he's acting like a stupid person, like he's going to imitate a stupid person. He always starts with the sound. Oh, oh, you ready. I'm, they mark up the prices. So they'll say, oh, you know, a thousand dollars off that TV. But it's <laughs> not really. It's really like a hundred dollars off because that thousand dollars is off the manufacturer's retail price now off of what the store was actually selling that item to be oh. i know this for a fact because i used to do it <laughs> when i used to work at best buy and you chose the prices sir you were the price decider uh person on the floor that they stuck wherever they needed a warm body you were putting the prices okay yeah yeah you were really in charge of those prices weren't you <laughs> ten dollars an hour 
I know this for a fact because I used to do it <laughs> when I used to work at Best Buy in Circuit uh, City. I used to uh -huh. see the price. Yeah, you really were in control, dude. This is, you know, ju marked just like that. Okay. And I was like, this is literally totally misleading to the customer, and they didn't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, what did you do to help the customers there? Did you do your deal diligence like you did in the fucking door seal? It really is stupid. Now, there are some real deals, but okay. the bottom line is most of those real oh, deals God, sorry. are one. incredibly hard to come by because they're gone in minutes. People rush into those stores and grab the things the that are the best deals, and they're gone. Um, For me, at least... It seems the best way to go about if you really are looking for something. For example, I was really in need of new headphones. I need uh -huh. them. So, so okay. Now we're gonna hear how Phil went the best to, to Black Friday deals. My headphones that I'm using right now. But, my he, but but he's not an idiot. Is he really gonna say he went out to Black Friday? Please tell me he doesn't say that. When he just said everyone that does that is an idiot. Astro A40s from 2013 are worn out. The mixer doesn't work properly anymore. The uh -huh. headphones constantly turn off during the course of me playing games. I have to go unplug and replug them back into my PS4. Uh, Take a breath. It's a mess. I need new headphones. Okay. And all my other headphones are broken, so I need something, right? Um, so what do you do? And so I waited and bided my time until I saw that best... I bided my time, so you have to bite your time. Mm -hmm. Listen carefully. And so... Uh -huh. I waited and bided my time until I saw that. <laughs> I, he really bit that time. I'm going to take a big bite. Take a bite at a time. <laughs> Best Buy was doing a Thanksgiving Day through Black Friday, you know, two-day massive sale, 25% off all Astro headphones. Okay, what'd you do? And the, you know, at night when the deals went live, I went and I, you know, the website was, you know, slow, wasn't running very fast, but it took me about 45 <laughs> minutes and... Got in there and placed my order, and now I got a new set of Astro. Okay, so he did do online. Okay, there we go. A forty TRs, you know, the new edition. Ooh, what are they? Let's see how much they cost back in the day. Placed my cost? order, and now I got a new set of Astro A forty TRs, you know, the new Astro edition. On the way to the house next week. TR. Didn't have to go to a store. Didn't have to fucking get up, you know, at three in the morning to line up outside. No fights, no physical risk. Because I'm not <laughs> no fights, no physical risk. Sound good. Uh, there are 150. Okay, so no, in 2020 they were 2020, of course. So we're still three years after that. But 2020, they're 300 hour headphones. Stupid. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Every year it gets worse and worse. These people just get dumber and dumber. They actually think that there's some kind of a massive deal on Black Friday, and they actually. I mean, the, the bottom line is this. Oh God, come on. If the only day of the year that you can afford to buy something that otherwise would be incredibly pricey uh -huh. is Black Friday, and you're willing to risk life and limb to get this, Dude, all right? He he saw one news story when, like, people got really got trampled. Like, that definitely did happen, but, like, he takes... You know, if you see, like, some shit on Twitter, you kind of... You can let your mind go and think that's everywhere when it's just really not, you know? It's really not, not like that. You know, but like he's now he thinks like everyone going out there is like you got to have your body armor to go out there because everyone's like that. You know, like this is already 2017, too. Like, it's not like that anymore. You know, at least in my experience, I don't know everywhere. I'm sure there's still some fucking assholes. But, dude, it's not he, he acts like you have to be a a, a, a fucking military vet, you know, with full body. You got to be like those guys in Bioshock with the full like diver gear on to go anywhere you know what are those guys called <laughs> whatever i forget what they're called but you know like the divers gear you know fully suited up and now you're ready to go you know big daddies yeah you got to be a big daddy to go out there because you might get killed is black friday and you're willing to risk life and limb to get this life all right and limb uh you probably shouldn't get it you should probably just save your money for something that's more important like mm -hmm. food or health care or I <laughs> food or health care yeah, those people. <laughs> oh, whatever. Don't know. You know, things uh -huh. that, that you need. Education for your children. Instead of going out to buy the fuck oh, God. Okay. TV or okay, whatever, whatever it is whatever. that you needed to desperately whatever. run out and save some money on whatever. to afford it. Club old school. <clears throat> whatever. Yeah, like Hogan's, so when, and, Hogan's and DoorDash, right? Anyway. Black Friday. Greed is strong, Ensilor says in the stream chat. You are... Greed is strong. Correct. Okay. Greed is massively strong. Hey, there it is. I didn't know that. Shout outs. That's a classic clip right there.
Greed is massively strong. We're going to play it one more time. Shout outs to, that's Nord Hogan, I believe. Talor says in the stream chat, you are correct. Greed is massively strong. Yeah. You know. Got it. You're em. absolutely right. It's a I huge love when, I love when we find those. I love those. They're for people. And, you know, it is what it is. You know, you know we're going to hear the horror stories today. People trampled on Black Friday and all kinds of stupid shit. Uh-huh. That's why sure. I don't shop on Black Friday. I stay home. If I'm going to order anything, I order it online. Like I mm -hmm. said. DoorDash. Don't leave your house at all, actually. I just don't leave my house at all. That's how I handle it. Boom, boom done. Uh -huh. Um, You know. And, yep. now, you know, today I'll be doing a full day of gameplay streaming for you guys. And I hope that you will enjoy it. I hope that you'll, you know, stick around and have fun. All right? Have fun. Oh. Sorry. Should be pretty mini, good, right? Mini one. All right. Look at this. I'll be drinking. So what are we doing today? Let's talk. For, right, we're not for talking about first. today. Get the fuck out of here. Next, 2018, February 24. Olivia Source Rex did another cheer and said, what was your favorite job before this current one? Was it your job at everything yogurt and salad? Um, I mean, quite honestly. All right. Okay. <clears throat> quite honestly. <clears throat> um, Really, I think the only job that I ever had that I really enjoyed the job was what? I worked at Circus City. Uh -oh. And at that time, I was really into techies kind of stuff. I was into building my own PCs. I was getting into to photography. Like I was getting into photography stuff. I was into building my own PCs. I was getting into to photography. Mm -hmm. Like that's one of the reasons. You knew about the internal and external memory? Reasons why I, I ended up getting really good digital cameras to, to film stuff on YouTube. I knew uh -huh. about them. Okay. Uh, but my time at Circus City, it was more laid back. It wasn't super serious. Uh, the money I was making was just to pay for college loans and stuff. It wasn't... Pay for college loans and stuff. Like, oh my... What about the gas bills? God, you know, I'm going to... I have to make a ton of money here. Um. <laughs> oh my God, I got to make a ton of money here. <laughs> Who talks like this? It wasn't like, oh my God, you know, I'm going to, I have to make a ton of money here. Um, it wasn't it was like, fun. oh my God, I, I, I got to make a lot of money went. here. That's what he said. Like, say it yourself and you sound insane. Yeah, it was just one of my, you know, early jobs. It wasn't like, wow, oh my God, I got to make a lot of money here. Like, say that out loud. <laughs> I worked with, uh -huh. um, and you know, it was a more laid back time of my oh. life. I actually really enjoyed when I worked at Circus City back in the day. So there we go. This is a bit of a change from his future comments where he says the yogurt job was his best. Now he says Circuit City job was his best at this point in 2018. Um, plus, I get to mess you know, the stuff I sold primarily was stuff I really liked. Computers, video games, cameras. You know, this was shit that I liked. It was like you're selling stuff that you know about and you enjoy so people can see your passion for it when you're trying to explain to them the technology. You know, mm -hmm. that was a good time. Yep, yep. Um, Very good time. A lot of shit was getting stolen all over the place. Probably that's, well, you know, my first job was, I was at a health food store where uh -huh. we had frozen yogurt and smoothies and we made fresh salads and stuff like that, panini sandwiches. <laughs> Did I love the job? No, but as my first job, it was really cool because after a couple of years. I already heard about this, I believe, but I'm going to hear a little bit more. Years, I got a lot of responsibility at the job and it was the first time in my life where I saw that <laughs> someone basically other than my parents or school teachers or whatever trusted me with responsibility. Dude. Dude, who talks like this? The first time in my life I had responsibility outside of my teachers and parents? My parents or school responsibility at the job, and it was the first time in my life where I saw that someone basically other than my parents or school teachers or whatever trusted me. Look at this search for, you know, uh, meaning or the search for meaning, you know, being meaningful. You know, this is the first time he was meaningful outside of his parents and teachers. With responsibility. And because of, I think that job taught me a lot about being responsible at a job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I didn't I love that. the job, but the job was at least something that I felt proud of. You could come to the store and get a good meal, and I was responsible for the store. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, you get a little bit of pride in what you do. Um, even as stupid as it is, making salads and smoothies for people, right? At least I knew when you came to my store, you were going to get a good meal. Uh -huh. So, there you go. I thought, what about the blue cheese dressing that was all fatty and stuff? Whatever. But anyways, all right, I should have played it already, so we're going to play it now. I'm a little bit late to the party, but where is that clip? Oh, it's after Ms. Ungroup. On Misery Merchant song. All right, here. Okay, so he does mention 
that game that much. I- this is from 2017. He talks about a little bit about Circuit City. We're going back one year here. I apologize. Only played it at tournaments. Yeah, I was learning the game on the fly. I was adapting. Up. That game that much. I only played it at tournaments. Yeah, I was learning the game on the fly. I was adapting. This is a private Q&A video, by the way. As you can see, this is from Mr. Stuff, Legend, holding it. He's talking about the Evo fourth place story, but he does mention um, Circuit City here. And I was actually fighting players who had played this game for like decades, and I was winning. I was beating them. Uh-huh. And it was pretty crazy how good I was doing in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. A lot of people That's were actually calling me like the prodigy. I was this East Coast prodigy <clears throat> in that game that I was learning. And it was hilarious because, you know, at that point, I was in my, what, well, uh, see if this my is early to mid-20s. Oh, sorry, and people had said, well, you need to be like 30 years see, old to be good at Super Turbo. That was like the running joke. When I was 18, well, you got to be like drinking age to be good at Super Turbo. Then when I was drinking age, well, you got to be like your late 20s. When I was late 20s, oh, you got to be like in your 30s. That's always the joke. You're never old enough to be good at Super Turbo. But I was like the younger guy who was really good at the game. The problem was, right, sorry, we're gonna go I moved out bit. of my parents' place and was living in an apartment with two this one young girl. Who he- we, heard th- we heard this story during the last week, but he does mention a, a Circuit City a little bit here. So listen, listen one minute here liked so he was giving her all the best leads in the office uh-huh. and i had issue with it and i went to the district manager the district manager manager i didn't know at the time was his mentor and basically reamed me saying how dare i suspect my manager for doing anything underhanded so after about two more months of that i basically told them to go fuck themselves and i was I basically told them to go fuck myself in other words i got fired keep going going to quit the job the problem uh-huh. was uh-huh. i had moved out of my parents place and was living in an apartment with two other people who also worked at wells fargo financial and i wasn't going to have any significant income Income. Now, I was at a point in my life where go. I didn't know what I wanted to do because I was so disillusioned with <laughs> what had happened at this job, right? That I didn't know if I wanted to go into another financial field, if I wanted to do something completely different. Uh-huh. So I started going on all these job interviews and I had job interviews. Remember how good he did the Circuit City interview? Does it sound like someone that does that good of an interview would need to go to all sorts of job interviews when he's so good at them, right? But he had to go to so many of them. So many of them, he says. This is my old job that I used to work at, Circuit City, and I had a job interview with Best Buy, who was starting. So a- this is, remember, he said after. So he, he went to interview for another job. He went to interview at Circuit City after working there once already is what he just said there. Let me make sure of that real quick. No, if I wanted to go into another financial field, if I wanted to do something completely different. Uh-huh. So I started going on all these job interviews and I had job interviews with my old job that I used to work at, Circuit City. Yeah, and so, I had so a job he- interview with Best Buy. So he worked at, he tried to get a job again at Circuit City, okay? And then he eventually, let's see what he ended up with. He was starting up this new business team, and I had a job interview with, like, Oh, yeah, two, so this, this is when he got the Best Buy job. So, but, hold Or three on. other kind of mortgage-style companies, uh-huh. and basically did all this stuff. It was all up in the air. There was no certainty whatsoever what was going to happen to me. Okay, we're not hearing again. And Evo was coming up. This was the summer when I actually got... Oh, this is when he got all the uh, credit card loans. He, he maxed out all his credit cards to get to Evo. That's what he's talking about here. Uh, so I guess the next... Oh, this is when he gets the support, uh, mortgage style. Okay, he got the mortgage style next. Yeah, so he did interview again for Circuit City, though, uh, before that. Okay, there we go. Uh, 2018... Oh, shit, I forgot to shout out the iceberg. Uh, so real quick, we're on the iceberg again, obviously. Um, I put all the jobs together. And there's a playlist of all the job employment uh, episodes. So just that's like all those are you can do those in chat commands and you can see all the videos from all those. But jobs is gonna go obviously at the top row because hey, it's gotta be there, right? It's not that big it's not that deep, but it's still interesting. So the whole playthrough is at, you know, the command job. So there we go. Uh, I'm already deciding it's on the top layer, along with the hot Latina Shakira, of course, because we do hate Shakira around here, right? Am I right? <laughs> Anyways, next. A oh, mortgage style company is what he said. My bad. <laughs> Crazy stuff. <gasps> Judicious Echo is cheered. He says Black Friday madness is greatly over exaggerated. There's 330 million people in the United States, only a handful of incivil instances. Otherwise, it's just crowded. There we go. You heard him. So let's hear how Phil re- responds to this insubordination. Yeah. I mean, it, admittedly, 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 I'm what? sure the media do over exaggerate. But... Mm, so the media over exaggerates. Then do you also over-exaggerate, sir? I'm just going to give you guys an example. The one time ever, ever, okay, um, okay. the one time ever. Can you please stop checking Twitter and talk about your story? Okay, um, okay. Uh, the one time ever that I went on a Black Friday just to see, I wasn't in any... I wasn't in any expectation of getting any deals whatsoever. I just wanted to go out on Black Friday and see what would happen. 
So he, this, this person is choosing in the most dangerous day, the most dangerous of days, he says, where you have to risk life and limb, decides to go there for no reason. Uh-huh, uh-huh, got it? You keep up? Keep up. So this is when Circuit City still existed. Okay, Shout that's how Circuit long City. ago this was. So this is probably the first half of the 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, I went out. You also worked there in the first half of the 2000s. Out in the morning, there was a 24-hour, like, McDonald's or whatever, and I got, like, a sandwich and a coffee. And then I drove over to Circuit City. And I'm kidding <laughs> you not, the store wasn't even open yet. The parking lot was fucking full. People were lining up in front of the door, uh-huh. and there were people, as I was trying to just drive into the parking lot, running in front of my car as I was driving at full speed. I was driving normal speed, like 20 miles per hour. You know, you- <laughs> okay, so we got full speed, normal speed, 20 miles an hour. In, in this, well, you get whiplash keeping track of all this. Hold on. Of my car as I was driving at full speed. I was driving normal speed, like 20 miles per hour. You know, you go to. Full speed, normal speed, 20 miles an hour. Your parking lot's slow. People were running in front of my car. <laughs> like, to say, oh, I gotta get in line. Oh, 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 there's deals. Uh, uh, what the fuck is going on? Uh-huh. And so I witnessed as the store opened, I'm not even kidding you, as the store gates opened, people were like mobbing the door. I, I was here first. No, I was here first. Pushing through to try to get those. Reiner, F- Philip is in his car during all of this. Philip is in his car doorbuster deals and i couldn't it was just chaotic uh-huh uh, what the fuck is wrong with these people uh, then it was hilarious because uh-huh. over the course of the day i went to the mall and again this was like early 2000s this is over a decade ago uh-huh. and i noticed that the deals that they normally would have at the mall were terrible like there was a fye for your entertainment it's an, a, an entertainment store that usually sells like cds and movies back then oh yeah you love those fucking stores and when they actually bought physical copies of cds and movies right uh, uh, you act like that's silly, but you did that more than anyone else. You would pop every week. You're popping DVDs. Self admitted, you did that. And I would look at the deals. Like these aren't even like good deals. Like two for for ten dollar DVDs. What? And you look at the DVDs like shitty ass movies. <laughs> shitty ass movies. They like so shitty ass movies, dude. They're like Ace Ventura 2. It's like not even that good. Like it wasn't even as good as the first Ace Ventura. And it was like five for ten. What the fuck? At least make it good movies, dude. It was like Jaws 2. What? I want Jaws 1. For for $10 DVDs. What? And you're looking at the DVDs like shitty-ass movies. Like, what the fuck? I want $5 for this piece of shit? <laughs> and you go through the mall. Like, all the deals were, were like doorbuster deals. They were gone in five minutes. Mm-hmm. You're like, nothing here. And like, why are people so crazy for these deals? There's like, nothing. And the mall was insanely crowded. Hey, he, yeah, that's a good point, Pika Flair. He still bought those DVDs for sure. He definitely still bought them. All right, well, fuck it. I guess I got to pay him. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Mainly crowded. Um, and I just don't understand it. I'm like, what are people here for? Like, What are you here for? Stop trying to put yourself above people when you do it. And you did it just for, for fun, apparently. What were they? Did they come out today to buy? Like I said, now, of course, things have changed. Like I said, since... The digital age, everything that you can get on Black Friday, you can get online. Why the hell would you be at a physical brick and mortar store? I have no idea. Like, it's just like, I'm dumb and I don't follow trends and I didn't know. Oh, I don't. Uh, God, that's a clip right there. I'm dumb and I don't follow trends. No idea. Listen, like, it's just like, I'm dumb and I don't follow trends and I didn't know that <laughs> things are online now. So I that's went and perfect. lined up in front of a store at 4 a.m. <laughs> the, the other thing is, many stores open up now. Thanks. Yeah, good point, Fort Worth. He is talking about early 2000s, though. Giving night. So the stores will close, like, 4 p.m. on Thanksgiving, so people uh-huh. can go home and have Thanksgiving dinner with their families. Then they fucking open again at 8 p.m., and people are lined up for deals. It's like, what the fuck? <clears throat> In reality, <clears throat> the reason this is happening is because retail stores are starting to fail. Like, there are some retail stores that are prospering. The stores that are... For- okay, retail stores are starting to fail, but there's some retail stores that are prospering. Keep up. It's tough to keep up, but I'm asking you to keep up, guys. Keep up to this. Come on. Keep up with the storyline. So, stores are failing and also prospering. Let's see where we're going here. Retail stores are starting to fail. Fail. Like, there are some retail stores that are prospering. prospering. The stores that are variety-style stores, like Target. Variety-style. Yeah. Uh, Walmart. Um, and other stores, like local. Like, gro- a grocery store that also is a variety <laughs> store that sells products. And stuff like out here we have one that's called fred meyer so they're only 
Shout out, 125, 125 likes. likes on this stream. They're not just a grocery store. They have half of its groceries, but the other half is like all kinds of variety. Okay. So variety style. Okay. Just, just say, we, we got it when you said variety style. Just keep it. We got it. We can keep up. So just in case you want to know, variety style, this is going to be on the test, is Walmart, Target, and grocery stores. Keep up, everybody. This is a tough class. You guys got to keep up in the notes. Walmart, Target, and grocery stores. Goods and stuff. They're not just a grocery store. They no, have half of its groceries, grocery but the other half is like all oh. kinds of variety of oh. home goods and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're actually thriving. But okay, outside thriving. of those stores, most other brick and mortar stores are failing miserably. Okay. And they don't. Oh, God. Look at these shirts. Look at that Santa shirt. Is that real? Is that a real shirt that existed on the top left? <laughs> the King of Hate. Glitch. A glitchmus. I don't think these existed as real shirts, did they? Oh, yes, they did. I mean, it fucking says it right there. Christmas Designs out now. Those, that's rare fucking uh, merch right there. That's insanely rare. Christmas only. Don't know what to do to save their business model. Like, look, that's a well-designed shirt. Like, Glitchmus is who, who the fuck, I mean, that's just a random shirt you see at fucking variety style stores like Target and Walmart and gro grocery stores. But the left one is kind of well-designed. Everything else is shit. But. Well, because everything's gone online. And so, oh, we got to be open on Thanksgiving fucking night and claim we have crazy deals to try to make money. It's just insanity. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> pretty crazy, dude. So basically, you're right. I overhyped it just like the media does. But yeah, thank you. Thanks for the tip. All right. Anything else you want to say? So thank you guys very much. I guess that's it for the pre-stream. Okay. Okay, can we move on? Jo Young Remy says, I worked at Target on a Thanksgiving night. It was fun seeing people go sh ape shit over junk. Yeah, that's the thing. They think that, like, oh, for God. some reason, because you're there on Thanksgiving or Black Friday, you think that anything that normally you would have just glanced over and said, fuck that, is now, like, gold. This must be desirable. I must get it. it I no, that's what you do. Stop saying what you do is what everyone does. <laughs> I compare this to, Here we go. for example, the people who line up day one. Um, if he says video games. Because he literally did that. For an iPhone. Okay, day iPhone. one, they have to line up for that new console. Day one, you know, they're the hype, the hype buyers, the hype devourers. I got <laughs> the hype devourers. I gotta be part of that experience of being the first person to have this product. I gotta be the person out there on Black Some Friday to like say to I got that. that crazy deal and I could tout Some it. Some people want to get something as fast as they can and they have fun with it. Something that you don't have fun with anything. All of my friends, I was out there among the chaotic masses and look at all the things I out there with the chaotic masses with the hype devourers. <laughs> Come out to the chaotic masses with all the the hype devours. I commercially bought for myself. Oh, wait, hold on. Among the chaotic masses, and look at all the things I commercially bought for myself. Dude, dude, commercially bought for myself. This is unhinged. Commercially bought for myself. Let's make sure we get it. We we need to get the full context here. I'm trying to think. Could you residentially buy something? Could you industrially buy something? I'm trying to guess what el other options we have. I I'm using SimCity terms. So we have commercial zones, residential zones, and industrial zones. So could we industrially buy something? Could we uh, residentially buy something? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. But but let's let's see. Let's go. Yeah, we. I think an alien. We could have an alien speak counter for sure. I don't want to go too nuts with the counters, but this one is. This would be one number one. Commercially bought myself. No card. Cyclops got the blank card. No card at all. Now that's a hype fucking pull right there, Cyclops. That's a misprint. Didn't even put the art on it. Be the person out there on Black Friday to say I got that crazy deal and I could tout it to all of my friends that I was out there among the chaotic masses and look at all the things I commercially bought for myself <laughs> on this day. It's just stupidity. Uh huh. There's no, it's just silly. It really is. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, guys. All right, guys. Well, let's end the pre-stream. Let's go back in the Spyro. If you guys want to commercially contribute, please do so. The links are down below. I want to say thanks. Spyro's <laughs> been great so far. And, uh, <laughs> ah, Freddie Balsley just cheered. He says, Cyber Monday is better because there's no purge like on Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, cyber, yeah. not even because Cyber Monday mm. was basically the online equivalent of Black Friday.
One thing I don't get about this picture, like this, this like pencil drawing, which is fine. You know, it's a good artist. Like, what's with the lead? Why is it on leaves? <laughs> is it like, does it make you think? <laughs> you know, what's the point of the leaves? It's the funniest part of it. You don't even need Cyber Monday anymore. Like I said, anything going on sale for Black Friday, you can find an equivalent deal on Amazon at this point. Uh huh. Mm -mm. I remember two, oh, two in a row. I need. Sorry, everybody. We're gonna listen to this in slow. I really do apologize for this. This is for science. An equivalent deal on Amazon at this point. Mm -mm. I remember tw two years in a row. I needed something. <laughs> like I need a new hard drive. Point. Mm -mm. I remember tw <laughs> two years in a row. I needed something. I think that was a burp. I mean, like I need a new hard drive. Point. Mm -mm. I remember tw <laughs> two years in. A I mean, you can hear what you want. It could be a fart, but I think it's a burp. You can find an equivalent deal on Amazon at this point. Mm -mm. I remember tw <laughs> two years in a row. I needed something. Like I need a new hard drive or whatever. Right. <laughs> And <clears throat> insane deals on Black Friday, but then I went on Amazon. I got it for the same price uh, as if I had gone there in person. Okay. Mm. And then last year, I needed new headphones badly because <laughs> my headphones were all breaking. Give me a side scrollers. Yeah. What is that? I'm not, I, don't, I don't know what that is, hey, actually. Mr. Gore Hole. Mr. Gore Howell. You are a legend for sure. But Thor for pool. the Astro A40s by Hopefully ordering online at Black, what you need. Uh, uh, Best Buy.com. Okay, in on. store for the Astro A40s by ordering online at Black uh, uh, Best Buy dot com. See, <clears throat> so there you go. Anything else? All right, guys. All right, guys. Any more contributions, commercial time. style? What do you guys think? We've been talking for thirty-eight minutes. You can start now, sir. I think it's time for us to begin. Mm -hmm. Spyro. Sound good? <clears throat> All right. Thanks, everyone. For your How contributions. And let us now begin with Spyro continuing on. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, whatever. Oh, okay, I got you, Gore Howell. When he asked if he was playing WB Champions. Mm, yes. <laughs> Do you play WB Champions? Yes. <laughs> the classic. Yeah. So there's, here's a funny thing, guys. Funny thing. Oh, funny thing. Get ready. So yesterday, Kat and I were, were leaving. Uh, uh -oh. you this, know, this, to, is, this is going to be funny, so get ready. This is definitely going to be funny. To go out for our day out. Mm -hmm. As we're going, we see this billboard. And it says McDonald's new dollar menu. Cat needs to hear this. It's one dollar, two dollar, or three dollars, which makes no sense because a dollar menu needs one dollar, not two dollar or three dollars. But apparently, they're trying to change what it means. Okay. And it says, "Our okay, hold on." So that got Phil excited when he saw those the menu. Of course, they see the dollar menu, and Phil gets excited. Excited, you know. Not two dollar or three dollars, but apparently, they're trying to change what it means. And it says, "Our new deal." You can pick two for three dollars, either the McDouble or the McChicken sandwich. And we stared at this billboard and we're like, deal? The both the McDouble and the McChicken sandwich used to be a dollar each. Now you're telling me we can get two for three. So what you've actually done is you've increased the price of both sandwiches, but you're advertising it like it's a new deal. No, in Imagine marketing, right? Imagine marketing. What should they do? You know what, guys? We raised the prices. Sound good? Still buy it, though. Reality, you raised prices, uh -huh. and you're actually advertising raising prices. Okay, I have to do it. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Uh -huh. It didn't make any sense at all. We're, like, staring at it like, huh? But the, the sad, sadly, people sadly will works. watch this, right? And they'll be fooled. They'll actually think that this is a deal and Why be like, oh, I'm going save to them. Why don't you save them all and tell them how wrong it is? Donald's two for three. That sounds good. But no, dude, you're paying more now. <laughs> yeah. Bodily insane. McDonald's retconned the dollar menu. How dare they? Stop retconning. Yeah, and this reminds me. I, I was telling Kaz, like, this reminds me of when I used uh -oh. to work retail at places like Circuit City and Best Buy. She, passed, she, where... <laughs> she checked out after I started telling the story, but I'll tell it to you guys anyway. Hot Latina, black and white. We would put out new price tags for Black Friday, uh -huh. saying, oh, it's a huge deal. When in reality, the prices were raised. So, for example, it would be like a hard drive. Normal price would be seventy nine ninety nine, dollars uh -huh. But then on Black Friday, we would put out a tag that says, oh, normal price ninety nine ninety nine, dollars but now on sale for seventy nine ninety nine. dollars And people <laughs> would see the sale tag and say, oh, that's a good deal, and buy it, even though it's the same price as usual. Yeah, at that point, she was already checked out, but I kept telling the story anyway. Like... I don't know how people fall for this shit, but <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, I, I trust, trust me, it's not at all. Um, it's just, it's weird. Now, I guess what people are saying in the stream chat, I, saw, I see Golden Colt, he says, well, 
The McDouble now raised the price. It's now $1.80 or uh -oh, something like all, that. Why is all, why every car black and white now? I'm worried. It's supposed to be a 10% thing. We have like four in a row. Yeah. Still doesn't make Bug scopely mechanics. Makes sense because let's say the McDouble's $1.80, okay? And the oh, God, we're still talking about this? Or something like that. Still doesn't make sense because let's say the McDouble's $1.80, okay? Mm -hmm. And the McChicken's still a dollar. Two for three dollars. You you just paid twenty cents more. <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused. But then again, I don't eat a McDonald's, so you know. Schroeder's cat. Uh, this isn't a big thing for me. It's just kind of confusing. Uh -huh. Anyway, vote Democrat. Thank you for the cheer. You're the top cheer of the day. 122 bits. Oh, shout outs. Let's get you up on the leaderboard here. Hello. This is a podcast. And for Democrats, you're against it. The dollar menu has not been a thing for like five years, dude. Actually. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's not true. At least at my local. Uh, McDonald's. No. Uh, wrong. Donald's. They were still doing a $1 McDoubles and $1 McChickens. I know uh -huh. for a fact because two years ago, 2017, I was eating fast food quite a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got that right. Because. They were still doing a one dollar McDoubles and one dollar McChickens. I know for a fact because two years ago, twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen is the year that Leanna moved out, by the way. So he was definitely eating fast food then. I was eating fast food quite a lot, which was bad for me, and I shouldn't have done it, but I was. And I was going over there getting dollar menu, um, and it still existed. So unless you're telling me in the last, you know, year and a half, they <laughs> I'm so depressed. He got the fast food completely changed, which maybe they did. Um, the, you know, I was definitely still getting those for a dollar. Okay, um, whatever. Celestial Sensation. All right, let's hear this question. Give me a dollar uh -huh. saying, I sent you a previous tip mentioning fast food. You said it was a troll tip, and now you're talking about it. Huh? All right, whatever. Too dumb. Next, 2019. Bryce asked the following. What is your favorite part of being a streamer? I would say there's various things that are very good. All right, the first is... <laughs> there are various things that are very good. Yeah, you know, various things that are very good. Being the being the master of my own destiny. What I mean by master of the schedule, you mean by that is what every other you 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 have to abide by a schedule you create. Don't forget that. Other job I've had in my life, I was always at the mercy of a boss who, whether they liked me or not, whether they I, one day I'm in favor. I that, had to work for my money. It was super tough. The next day I'm not for some reason. Um, you know, or a corporation treating mm -hmm. me like an asset rather than a human being. Uh, you know what? I, yeah, they had. I had an employee number. It was really bad. They made me come in like at certain hours, and they're like, "All right, you got to stay from this time to this time." It was fucking nuts, dude. I mean, like, never before I did this for a living did I ever feel like I was valued. I hate to say that, but I'm true. <laughs> like on every job, whether it was a retail job, fast food, um, office job. You know, all the jobs I've had over the years, I never <laughs> felt like I was a valued employee. I felt more like I was just a cog in a bigger machine to make <laughs> just a cog with my vans money for some nameless big wigs. A Vons, excuse me, Vons. The top of a fucking food chain somewhere and to to pay off the bottom line of the investors oh, and the yeah, shareholders. That counts, right? I never actually felt Not like really, I was I someone care. who Go was in. actually being appreciated at a job that I had. Uh -huh. And this job I get, I get, you know, I feel that every day when you guys come out and hang out with me and we have fun interactions, when people tell me on a daily basis how meaningful what I do is and that I've changed their lives and very positive, positive stuff that I do. God, 2019, we're already talking about meaningful. I didn't know it was that old. I thought meaningful was a more recent thing. For everybody. Um, <clears throat> and in addition, the fact that you guys are so supportive, you know, so many hurdles and things that I've come up against and you guys come out to support me and help me to continue to be successful, even though I've really had my back to the wall recently with it's to continue to be successful. Now, guys, a lot of things. I'm still here. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's tough. Other jobs I've had, when you're down and out, you're down and out. In it's this tough. job, it's like you guys keep helping me bounce back. I love it. Um, I love it. You guys keep giving me the money. I love it, dude. It's awesome. I'm going to be honest. I love it. Also, the fact that I, I control what I do during the day. For example, another for example, I pull Hogan's and I drink gin. Now, in my other job, I couldn't do that. Another job, oh, go, sell, go sell computers and warranties. Go... Uh, you know, do customer service for helicopter parts. Go sell mortgages or whatever. Okay, fucking boring. Here, I get... <laughs> fucking boring, dude. 
I thought you said Circuit City wasn't boring. Oh, we're going to play this game today, and we're going to do a variety of games today. And we're going we're gonna to be juggling games, but it's really tough. I also have to juggle games. I'm going to try to appeal to a, a different audience, have people I, I know who I hang out with every day because I control what I play. You see what I mean? I, con <laughs> I control the video games I play. Control the things I do during the day. Uh -huh. I didn't have that ability back when I had my other jobs. Uh -huh. um, oh, yeah. So someone else had to tell you when to work, and you had to, do, you had to actually work. Okay. So that's what I would say, and of course, my constant interactivity with my with my audience. You know, there's a uh -huh. different, there's a big difference between oh, you are God. someone who work, is interacting with a customer versus uh -huh. a streamer who interacts with the viewing audience. Streamer oh, who interacts no. with the viewing audience, it's more casual relationship where we just have fun together. Not while those other things were business transaction relationships. I didn't have fun with a customer who came into Circuit City to buy <laughs> a PC setup. You see what I mean? I have fun with you guys every friggin' day. Yeah, you guys keep giving me money, so that's fucking awesome. Pretty awesome. Pretty okay. awesome. <laughs> Wasn't that far off. Pretty awesome, okay? Right? All right, moving on. Unless we get something after this. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, I received an anonymous dollar tip. Best? Someone says, I agree with you. You should keep the comments off. Your content is really enjoyable to listen to and watch without those idiots in the comment section. Also, would you consider a pattern tier for once a month or so reviews or watch along for wrestling? Uh-oh, don't speak English. Get the fuck out of here. You can't speak English? At my chat. I don't want any tips from people that don't speak English. Get the fuck out of here. Yep. That's Would you consider a pattern tier for... Can you look... Can you read between the lines a little bit more, sir? To, so you don't have to, uh, you know, totally degrade your person that gave money to you. Could we try that? Or we just want to make fun of them more? Or once a month or so reviews or okay, watch yep. along so make for fun wrestling. Of them. Okay. I think what he's saying is what I consider... I think what this fucking idiot is saying... ...a tier for, like, subscriptions or Patreon... ...that once a month I would do game reviews or do, like, a wrestling watch-along... ...where I would watch wrestling and commentate on it or do a show afterward. That's what I think they're saying. That's what okay? I think this idiot is saying, okay? It's kind of tough with these, you know, non-American-style people. Um, I speak English myself, which is very difficult, as you know. Um, quite frankly, I don't think Patreon tiers really matter anymore. I think that <laughs> since my focus became live streaming, uh -huh. I just want to get money from Patreon without doing anything. So it's way easier, right? So I don't want to do anything. But like the Patreon is there. So like, if you want to give me money, cool, but I don't do anything for it. Sound good? And yes, there are ongoing perks that you can get, and there are good perks in certain situations. And you know, <laughs> in I certain do situations, if that situation involves you giving me money to get nothing appreciate those who contribute, but I think most people have migrated from Patreon over to contributing on the streams. Oh, okay. So I think setting up Patreon tiers at this point is a moot point. If anything, I would do a sub goal or something here on a stream. Mm -hmm. Um, Month or month or so reviews, I don't even think that would work. Reason I say that... All right, I'm not I'm done with this. Next, 2019 again. The box charity said, Mother's Basement Incel Trolls are out in full force today attacking the land dwellers. <laughs> Cody Carl <laughs> said a lot of behind-the-scenes issues that come out about GameStop. Since you used to work at Circuit City and they closed down, was there any insider shady shit that went down behind the scenes there? If there was, I probably didn't know about it. I probably didn't know about it. So did you know about it or did you not know about it? I don't see how probably works. I was just a line level salesman, computer salesman slash camera guy oh. at uh, Circuit City. Hey, big baller alert. I was the camera guy slash computer salesman. I really wasn't ever in management or anything like that where I would have known about any of yeah, that. Yeah, I missed, I did one of the month. <laughs> shit, so uh -huh. no, I don't know any, anything about that. And I didn't hear anything about this GameStop situation either, so. I don't really know much. Oh, oh, that was the ninja. That's the, we'd still need a name for that. God damn it, brand dude. That's where we need you. We need the, the one-sided sniff. It's a rare occasion, but sometimes you do see it on the show. I didn't hear anything about this GameStop situation either. Ready? So. It's sneaky. Boom! There it was, right there. You gotta get ready for that. The stealth. I, okay, I can go stealth snort. The stealth, the stealth snort. It's only one side. I hear anything about this GameStop situation either, Here we go. So. Boom! Load it up. Maybe I, get the, I gotta get the gun loading sound effect there. Load it up, and boom! Hit him with it! I didn't hear anything about this GameStop Here situation go. either, so... Boom! Knocked him. Alright. Headshot. Snot shot. Oh, God. Black Ops. 2019 still, somehow. Cody Carl's shooting said that first camera used for YouTube. Did you get that at Circus City or somewhere else? 
Oh, more than likely Circuit City, because that was a digital camera that I had bought, no lie, when I probably worked at Circuit City with my store discount. So you're talking like, shit, I worked there shit. through the end of college, and I graduated from the university in 2004. So you're talking, I probably bought it between 2000, like 2003, 2004. <laughs> Watch him try to jump on this fucking rock. Sometimes gameplay sneaks, sneaks in, but look at this. Look at this rock jumping. Oh, yeah, yeah, so he's working through Circuit City all through college now. So you're talking, I probably Jump. bought it between 2000, like 2003, Jump. 2004, and I started oh, recording it. with it in 2000. <laughs> Jump, jump, fuck it. Between 2000, like 2003, 2004. Oh, fuck this, I'm out of here. And I started fuck recording it. with it in 2008. It had been sitting around my house for four years pretty much unused. And I decided to start using that camera to make videos with. So, Fuck it. pretty crazy. I'm Ice Cold sure Pimp sent me a dollar. Ice Cold Pimp, shout out. Street Fighter Five leaks E Honda, Lucia, and Poseidon. Capcom pushed to make sure Poison had trance elements of being a man. Uh, her face is more manly, and there's a bulge downstairs. Thoughts? I, I don't care. I don't care, dude. I don't see differences in sex, okay? I don't even care. I don't care about Street Fighter Five, and I certainly don't care about trans elements. To a character. It's the la I'm the last person on the planet who would give a shit. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> Especially Street Fighter V. I really don't care about that fucking Ooh. shitty game. Ooh. Shit about that game, dude. I don't give a fuck. You, you could have literally said, uh, Capcom accidentally streamed a video of a dirty baby's diaper full of liquid shit. And I... Why did you have to go there with it, though? Right? Did you have to go there? Probably would have more to say, uh, more, one thing more pertinent to say about that than I have about Street Fighter V. Because uh -huh. I actually hold that in higher regard than Street Fighter V. Oh, oh. Almost got a sneak one there. Akim Toto, right now the nominations are happening for the Rage. Alright, fuck you. Next, 2019 again. We're still in Black Ops. Okay, so, uh, I guess we'll see. But anyway, um, I, when I, in college, I worked full time uh, at Circuit. Well, one time, at one point, I was working at Circuit City. Uh huh. And then, let me think about this. What else? I started working. Man, where, did I, where was I starting work? Remember, he just said he worked at Circuit City all throughout college. Let's see how this, what he says this time. When I had, when I had, when I got out of high school for a year, well, for one semester. Uh -huh. So, like, that's right. I quit my job at the health food store. Okay. Because I, one semester I lived. He later would, oh, yeah. So, he, yeah, he's, he's telling the truth here. Well, from his other, I don't know if it's truth, but what he said before. He quit the health food store to work, to go to college one semester. Let's see what happens here. On campus. Uh -huh. That semester. I didn't work because I was on campus. I couldn't work. You can work while still on campus, sir, but go ahead. Then after that semester, mm -hmm. I was up to my eyeballs in loan debt and shit, and I realized I had to start working to pay it off, so I started working full-time while I was still going to school. Oh, my God. So basically, I would go to school all day long, and then at night, I would fucking uh, go what work. Soldier. It was pretty hectic. It was a pretty crazy life. Uh, pretty crazy life that thousands of people are living right now. And I actually, I did that too. So yeah, give me praise. I did that too. Um, and so I went back to my job at the mall for about a year and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. Then I went and worked at Circuit City for about a year and a half, if I remember. I'm trying to remember how long exactly. It was over a year. I know that. I worked at Circuit City for over a year because I was there for two Black Fridays. That's right. <laughs> um, he counts his time there in Black Fridays. <laughs> Hey, so you write in your resume, how long did you work in Circuit City with three Black Friday, fr three Black Fridays? <laughs> um, and that was during my time when I was in, in college. So that's oh. where I worked when I was in college. Okay. Anything else there? No, I never worked at Vinny's Pizza. How many Black Fridays did you work at Vinny's Pizza? In fact, Vinny's Pizza, it's funny that they really pretty much only employ family members and friends of their family. It's a very much a family-owned business. You're not in the family? Get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> You gotta be 100% Italian to work at, at Vinny's. Yeah, Circuit City went out of business. Best Buy beat them in the war. It was always Circuit City versus Best Buy around me. And I guess Best Buy won that war. Which is funny because really Walmart won. Oh, let's see what's funny. It's funny. Buy around me. And I guess My. Best Buy won that war. Which is funny because really Walmart won the one. Let me put it this way. Circus, er, Best Buy won the Here battle. Walmart won the war. <laughs> Walmart is, is number one still. Now. 
Do I still hate death metal and think it's noise, not music? I never said that. What I said is... I no, uh, never said that. I love death metal. I love all death metal. Metallica, Nickelback. I love death metal. <laughs> Do I still hate death metal and think it's noise, not music? I never said that. What I said is I actually like the music of death metal. The mu I love the music of death metal. <laughs> Let's hear this. I love the music of death metal. I love all death metal. Metallica, Megadeth. It's awesome, dude. Instrumentals, but I hate the fucking screaming. Like, I like lyrics, and I like singing, and I like me something meaningful. Not robo- he, he just- I think- I thought he said, I like meat. Fucking screaming. Like, I like lyrics, and I like singing, and I like me something meaningful. Not robo- well, those lyrics are very meaningful, dude. They can be very meaningful. Just they're not delivering it in the way you like, but... I don't know how people like that. I hate it. Uh-huh. So you don't like it then, sir. <laughs> so it sounds like you don't like it, actually. Dio's cool, Joe Blob. Down with Dio. Mm, Popsicolo says he was in bed today for a... a very cool stream study. I got here. the new meatless sausage sandwich from Duncan. They're testing there. It was pretty good. You should try it when it's everywhere. Well, I can't, Popsicolo, because there is no Dunkin' Donuts... In Washington uh, State. No, there's no Dunkin' Donuts in Washington State, dude. I'll repeat that again. There's no Dunkin' Donuts out here. Thanks have, for repeating it. No Dunkin' Donuts in Washington State. I'll repeat that again. There's no Dunkin' Donuts out here. What we have are Starbucks or a bunch of independent coffee shops. Dunkin' Donuts is not Could you please repeat that? I couldn't believe it. Can you repeat? Hold on. Hold on a second. My mind is fucking blown. Could you repeat that? Let me repeat that again. We need that. We need that Derek quote. Let me repeat that again. <laughs> there's so many clips I want. This is endless. Let me repeat that again. What we have are Starbucks or a bunch of independent coffee shops. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts does not exist out here. So I would not Holy shit, dude. No, no fucking Dunkin' Donuts. How do you survive? Let me repeat that again. No Dunkin' Donuts. Luis's Mansion, 2019 still somehow. Let me right, repeat that again. Ever during Black Friday or work during a Black Friday shopping rush? Both ponage. Now when I say... Now this was a this was a this was an intentional L. This is an extremely aggressive L. Listen to this. <laughs> Ready? Shop during Black Friday. Black Friday or work during a Black Friday shopping rush. Both ponage. God, that's no, aggressive. That's intentional and aggressive. I feel attacked. I said I shopped during Black Friday. It was more like I wanted to see what it was like to go out. I wasn't going out in the intention of buying any kind of a deal. Or anything like that. I just I wasn't stupid. Okay, here, th this is the logic. I'm not stupid like those idiots going to buy something. I did it for nothing. Yet they are the idiots. Sound good? That's what he's going to tell you right here. People going out to buy something, they're the idiots. I did it to not buy anything. But they're the idiots. Sound good? I just wanted to see what was it like to go out on shopping on a Black Friday. Now, this is quite a long time ago. I'd say it was probably about the mid-2000s, okay? But it was insane. Like, it was maybe like 5 a.m. And I drove to a circuit city before the doors opened. They were gonna uh -huh. do their early morning door buster. There were people in the parking lot running full speed, rushing to the fucking circuit city in front of cars. So I I'm driving slowly as I can into the parking lot. <laughs> That full speed chance to slowly in, in two years. From from full speed to slowly is what we got. Sound good? In front of cars. Uh -huh. So I'm driving slowly as I can into the parking lot. I thought it was full speed, sir. In front of my car as I'm driving slowly as I can into the... I thought it was full speed, normal speed, 20 miles an hour. Now it's slow. Parking lot. There are people running in front of my car as I'm driving to get to the, to the, the front of the store. That's no problem if you're driving slowly, sir. Because they thought that the store was going to open and they were going to miss a doorbuster sale. And I'm like, I'm rubbing my face. I'm like, these people are so fucking nuts. Over what? What are they trying to rush this fucking building to get? At least they're after something, not going for the experience for nothing. I thought you talked about risk reward earlier. If you say it's life and limb... Why are you going out there for nothing then? That seems stupider than actually trying to get something. What do they really think is the deal they're going to get? That they're risking life and limb to run in front of cars and create a mob mentality in front of the fucking store to get. Well, I just don't understand that. I do not understand That's that. That's just dude. insane to me. It's just insane to me, dude. But, uh, and then later on that day, I went, like, into the mall itself and started looking at different deals. 
And quite frankly, the deals weren't great at all. Like the best deal I found was FYE uh -huh. for your entertainment. It's a, it's a <laughs> back then they used to have a lot of DVDs, a lot of C music C. We're hearing the exact same story here again. Let's see if anything changes uh, other than the the uh, miles per hour of the car. DVDs, that kind of stuff. Today they just have a bunch of junk. But so I went. It looks like it's not here. Okay. Hold on. Please. We don't need. We don't need Luigi's Mansion. Third floor. Okay. 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 So I go in there and. The best deal they had was, was like um, d used DVDs that they were selling for like two bucks each. So I think that dad. All right, so it was two for ten bucks before. Now it's two bucks each DVDs, and now they're used. Bought like five or six used DVDs for like. And he bought them. So remember how the story changed. It started with two for ten dollars. They had all bad DVDs, and now they're used and two dollars each. But he bought some <laughs> DVDs. So that was it. Like everything else was trash. In the whole Trash, walls, like, there's nothing here we're coming to our Black Friday. I don't know why people do this. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. I see. Hopefully we're back. Hello, hello, hello. We're back. We're back. We're back. I don't know what happened. Internet blip there, dude. We're back. Sorry. <laughs> now, as for working, yes, I've worked many jobs on Black Friday. I've many worked jobs. many a Black Friday at that health food store, which was salads and yogurt. So I worked okay. there many times. Uh, during Black Friday. <laughs> yeah, also, the guy that stole the, the Game Boy Advances is coming after us. Circus City and Best that stole, Buy. That stole the Game Boy Advances, excuse me. Buy, I worked Black Friday. So, many different retail jobs I've worked at Black Friday. Cool. The funny thing about Black Friday is... <laughs> up. Oh, funny thing, here we go. Most of the time, the stuff that's the biggest deals aren't real deals at all. Like, for example, they'll you go to Best Buy, they will put out... 720p mm -hmm. televisions okay. on Black Friday. 720p. That's like two generations ago, the top of the line. And they'll sell them for, like, oh, it's the doorbuster, $150 TV. It's like, who the fuck wants a 720p El Cheapo <laughs> generic brand, you know, TV? But that's okay. the thing people don't understand that they're buying crap. They think they're actually getting like a good deal when they're not. Not fun. All right, so it's either it's one of these two. You don't, you know, you don't have to buy stuff. I'm not sure if we figured that out yet. It's either this melon or this melon. <laughs> it's either this melon or this melon. Which melon shall it be, Catherine? I think it's this one. You can touch one melon today, Phil. Which melon? It's either this melon or this melon. One, but I could be wrong. Dude, just break a melon. Come on. I think it's this one. Can you just break a melon, please? Now we're all in, enthralled by this you melon smashing. I was right. The right. Bhutanist. Next. 2019 still somehow. I bought the album and ended up listening to it when I was driving to my office job that I got after Circuit City. I bought the album. I was listening to it when I... Oh, yeah, oh, the oh. We, we, play, we played this before, but he talks about Circuit City, so I gotta play it for you. I think he's, he's gonna talk about his musical... Uh, his musical fandom back in the day. That song, I believe in a thing called love. I remember when that came out. I was listening to it when I worked at Circuit City. Hi. And then I, I in bought the album love. and ended up listening to it when I was driving to my office job that I got after Circuit City. <laughs> He's a big darkness fan, dude. I believe in a thing called love. Just listen to the rhythm of my heart. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. <clears throat> I used to be able to hit all the falsetto so notes and everything. Yeah. Still rolling up on that Circuit City. Darkness rolling. You don't fuck around with this. I'm going to dominate this sales floor. I believe in a thing called love. Ba, 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 ba. I did all those high notes. I was on fire. Anymore. <clears throat> Friend of Lift now gifted a sub to Eggs and Sausage. Congratulations, Eggs and Sausage. Congratulations, to Eggs and Sausage. Tonight. We're I not going down it. the same joke. I think he talks about like other music he liked here. Me and Injured went down a path here on this video. We're going to skip it this time. The video is ridiculous. I actually, Friend of Lift, I've never seen the video. I've only seen, uh, I've only heard the song. I've never seen the video. Because back when I worked at Circuit City, uh -oh. we had that playing as like a demo song in one of the departments. So I knew the song and I thought it was sounded like so over the top crazy rock song. I wanted it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember this. He says over the top crazy rock. Like, I don't think that's over the top crazy rock, but call me crazy. So I got over the top crazy rock. <laughs> the darkness. Hey, it sounds like a throwback to the 80s. You know, I'm an 80s guy. I grew up in the 80s. So, oh, yeah, we talked about this before. I'm not going to repeat everything, but he says he, he I'm an 80s guy when he was literally born in the 80s. The 80s ended with him being eight years old. Who describes themselves like that? 
When the eighties ended, he was eight years old. Do you say you grew up? Do you say you were an eighties kid then? I don't think so. But no, I was like, that's a, throw, a throwback to eighties hair metal, man. I want that shit, and I got it. A throwback to eighties hair metal. So eighties hair metal was, you know, in its heyday in eighty seven, eighty eight. Six years old. He's rocking out to Rat. Bon Jovi, six years old. Your love is like a bad medicine. <laughs> I mean. But I don't know what the music video is of. And yeah, The Darkness is not trying to be 80s metal at all, which shows he doesn't know what 80s metal really is. Hair metal, it really is. Okay. Darkness is not trying to be 80s hair metal. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Let's, we're not going down this movie, music pass. We should do a music episode, though. That'd be hype, because he has a lot of very interesting music takes. We've already heard two today. We got to get through this episode, though. We're already lagging behind. All right, Apache Beard, as much as I, as I enjoy you, you trying to post up articles from my top haters website from like well, you know 15 plus years ago which probably is when it was i'm trying to think when i actually had that website on the internet uh -oh. i'm pretty sure no one wants to see you spam the stream chat with that stupid shit because that's exactly what it is really stupid shit that i used to post back then yeah and it's time to remove it from my stream chat by banning you i don't want people to know what i wrote on the internet then that's what he's saying right there okay i don't want people to know what i wrote back then all right okay, then. What's hilarious is that people actually think that, like, oh. Oh, oh, hilarious. This is hilarious, guys. Hang on to your butts. This is hilarious. What's hilarious is that people actually think that, like, oh, here's something for, that Phil used to post on the internet in, like, 2003. It's like, yeah, 19 or 14 years ago, <laughs> I posted. It's 19, 14 years ago. You shit on the internet. You're right. Who cares? Dude, right? If you're, people do care, right? You want people to care about your legacy then what, what should we do? And yeah, that definitely gets the button. But let's see what else he's going to say here. It's like the same thing when they tried to post up that stupid, oh, fill in an interview with some guy in the Street Fighter community and he bullied him the whole interview. Yeah. It was like 15 years ago. I was drunk as shit and I used to do that all the time. Uh, no, 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 sir. You did not bully anybody. They bullied the fuck out of you. And we have played that on the Density Scrolls. He's talking about Ski Sonic. And he's talking about Bunkay. And you know what was? That's where the Stitchinator came out. He didn't bully anybody. He was bullied for two hours straight. If you haven't seen that episode, by the way, you gotta wipe that. Watch that one. That's the best NC Scrolls there is, in my opinion. Yeah, it was like 15 years ago. I was drunk as shit. Oh, no, I'm he here again. Bullied him the whole. That stupid. Oh, filled an interview with some guy in the Street Fighter community, and he bullied him the whole interview. Okay, he bullied him. He might have been saying that guy bullied him. Okay, that could be what he's talking about there. He bullied him. And he could be saying, that guy bullied him as in DSP. It was hard to understand the pronouns here, but I think he is saying, that guy bullied him. And that's, that's true. That is true. That's the biggest truth there fucking is. Yeah. It was like 15 years ago, I was drunk as shit, and I used to do that all the time. <laughs> that was my persona in the community. Was, I was a complete asshole. That was I, my persona in the community. Admitted it a million... Did I have the same gun twice? How the fuck did I get the same gun twice? I mean, we did it a million times. That back then I was a complete asshole. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I regret the things that I did back then because I really was, uh, you know, I, I know I said and did hurtful things to certain people okay. uh, that were very immature. Uh -huh. And it was a different, you know, a different person back then, a completely different person uh, yeah, yeah, back then yeah, than yeah. I am now. In fact, I, I've just said this recently. I'm a completely different person now <laughs> than I even was when I moved out here in 2014. How many different people can you be? In the last five years... My life has changed so much uh -huh. for the better, by the way. Oh, for yeah, most of most things, by the better, I should worse. say some things financially worse. But, you know, so many things have changed for the better. It sounds exactly like he's explaining to Turkey Tom how it shouldn't have called it failure. Same exact thing right here. <laughs> Bill was child of the 80s, but not 2000s when he was hated. Yeah, I agree, Cyclops. Good luck in the pool. Yeah, Hope you don't get a blank one. I don't right. even know how you could think of like the same guy. Right? And I say, like, I don't think the same way I used to. I'm a much okay. more calm person. I'm a lot more open-minded. You're basically looking at stuff from, like, 15-plus years ago. So? That was, like, when I was an impressionable youth. I was an ass. Impressionable youth! Alien button push. Asshole. I would drink. Alien counter now at two. Too much. I would just completely be an irresponsible douchebag. Uh -huh. And, you know, the fill of 2019 hates the fill of 20. 2004 or whatever 
You know, How many fills does he hate? There's so many of them. We got 2004, 2015 you hate. There's so many ones he hates. I think he just posted something. I worked at Circus City. You know, I worked at Circus City when I was in college. Would, do you want people to forget about your past? Because you say your legacy means so much, but then why do you want everyone to forget about everything you did in the past? Can you please answer that, sir? Which was actually, I graduated from, from college in 2004, so that post had to have been from like 2002. 2003. We already read it today. Or 2003. Mm-hmm. So actually, it's like 17 years ago. Okay. So does that mean we? Sh- it means nothing and is meaningless? Holy sh- Why does anyone remember anything? Shit. Okay, by the way, he started this with It's Hilarious, so Holy he does have to shit. get this. Uh, by the way, yeah, he says impressionable youth, but he was above 18 during all of it, and usually over 20. So, I mean, you're still impressionable, but I don't think impressionable youth is the word that, well, no one would use that word in any situation. But really, by the definition of it, I don't think impressionable youth equals people above 20. Yeah, I told you guys a lot, a lot of times when I was younger, I drank way too much, man. When I was young, okay. I, I was drinking constantly, you know, about for, for multiple reasons. Just to be irresponsible. I thought it was cool. Just to, I, I was drinking to be irresponsible. Later, you know, for, for multiple reasons. Just to be irresponsible. I thought it was just to be irresponsible. Cool. Then later on in life, um, I, I ended up getting depression and being like really depressed about a lot of stuff. Uh-huh. Um about my life. I hated my life. I hated my job. I hated everything about it. <clears throat> so uh, drinking <clears throat> was the solution, you know, which it's not. Drinking is not a fucking solution to anything. It's a good thing you stopped drinking, right? You understood you were an alcoholic and stopped drinking. Big us, dude. That really, you're taking a big step in your life when you stop drinking, when you realize you're an alcoholic. Opposite of solution. It just creates more problems. I'm just glad you stopped that $100 for a shot thing, you know? It's not a good idea, man, if you're an alcoholic, really. Especially if you deal with depression. Probably not the best move. Um, Glad you stopped that, bro. Big ups, dude. But, you know, I was a dumbass. So I used to drink a ton. And what I used to do in the Street Fighter community, I would get myself in trouble because at night I would drink and I would go online. I would toolshowyoucan.com, which used to be the big forums. <laughs> oh, yeah. Street We've seen those. Street Fighter community. I would go to IRC chats and I would troll the people there like an We've asshole. We've seen those. And then I would fucking, you know... Go go go! On your stupid website, tophaters.com, dot com, and make dumbass posts. You know everything was dumb. <laughs> like I said, this is like therapy session gameplay. By the way, these game games are always just therapy for him. That was a long fucking time ago, man. That was a uh-huh. totally different life. Yeah, totally different life. So? PW dubs to me a dollar. This is the old company that I used to work for. It's still in business in back in Connecticut. To my knowledge, oh, they shout out. are the the company still operates, I think, but I think they're completely different. Like when I was there, they were aftermarket support who had a customer service team that was there. All right, they, we'll save they, this for the Sikorsky episode. That should be two weeks from today, but we'll get there. So weird. University life versus real life is so fucking bizarre. It uh-huh. really is to me because half the kids who were there had no responsibilities in real life, no jobs. Except for doing school. Go ahead. All they did was study and party. And it was like, what a different world from where I was. I was working full. I was up full time at Circuit City at the time. Your choice. I, um, and then after that, I was working another job. I can't remember what the other job was. So I was essentially working sometimes two jobs to make enough money. He never worked two jobs. That part, he would have said that before, don't you think? He would have made sure we know about that hardship. He has never done that. This is the first time he's mentioned it, by the way, as well. The other job was, so I was essentially working sometimes two jobs sometimes to make enough jobs. money uh-huh. to pay my student loan so I could go to school. While these other kids were just taking a free ride. They didn't have to work, nothing. They were free ride because their parents <sighs> paid the fucking way. Uh-huh. What fucks, right? What absolute fucks. So they could do whatever they wanted. So they were doing unpaid internships. They were doing all this stuff to get their foot in the door of jobs when I was busting my ass just to afford college. So that's what I kind of see. This this whole work-life balance and everything in school is very weird because it seems the rich kids get ahead. The rich kids who don't have to fucking work a job when they're in school get ahead because they can do the internships to get the good job when they graduate. Oh, by the way, they also get to party and do all this kind of other stuff. Well, the normal people like us have to bust our ass to even afford going to school. And that's what happened with me was that the last couple of years were rough. 
because I had to work my ass off to afford keep going and graduating. <clears throat> and then when I graduated, I couldn't get a good job well, because I couldn't get my foot in the door because I couldn't afford uh, to do You the know what? That's how life works, man. Sometimes people have easier situations. Some people have harder situations. But I would say you have a situation that is very, very much closer to the top percentile of easy situations than the hardest of situations. Unpaid internship. <laughs> no matter how hard, he's going to try to tell you otherwise. I had to work during school. Uh-huh. You know? Oh, no. So it was pretty messed up. Um, it was pretty messed up. It was pretty messed up. I have to work to get stuff. It's pretty messed up, dude. Not gonna lie. Pretty messed up. The whole, the whole thing, the whole process, in my opinion, with the education system in America is pretty much a scam. Uh-huh. It's set up that the rich get ahead and everyone else gets fucked. Um, totally, dude. But I'm not gonna go. Good out- thing you don't make a hundred thousand, over a hundred thousand for playing video games. Am I right? You know. A giant rant about that on the pre-stream today. I'm in a good mood for the holidays. <laughs> that was a long time ago. It was over 15 years ago. I don't think we need to get into a rant about that on today's pre-stream. All right. Okay. Anyway, get about it. Hope that something that I told you here um, helps out. Okay. Thank you. Okay, whatever. 2020 now. We're finally in 2020. Oh, anonymous dollar tippers is. Oh my what was craft. the worst and best boss you ever had? Any of a sense of humor? Do you miss retail or fast food? I would say. I had two good bosses. All right. Two really two, good bosses. Shout out to two good One bosses. One boss that I had. It was the first job I ever had. The fast food job that I DJ. had. Which I, was, I was basically doing salads and stuff. Goes, he DJ. was young. He was in his late 20s while I was just a teenager. And even though he was, you know, he wanted you to work. He was a jokester. He was a uh, jokester. You know, he would give you time off if you requested it ahead of time. Um, You're a funny dude. And, you know, he basically would allow me to take long breaks and stuff. He was pretty good, a pretty good boss. And he was fun to work with. But... The one downside was it was a shit job. It didn't oh. pay anything. It was always minimum wage. No matter when, it was always minimum wage. Mm-hmm. So it was a good, it was a, a fun, a fun job. Not too stressful, but it was not a lot of money working that job. Then- so it's funny he rates jobs and how stressful they are. You know, you hear that? It's like basically it was easy. Is what he's saying. It was it was easy. And when I worked at Best Buy, excuse me, when I worked at Circuit City, there we go. Circuit I City. I had a boss. Who was the head of the is this computer Sly? department? His name was Sly. Yeah, he was funny. I mean, even though they, big up Sly, he wanted you to make your numbers and your quotas and everything because, of course, they had sales quotas back then. Um, <clears throat> he always talked about anal sex too. That's awesome. I love when he did that. Basically, he was a nice guy. He was funny, and uh, he would joke around. He would tell you stories. He basically, if there was nothing going on, like let's say there were no customers. He would talk with you and hang out with you. He wouldn't be like, oh, go scrub the fucking floor and shit like some of these Taskmaster bosses out there. He would just be hanging out. We'd having fun. You know, it's different. Telling it stories. Like hang- so it changed. Now we're in modern day Phil. He says he was telling stories. But 2014 Phil told us he was telling anal sex stories. Now, if there was no customers, there's a hangout. But then when customers are there, you got to get your butt in line because we got to make sales. Right. So that's how it was. Mm hmm. The story changed modern side Phil. It was way more interesting so, in 2014. Actually. Um. Yeah, I said those are my best and worst. Not to say that I've had, you know, a, mil- a million horrendous bosses or anything like that. Uh, this seems like it'd be a good time to tell the story of the Wells Fargo boss that was giving out the good leads to the person that he liked. But I guess we're not going to get that, maybe. That seems to be a bad boss to me, but. Uh, KH, good question. I don't know what he's doing here. I do not care. He's breaking sand, and we are this. wasting our life right here. I'm going past it. 2020, Resident Evil 3. Wolf Joey says, when was the flash drive invented? The game takes place in 98. Isn't it a year off? Oh, I don't remember when when uh, the flash drive was invented. I know it was, I started using them in the early 2000s, although when they first launched, it was hilarious because a lot of them were, like, really cheap. Oh, hilarious. But I remember selling a lot of them at Circuit City when they became, like, super prominent. Dude, dude. Ha- okay. I know we always do this, but tell me in what iota of humor is in this? What iota? Chunky. But I remember selling a lot of them, although when they first launched, it was invented. Here we go. It's hilarious. I I started using them in the early 2000s, although when they first launched, it was hilarious because a lot of them were like really chunky. But I remember selling a lot of them at Circuit City when they became like super prominent. I guess that they were chunky? But oh yeah, you know I'm hitting it. Wait, what's that? That's it. It's chunky. I missed high grade gunpowder. 
Thank God for this map. Thank God. For, oh, yeah. Ma game has a map. Who would have guessed it? I'm done. Next. 2020. Say, but I agree that we're in a messed up time right now. Mm -hmm. Last Rambo Trudy says, can you tell us some of your worst experiences on Black Friday? Uh oh. Um, oh, God. Well, I've always said there were two, in well, three instances that stand out in my mind. The first was one Black Friday I was not working, but I decided just to see what it was all about. So I remember this is everyone that goes out to Black Friday to buy stuff is a fucking idiot. But when I go out just to see what it's like, I'm not an idiot. Sound good? Keep up. Drove to a mall. I would say it was between five and six in the morning on Black Friday. Circuit City when they were still open, which they're not anymore. But this is a, dating myself. It was like the first half of the 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> dating myself. Oh, God. Look at this fan art, man. This is a preschooler's writing. <clears throat> a preschooler. So I drive this. At least they gave the snort sack lines. Look at that. They did put in the snort, snort sack lines in this fan art. So shout outs. Drive to Circuit City in the morning just to see what's happening. Uh -huh. And no lie. No lie what? People are in the Circuit City parking lot running into my car and running in front of my car as I'm driving. Now they're running into the car. They did, that's new. That's new. <clears throat> <clears throat> to race to the doors of Circuit City to line up because they thought they were opening and they were going to have some kind of a crazy deal. So now they're that's, running into the car. It's insane. Insane. How you're, fast was the car going? You're going to risk your life to line up in front of Circuit City. Uh-huh. Like, what is going on? That's just nuts. Okay? It's nuts, dude. It was um, fucking nuts, dude. When I were to Best Buy, there were two instances. <laughs> oh, God. One, a guy was trying to return a game. Don't ask me why. I believe, I believe, I want to say it was on Black Friday. Maybe know. it was during the, 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 he the, the didn't busy want it Christmas anymore? rush. Call me crazy, but I'm guessing he didn't want the game anymore. But I can't exactly. Oh God! Come on! I remember 100 percent of the time, Miss Rush. Come but on, dude, I can't exactly. I apologize. I remember everybody. the the busy Christmas rush. I'm gonna have to hear that again. But I can't exactly remember 100 percent. <laughs> Bullfrog. Percent of the time, you know what what the date. <laughs> but sorry, everybody. I can't exactly remember 100% of the time, you know, the what, what the date was. I know it was the during... studio right now. Hang on, everybody. Let me take care of this guy. I can't exactly remember 100% of the time, you know, what, what the date was. But I know it was during the busy Christmas season. And the guy was so upset that Circuit City would not accept his game. He wanted to return a game he had opened. And the policy is, I'm sorry, when you open a game, there's no returns. You can exchange for the same game. But you can't return the game because people could, you could legally rip it, you know, you could play it, beat it, and return it. You can't do that. Uh -huh. So, what happened? At the top of his lungs, he screams, This is fucking bullshit. He grabs the game and he throws it in the air into the center of the store, uh -huh. which then strikes another customer in the head. Okay, this is now we're entering. I know we've said it before about top one things that never happened. This might be our new number one. It, of course, let's let's hear how let's hear how injured this person was. Right, they got their head almost chopped off, dude. Incredible. Into right. the center let's of the listen. store, which then strikes another customer uh -huh. in the head. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. And obviously, this customer was not very pleased, and so there was a guy who was working LP loss prevention for the store. <laughs> LP loss prevention. Never heard of it. Who was a former marine? He walked up to the man. He, uh oh, former marine. I know, you know, I, you know, we can't ever do it, but, like, you could probably, like, go back and find where these stories are coming from. Like, former Marine, Jaha Link, you know, there could be a movie. He's also thrown a CD before. He's putting that in. Like, all these memories get put into this new reality that doesn't exist, you know? It just doesn't exist. Chin for the store. But now there's a Marine here, and he's going to do something? Right, right. Let's hear this great story. Was a former Marine. Uh-huh. He walked up to the man, he grabbed him, he put his arm behind his back, and he very briskly escorted him out of the store. And it was one of the most entertaining things I ever saw, where a customer misbehaving in a store. Like, this guy just committed assault on another customer by throwing... This guy committed assault? Throwing the game, uh -huh. and then physically got escorted out of the store. <laughs> physically got escorted out of the store. Okay, so... I don't need to tell you how fake that is, but okay... Um, but by far, the worst story ever on Black Friday was, of course, the 360 shit story. However, I'm not going to tell that story on pre-show. Yeah, We're good already point. Going way too long. <laughs> All right. What was that? Hold on. What I'm was not going to tell that story. 
story ever on Black Friday. It was, of course, the 360 shit story. However, I'm not... 360 shit story? Huh? What's the 360 shit story? I gotta hear this. 360 shit story. If anyone's got it, link it up. But 360 shit story? 360 shit story. Every... Oh, okay. Here we go. Got it, got it, got it. Got it, got it, got it. I'm in it. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on it. I don't remember that shit. Oh, I don't think it's the real thing, though. I don't think it's the real thing, guys. I don't think it's the real thing. If you know where my 360 shit story was from, leave a comment on the video informing all the other viewers. That's not it. That's him talking about it. Um, He said, 360 shit story sounds familiar. Where's it from, though? If anyone knows where it's from, send it. <laughs> Look at this. This is, this is why this guy is so dedicated right here. You know, I said like I see him sometimes. I'm not joking. This is a seven-year-old video. And look who's here. B-I-T-W Awesome. Wrote this ten months ago. Ten months ago. B-I-T-W Awesome is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. This video we're watching here All is right. from 2015. Thank you for re-upping your membership. I appreciate that. Big ups, Indrid, for the re-up. And Cyclops86 says, I was struck by game, losing my eye, but got 10% off. Yeah, 10% off your eye. Sound good? Indrid, good luck on your pool here. It should come up. Anyways, if anyone has the gout, the 360 shit story, that's something I want to hear, but I do not remember the 360 shit story. I'm not going to tell that story on pre-stream. We're already going way too long. All right. DSP Redemption Run 2020 tipped me a dollar saying that I missed a tip from last night. I'm sorry. Whatever. Next. They wish that they could do something for work that was fun, and they can't. I did it for almost my entire life. I had jobs that I did not really enjoy, whether it was okay. when I worked fast food for five plus years during my high school and college years, uh -huh. when I worked at Circuit Silly, si Circuit Silly, Circuit City, Circuit Silly, shout out for a while. Thanks, shout out Circuit Silly. When I worked at Best Buy, um, selling computers again, or when I worked for a bank for a year and I sold mortgages and refinances and credit cards, all right? You know, none of that is fun. You know, it's not. And even, I mean, helicopter support. There was times when I enjoyed my job at helicopter support, uh -huh. and there was times that I absolutely hated that job because I felt like I was being used and abused, right? Yeah, they made me do stuff. <laughs> You know, I was. Horrible. I felt like I was being used and abused. They told me to come in at 8 a.m. and I had to stay there till like 4 p.m. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, I just want to do something. I just want to have fun. Fun, fun, fun. Way more fun. Um. I just want to have fun. Psh. Hello, sir? This is a video show. Well, I got to wait because it looks like there's more false tips coming in, guys. Okay? More well, false, false tips. tips. Nothing I can do about it. Um, I got the <clears throat> false tips going. But Where's anyway. false tips going. Um, oh my god, Jawa. PSA for all detractors. In case you weren't informed, on all, we all live in Phil's Candyland world. And nothing is ever his fault. Oh no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an actually detractor comment. <laughs> uh, so DSP, so let's recap the situation. I did nothing wrong. <laughs> Alright, there we go. That was the Circuit City there. 2020 still. Take a sip. Why did Circuit City fail but Best Buy is still around? I have no idea. Maybe it's because Best Buy diversified a bit and had things like the Geek Squad and stuff like that before Circuit City. Ooh. By the time Circuit City started doing services like that, it was too late. You'd have to, you'd have to do a market analysis on what happened. I have no idea. You have to do market analysis. Uh-huh. You have to do market analysis, dude. Anything else on the topic? Oh, oh, guys, oh, master. Oh, no, my nose is itching. I can't jump because my nose is itching. <laughs> Fuck out of here. All right, next, 2020. So there you go. Um, Overnight, Mr. Jackson, 2002, tipped me $5 and said, my old circuit city head had told me that they lost half of their foot traffic when they got rid of appliances. They stopped selling appliances in the store. Those customers just... Look at this. Look at this fan art. Is that even DSP? What the fuck is going on here? Do not derail. Do not dirtract. Look on the right side. Do not derail. Do not dirtract. One good scare in October. Count Burnell. Tune in for thrills, spills, and chills. Everyone's entitled to... 
Everyone's entitled to so behold. Everyone's entitled. This is definitely a, a LARPer, a, LAR, a LARPer fucking thumbnail for sure. They 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 misspelled detract, and they also said everyone's entitled. This could be around the time he's like, I'm entitled to my day off. Could be. Just went to Best Buy as casual shoppers, and they never came back to Circuit City. I actually, it's interesting he brings this up. I remember when I first started working for Circuit City. There we go. They still had appliances, and that's when they phased them out. Within the year to year and a half that I was working at Circuit City is when they actually got rid of the appliances. Ooh. And they brought in other stuff. Like, they expanded the size of their TV section, and they nice. expanded the size of their audio section. Right. To have more options for car audio and also to have more home theater stuff. But you're absolutely right. Absolutely like, right, people dude. usually didn't go into to Circuit City every day to buy something like that, right? <sighs> like, and, and, and Best Buy never got rid of these appliances. Mm -hmm. They always had them. Refrigerators, ovens, slash stoves, and washing. <laughs> Why does he add slash stoves? <laughs> Refrigerators, ovens. Slash stoves and washer dryer. Fuck, dude. So you're right. I think Circuit City retained that customer base because of that. Uh -huh. So anything else? Maybe, maybe that maybe. is a major reason for Circuit City's maybe downfall. It is. Who knows? Uh -huh. <clears throat> it very much could be. Uh, I'm entering the main mill. All right. So anyway, part. thank you, Mr. Jackson, for the overnight Please. tip. Now I received four tips. Whoa! From Griffin Box this morning. Griffin each Box. Each for a dollar. And each one may be a completely different topic. Let's see. The first one is... Let's hear not one. Not sure if you mentioned it. There's a new Atari 2600 nice. console coming out. Are you interested in trying it out someday? What are you... Fuck the fuck up. I don't give a shit about game news. All right. 2020. A lot of these stores are doing these waves of sales. Ask All right. Remember he said Black Friday's not that bad when he got a tip about it? In 2020, someone asked about Black Friday again. Let's see if it's bad again or not that bad, as he said. And you're like, oh, yeah. Or not asking. They're saying you can get the system. And if you get it, they like, actually, we don't have it. What you've done is you secured your place in line for when we actually get it in stock whenever that may be so you got people who are sitting there for like you know a day refreshing the page adding the cart trying to check out they finally check out the business takes their money and then says you're not, you're not getting your console anytime uh -huh. soon 150 likes a team. thank you guys for liking the stream today so there you go uh -huh. arch tekken has tipped me a dollar there we go arch and says tekken. black friday and the equivalent events are a scam Every major store and services like Amazon are tricking people into buying cheap products that were more cheaper there or elsewhere six months before the <laughs> event. Research before purchasing anything valuable. Although I can't, I certainly can't say 100% this is correct. What I can tell you is, personally, having worked retail, mm -hmm. that is exactly the case. <laughs> All right. I can't say this is true, I, but that, knowing, <laughs> hold on. I said, I can't say this is true, but for my, from my experience in retail, yes, that is the case. Worked at Circus City, which doesn't uh -huh. exist anymore, so I can tell this story because there they can't go. sue me. When I were just you already told the story in 2003, sir. So are you, are you breaking new ground here? You told us the story in 2003. When I worked at Circus City, which doesn't exist anymore, so I can tell this story because they can't sue me. Okay, You wrote this story while you still were working at, at, at Circuit City, but okay, go ahead. When I worked at Circus City, uh -huh. I worked in the computer department and okay. when i worked there we had a ridiculous amount of computer accessories and components you could buy one of the <laughs> ridiculous amount dude things in particular accessories. <clears throat> that would always happen on black friday uh -huh. is that you would put out the new tags of what was supposed to be considered the door buster sales door the buster. big deal I'll not to say bust. that things didn't go on sale they absolutely did door robust but the hilarious sale. part of this deal uh -huh. would be that we would put out these tags. Oh, and hilarious I, part. Get ready. Here's another hilarious. Would always crack up laughing because it would be like, sale, <laughs> hard drive, regular price, $99.99, sale, $69.99. Oh, wow. So that's like a third off. That's a good price. You're going to want to buy that hard drive, right? Except that that hard drive was $69.99 anyway before Black Friday. Because that regular price of $99.99 was the original price when the hard drive was first produced as a new product like three years ago. And no one's charged that for like two years. So as you're going into the store, thinking you're getting a door bust. Oh my god, door buster. This is a giant... I love these marketing terms. I keep saying door buster. Door buster, dude. Discount. Third off. No, it's not. It's been sold for $69.99 for two years. You're paying the normal price. And you think you're getting a deal, so you run in and you buy them.
thinking you're getting a deal. Uh -huh. The other thing is, What's the other a thing? lot of the doorbusters that Black Friday God do are scams. Stop with the doorbusters. They act like you're going to get a great deal on a computer. Oh my God. You, come into Best like... Buy, come into Circuit City, come into Fry's, come into Walmart, come into Target. Giant deal on a computer. What about the other variety stores like grocery stores? That's what you said earlier, right, sir? Okay. <laughs> De um, delusions of grand. You got delusions of grand doorbuster. <laughs> um, you know, now I'm going to tell you from my perspective, this is how old this is. But back when I used to do this stuff and I was in retail, uh -huh. it was all of still about Pentium, AMD, and Celeron. Those Ooh. were the three major processors. Pentium yeah. processor. AMD processor, Celeron The processor. AMD, though, they were made to overheat. So that was kind of cool. When it got cold in there, we turn up those AMDs. It will burn us up, dude. It would be so warm in there. It was nice. I love the shit. I love that, man. AMDs were hot back then, dude. Right? Today, I have no idea what the processors are. But back then, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what you would do is they would say, oh, insanely great deal on a high-end Pentium processor PC. <laughs> Dentium. Normally, $1,500. <laughs> Today only, $700. Holy shit, $800 uh -huh. off. I got to get into the store. Guess how many of those computers they would have in the store? How many? One per store. Dude, Donnie Darko, legend. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. Dude, this is a bomb. Sadly, I'm getting tired of the blank. I got I to gotta change it up. One. Thanks I'm not so exaggerating. Much, You're a legend. You got Pignosis. One. You got Pignosified, Danny Darko, 53. Pignosis. Per You're store. falling for it. So one motherfucker would run in the store and get Damn. that PC, and no one else would get it because they only had one per store. But this was their front page ad to get you in the store. They would act like you would get this deal. You're not going to get it. Only one guy is going to get it. And then after that, you got to get the leftovers. Now, obviously, you <laughs> waited out in line like an asshole to get into the oh, store. Dude. You, you, you want to get something. You don't want to go home empty-handed. So what do they got? They got no, the only you want to go home not empty-handed. Everyone else can have some self-control in their life. And AMD processor. They got that really El Cheapo Celeron processor. El Cheapo again. Yes, sir. And they would sell you a computer that's a piece of donkey shit. Okay. It's What's slow. It? Aren't, you do aren't you the one doing the selling? It was fuck. And they would act like it's a good deal. And you would go home with a piece of garbage. Uh -huh. You would go home with a big old slow computer, uh -huh. and you'd think you got a deal. And that it, this would infamously always happen. The next, the next week day, after Black Friday, what would we would have a ton of people come into the store complaining that they bought shitty slow PCs, and they Never can't happened. understand why their PC Never is so slow happened. that they just bought. Like, dude, you bought a low-end Celeron. You're an idiot. Never happened. <laughs> You know, you got... Yep, that would really work. Customers love when you say, you bought a low-end El Cheapo. <laughs> Completely fooled by Black Friday marketing. This, you know, so yeah, even though, yes, there are birds outside making lots of money. <laughs> um, even though... <laughs> Why is this out of nowhere, birds? You, you're not subscribed to the channel. The fuck? Please subscribe. Why is there bird Curls and twirls. One of favorites right there. Single silver star crows and twirls. Why'd the birds come out of nowhere? So anyway, Black Friday, people come in. I can't believe this. By the way, birds. <laughs> By the way, birds. <laughs> Injured's outside. Confirmed. By Black Friday marketing. This, you know, so yeah, even though, yes, there are birds outside making lots of noise. Um, Even though... <laughs> By our cats feeding the woodland critters right now, maybe live audio. By all means, I'm sure there are some real deals on Black Friday. There's a lot of scams. A lot of scams. You know, fuck around, man. So this was, it was interesting. There was this one year. Oh, let's see now, for something interesting, not funny. So I won't push the button, but let's see how interesting this is. Yeah, and this is back still when Circus City existed. That I did something. I, I experimented. I said I'm not going to actually go looking for deals for myself oh. and buy stuff. This is when he risked life and limb to learn stuff. I'm just going to go out there with the people, and I'm going to see. I'm going to go with the peasants. I'm going to go out there with the peasants. What actual deals I can find on Black Friday, uh -huh. just for an experiment. So Social I, experiment, you might say. I went out and I did this, and first of all, I camped out outside of- Look at this. Look at the hand in this Photoshop. <laughs> Look at the hand. Circuit City, just to see what would happen. Uh -huh. There was an insane mob of people outside of the store that were fighting to be in line to be first Dude. in the store. There were people running across the parking lot in front of my moving car 
I was driving into the parking lot. People were running in front How of my moving car. How fast were you driving there? Because they thought that the doors were opening in Circuit City and they were going to get a deal. Okay. Um, Wait, so exactly. How did they say? Oh, hold on one second. I was driving. Door. There were people running across the parking lot in front of my moving car. People moving in front of his moving car when previous tellings included them running into the car. Now they're just running ahead. No talk of speed. I was driving into the parking lot. People were running in front of my moving car because they thought that the doors were opening in Circuit City and they were going to uh -huh. get a deal. Okay. Okay. Um, in addition to that, okay, most of the things that were deals weren't deals. Like, I, if I remember correctly, the best deal I got is I went... Uh, so he bought stuff. <laughs> ...inside the mall. Here we go. Let's hear about all the things he bought when he was just going to check it out. Um, and in the mall, what's yeah, yeah. Remember, he went here just to experiment and see what was going on, and he bought stuff. Fye. Anyone even know what that store is anymore? Who knows, right? For if your you guys entertainment. Even know Fye. For your entertainment used to be a giant media store. Uh, giant. Um, where you could buy all kinds of shit. CDs back when they were popular. Uh, video games. Movies, yeah, yeah, DVDs, yeah, etc. Yeah, well, the best yeah. deal I found that day was what used DVDs. Let's see how much they cost this time. Last time they were two dollars each. DVDs that have been already purchased and traded. They've been two for ten dollars and two dollars each. What are they now? It in. All right. Basically, they were like insane discount. Like you could get used DVDs for like two bucks. All right, two bucks. And these weren't bad movies. <clears throat> these <laughs> They're not bad anymore. He said they were bad earlier. They were actually like de decent. They were decent, like not great, but like decent. You know. So we're talking like, what's a good movie that's kind of decent? You know, I'm trying to think of a decent, like not. <laughs> it's not like <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good example, but it's hard. <laughs> like, what's a not so great movie, but it's kind of good? You know, it's not like American Pie One. That's awesome, but like American Pie Two. So it's still good, but not like great. You know what I mean? Buster movies. Now, who knows the quality of the movie because you're getting it used. But I think who knows the quality of the movie? Because <laughs> you're getting it used. That day, I spent like twenty dollars. So they got ten DVDs, and I went home with like ten movies. <laughs> the math checks out. Hang on, let me do this math again. Hold on, let me get a napkin here. Hang on. You got hold on, so two dollars each. You bought ten. So hang on, what? How much does it cost really? Hang on. Day I spent like twenty dollars. The so quality $20. of the movie because you're getting it See, used. Hang on but a I think that day I spent like twenty dollars. Hold on a second here. And I went home with like ten movies. Oh, well, 10? and they all worked. And so I kind of made out. Okay. Um, I did. Yeah, that's a good point. I made out, too. and I was happy about that. But <laughs> outside of that, wait, what's pie? <laughs> There's like there was nothing like that year. I I seriously was looking like what is the best deal. There's no there was none. There were no deals that were worth. They were all ripoffs. So you got to be very skeptical about Black Friday stuff. Uh -huh. The thing yep. is today things are very different. Yep. We've got coronavirus. Everyone's going to online shopping. All right. So in that regard, that's a good thing. And you know, hopefully, hopefully what? you're not scammed or fooled too much. Hopefully you don't. You're not a fucking idiot. Just say it, right? Hopefully you're not an idiot like me. That's what you want to say right now. Hopefully you don't. You don't fall for every single marketing ploy on earth by these deals, right? These oh yeah, you deal my ass. Best Buy. Um, best Buy's next. Don't week, buy next it. Year. I probably Best Buy's gonna be next week. You know, always be skeptical of what you're buying. Don't okay. believe just because it advertises a Black Friday sale uh -huh. that it's going to be something great because you a lot of the times you're getting scammed or fooled, all right? Uh, right. But in general, what? What's the I would think here? maybe online has better deals. At least with online, you have the ability to online art, look at other pricing around the internet, see if you're actually <laughs> getting a better deal. And also, online, uh -huh. you can immediately see user reviews, oh, which man. is something you could never do at Black Friday. You didn't know... If that PC was good. In fact, one of the things that was always big about Black Friday, this the stuff that was sold as sale was a new product. They would actually have this this PC build was never even there before. So is this a good PC? I don't know. We've never sold it before. I couldn't even tell you if it's good or not because it's brand new. Great salesman. <laughs> I couldn't tell you, there you one go. way or the other. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Um right. Tarantula MS twenty eighteen has to be five dollars, and that is the biggest tip of the day so far. <laughs> tarantula. So thank you, Tarantula. Let's get that up on the leaderboard. Go ahead, Tarantula. What do you got? No, fuck you, Tarantula. We got to go to the next one. Done 21. Fuck you.
with you, Tarantula. Left and finally, does it make sense to start with vanilla? Gustavo Trees, have you ever been in a leadership role at previous jobs? Ooh. Depends on what you mean by that. When I was uh, in... It sounds like, have you ever been in a leadership role, sir? I don't think there's too much to this. Fast food, I used to be the, I was considered the assistant manager. I was the head salad tosser at yogurt, everything yogurt. The job that I worked at, but I never had the job title because the job title didn't exist. Basically, I was always in charge when I was there and everyone else basically had to listen to me, but I was never officially a <laughs> This is so much cope. Manager. Like, you can't just answer the question, sir. Yes or no? Were you in a leadership position? Well, that depends. I mean, I don't know what you mean um, by that exactly. I would say no, never, no, never when I was, like, uh, at the mortgage place, no. And They didn't ask about that. <laughs> They're not asking about specific jobs, sir. They're saying, in your whole career, have you ever been in a leadership role? No, no, I have, wasn't at the salad yet, you know. Grocery's not good. Buying online, you get stung. Well, I mean, hey, that's something. Good luck on the pool. Hope you get one. Let's hear the more. This and more. At Circuit City, coping. no. At Best Buy, I was considered a higher up in the chain because I was part of the business team. Oh, I was higher up in the chain. And so I was thought saw as an authority for technology and stuff like that. And sometimes I was, you know, went through for certain management decisions if there was no other manager around. I was there for some management decisions. So he was. He was assistant to the regional manager. No, I was. So you were assistant to the regional manager? No, no, assistant. I was not assistant regional manager. I was assistant to the regional manager. He is reverse Dwighting himself, as Snood said. But never uh, technically in the food chain of management of the store, probably not. I was never in the food chain of management. How many words can we stuff in here until you don't know what we're answering anymore? Um, In regards to... Uh, when I it sounds like he's in a courtroom, and they said, "Did you kill this woman or not? Yes or no?" Like, well, it depends on what you mean by that. Okay, uh, if, if it depends on how you define the term. When did the life leave her body? Now it depends on if you believe in souls. Was her soul still there? I don't know. Was she still plugged into the huh? feeding tube? Now she was still alive there. So I can't really answer that about when was I really killed. I can't say one way or the other, honestly. Office job, HSI. By the time that I was done there, like, I had basically been considered, like, a senior person in customer service, even though I didn't do customer service. That was all messed up because, like, if I actually had been doing the job I was supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. luckily I would have been promoted to, like, a team lead. But instead, <laughs> they kept giving me other jobs, like, continuous Get the hint. shit that had nothing to do with customer service. Get they the made hint. Me, like, a customer service guy. So, technically, was my title ever at any job I was ever at a manager? No. But I did the work of a manager at at least two different jobs. Uh, I was never a manager, but I did the job of a manager. Praise me, please. Tips are most preferred. <clears throat> oh, wow. Um, All that Super to Scubo say no. Has resubscribed. Thank you, Super Scuba, for the sub. All that to say no. Those questions hurt him the most, right? When he has to appear not to be the best for some reason, he will give you that. I have a job. So you're lucky to have a job, and you just basically put up with whatever because you want or need this job. So tough shit. Yeah, uh, tough shit, dude. And that's a bad attitude to have, in my opinion. It should be the opposite. It should be, wow, we're grateful that we have workers who are coming out here, you know, essential workers during the pandemic and risking their health to come out here and work. Instead, it's kind of the opposite. It's kind of like, you know, I hate, that's why I always have hated retail, honestly. It's like, some of the jobs I've had in retail are very good and fun. Mm -hmm. Like, when I worked at Circuit City, I was like, one manager who was an actual prick. <laughs> the rest of the time I worked at Circuit City, which was well over a year, like a year and a half, uh -huh. I actually enjoyed every moment of it. <clears throat> I was actually a little sad when I left there because I actually really enjoyed selling computers and cameras. I learned so much about them when I worked there. So I'm going to spoil us here a little bit. He never says why he left Circuit City. Um, he does seem to be by his own choice in this case. I know he gets fired many times. But in this case, he never really gives us a straight answer. He just said there why he left, but we don't know why. My manager was actually a nice guy. Uh -huh. who talked about anal sex on the floor. That's what you said earlier. Probably one of the best managers I've ever had in my life. He understood uh -huh. that retail is not just about numbers. It's not lying to the fucking customer. Sly. To Shout out to Sly. It's about actually having a, a good experience and a rapport with that customer. So that customer feels like when they came into the store, right, they got not only value for what they spent, but they now know a little bit more about what they're bought so that they don't go home like a dunce and not know what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like, what they're bought. I would try to educate the customer a little bit. Here's how this camera works. Here's the accessories you need. Here's something Here's extra the for the extra mile. And when you are honest with the customer, 
you can go real far. Will you be the best seller in the store? Probably not. But as long as you're honest with the customer and you can honestly explain to them how everything works, a lot of customers really appreciate that because most people don't have that level of knowledge so anymore in retail. Earlier you said this was all bullshit, right? When like they told you to sell this other shit they didn't really need. But now he's acting like it's a positive. Sound good? You know. But anyway, that's a long time ago. We're talking, you know, that was the first half of the 2000s. Yeah, what he's saying, Barrett, is totally true. But before, earlier in the stream, when he first talked about it back in 2013, when he was still riding high on YouTube, he said it was so bad that they made you do that stuff and made people buy shit they didn't want. But now his story changed how he is now helping people, helping them learn stuff. That is a way different story than he was telling eight years ago when the time this video came out. Now, good luck going to a retail store and finding a single person who they trained a minute to know anything about anything. Uh, good Lord. Good I don't Lord. know why I'm ranting about retail today, but I'm <laughs> going on one of my rants. One of my bo <laughs> people call it the boomer rants. Yep. I'm going on a boomer rant. There you go. But anyway. Who calls it that? Your fans or detractors, sir? Anyways, next. He says, you're what? you say your wife works retail, but you say no one that works in retail knows anything and sucks at their job. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. That's good. That's good. Th this is why I put this one. So earlier in the stream, earlier this video, I told you, he said, like, everyone that works retail sucks at their job. Now, he, this person smartly says, your wife works at retail. What do you have to say about this? Let's hear what Phil says here. He says, you're what? you say your wife works retail, but you say no one that works in retail knows anything and sucks at their job. Uh -huh. uh, allow, allow me to elaborate. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second here. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on a minute. Hang on, okay? Let me, let me reiterate that. Hang on, all right? Uh, hold on. All right. It used to be that when you got a retail job, they would try to actually either, number one, hire someone who kind of knew something about what they were going to do at the job, mm -hmm. or they would train you. So I'll give you some perspective here. Oh, we just hit the new record for pools, by the way, in a single stream, 75. Previous record was 74. When I worked at Circus City, they asked me, do you know about computers? Do you know about cameras? At the time, mm -hmm. I knew nothing about cameras, but I knew a ton about computers. As I told you guys, I used to build my own PCs. So I explained to them, yes, I know this, I know this, and I, you know, okay, can you describe a computer to me? Sure, here's the components, blah, blah, blah. All right, we want to start you in the computer department, but we also need people for the camera department. It so feels we like we're going on an awful long walk, but, so, but we, could we please explain how this affects your wife in retail, sir? What we'd like to do is start you over there, but we're going to slowly train you on cameras. We're going to pair you up with one or two guys that are experts on cameras so you can learn about them. You paired up, And dude. that's where we would like you to work to help Yeah, customers. that's the guy that's... Okay. <laughs> now, keep in mind, this is the first half of the 2000s. How many words can we say? We asked about your wife, sir. Not about your computer job from 18,000 years ago. You, what you just said. Could you get back to that, please, sir? All right. I learned so much about digital cameras. I didn't know anything about digital cameras. Uh -huh, I went we in got with this. zero knowledge, and I became basically an expert on digital cameras working in Circuit City because they trained me. Oh, wow. They trained okay? me. Okay? That was in the early 2000s. Today, huh? you go into any retail job, and basically, you don't know shit. And they don't train you for shit. They uh, just throw you on the floor. Nothing Cat could do. They didn't train her. And they're like, okay, here's so how she. It, you you are saying they don't know anything and they're stupid, okay? They use the register. Even if they even teach you that, sometimes they don't. They're like, all right, get out there, start working, start doing this, start doing that. It's like what? You know, like there was, you know, and some people say there was an economy crash, and essentially now, and I I explain this to my wife all the time. I say you yeah. understand that retail stores used to actually be considered like luxury shopping you would <laughs> yeah circuit city was luxury shopping dude go to a store any uh -huh. they break out that they let you sit down they give you some 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 <laughs> they let you sit down they bring you some food R circuit city was nuts dude up oh, to silver star hogan big up 64 store you know it could be a department store it could be any kind of store you would walk in and the people who worked there would be dressed up nicely not you know like suit and tie and they would walk up to you and be like, oh, madam or gentleman, can I help you today? <laughs> oh, what madam or gentleman, that's Circuit City. What are you looking for? This, when has when was the last time this was true? Like the 50s? Like every store was like a high-end store? What is he talking about? And they would be well-versed on all the products in the store. They would guide, they were basically like a personal shop. Ah, yes, sir. You're here for the Nintendo Entertainment System? Oh, please write this way. Please take our complimentary seat at our complimentary desk here. We'll tell you all the choices here. For your Nintendo Entertainment System needs. Hopper. They would guide you through the store. They would get you the stuff you needed. Want to know why? They worked on commission. What they sold, uh... they actually made a profit from. So there was incentive 
for the retail uh, worker to be professional and to actually know what the hell they were selling because they would actually make good money working there. Ah, so he's saying because of his one situation where Circuit City went from uh, commission to not commission, he's saying every single job out there changed to that as well. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> it was very different. It was, you know, now it's the lowest skill. I'm you don't speeding need up. Any prerequisite we're, we're job late. training or requirement. You just walk in the door, they'll hire anyone. And they throw you into the mix of things. Just go work. Wait, I don't even know what I'm doing. Go out there. <laughs> what? <laughs> I really don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm supposed to be expected to do. Don't care. We need bodies out there. Get out there and start selling. Get out there and start helping customers. Get out there and start stocking the shelves, folding the clothes, doing this, doing it. Like, what? That's how retail is today. A stock in the shelves, folding the clothes. He said that because that's what Kat does. It's just, it's a joke. Now you say, well, what about my wife? Yeah, my wife works retail. Absolutely. She's been in retail for a very long time. Um, you know, would she like to do something else? Sure. Good luck, though, especially with the world economy the way that it is. Uh huh. And she does not have the you know most robust education. Not not a slight to her. That's just a fact of the matter. It's very tough right now. Good luck getting into anything out. If you've always been in retail, good luck getting a job outside of retail. You know, it's impossible. There's people that right now. I'm not even kidding you. Go apply for like what you would consider an entry level job anywhere. You're gonna have people going in there with college degrees and master's degrees who are unemployed because they lost their job applying for like a line level job somewhere that a teenager should have because that's how bad the economy is. You know, mm. especially with COVID, how everything got destroyed over the last year. So the economy bad affects people getting jobs, but doesn't affect how much people can donate to him. Remember, he always says that. That's the stupidest idea ever. Remember? So, you know, Cat is essentially stuck working retail jobs, and uh, there's not much you can do about it. <clears throat> um, you know, <laughs> so she has to work these jobs, and she goes in there with experience and everything. And you know, then you see her co coworkers coming in who don't know shit. You know, it's like it's a joke. Like I said, prime example, retail job. Oh, we don't. We're not even giving you a schedule. It's two days before maybe your next day after work, and we're not even giving you your schedule yet. It's like what? What kind of place is this, right? Uh huh. So things There's are tough as long as it doesn't affect how much money you get. That doesn't affect how much money you get. It should not affect how much money you get. Still Sound COVID good? deniers in chat? Well, I guess you just can't help stupid, right? You just can't help stupid. I don't know what else to tell you. Spawn yeah, killers so, to me. So Best Buy, we confirmed with, with um, Misery Merchant. When Phil started there, that was right after when they switched in 2003 or whatever. All right, last one, 2021. But if she comes home during my pre-stream here, I will, you know, I'm sure Jasper's going to run down out of here to see her anyway i'll close the door and we'll go from there and uh if she ends up working <clears throat> five six days a week four to five hour shifts you know i guess it is what it is um or if she ends up working you know four days full time because that would be like four days eight nine hour shifts I, I don't know i'm so confused one week they had her working four days and now all of a sudden i guess she's working more i don't know and i keep asking her she's like your guess is as good as mine they change everything and they try to explain it to me and they can't justify it they just say everything's different and, they, and everyone keeps asking for the schedule, and the schedule's never done. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm -hmm. What a place to work. It's like I, I keep telling you guys, that's how it is in the United States with retail. Mm -hmm. Retail seriously your is like not the same as everyone else's. Yep. What it is is these companies don't want to hire people who are qualified for these positions. They don't want to <laughs> hire someone who's actually had management experience for a management job. So instead, they hire someone who just flubs it. They don't train them. They, just, they pay them. So like your wife flubs it. Bottom dollar. You know, as cheap as I can hire a manager for it. And then they expect them to just know what the hell they're doing. <clears throat> oh God, it's like, I'm sorry. Okay, so we don't train anyone. We don't hire anyone with experience, but we expect them to be able to do these jobs and be in charge of all these people. Oh, so can you blame the person? No, you blame the uh, company because the company's the one making the, the money hand over fist on the sales at the retail store. And they don't care about actually having employees that know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how it's always been in retail. And I'm not just saying now, this is how it's always been. When I was in the 2000s when I worked retail, it was almost exactly the same situation. Mm -hmm. Circuit City, Best Buy. They didn't, they didn't just do whatever. It's like, just fly by the seat of your pants and make us money. We don't fly by the seat it. of your pants, dude. Sorry so then you that. end up with stores where all the employees don't even know what's going on. They don't have a schedule. To the two days before, like, for example, today's Friday, right? My wife doesn't even know what hour she's working Sunday. Because the schedule... That's very regular for those kind of jobs. It wasn't done. Uh-huh. What, what if you have kids and you need to get them to school? She doesn't, though. What if you work two jobs and you need to schedule one job around the other? How are you supposed to do that exactly? You know, like, this is ridiculous. That's how life works. But anyway, I digress. It's not yeah. just one particular store. It's it's literally all of retail in the United States, which is why when I tell you guys... Yeah, when because you know all about that, right? Okay, next. The professor invented it. Professor. Can I explain how to use it, Professor? You know what I'm just realizing? The last time there was a Pokemon Snap game, it very much was probably a film camera. It was the <laughs> 90s, right? <laughs> <laughs> Digital cameras didn't come into prominence until the first half of the 2000s. I know because I was working at Circuit City, oh. a company that's now defunct. And th Why, that why was do you say like that so uppity? Circuit City, you know what I mean? Oh, because I was working at Circuit City, 
company that's now defunct. What the fuck was that? What? Look at this. Why did Circuit City get the treatment? Look at this. The first half of the 2000s, I know because I was working at Circuit City, a company that's now defunct. What? No. And the, that, that was when there was a big was push that? for digital over film. <clears throat> but so yeah, this probably is completely different, right? Who's that? Interesting. I wonder if there were things in the original Pokemon Snap that had to do with film, and this this one doesn't have that. <clears throat> All right, can I explain how to use it, Professor? Anyways, anyway. that's it. <laughs> that was just a little circuit city. No there. Carl shout outs. No Carl. And then I'm going to check on this tip, and we'll go from there. Shout out so to Snow, Carl. Snow Carl was the first tipper of the day with a dollar thirty tip, uh -huh. and he says on the retail topic. I I actually went to a nice clothing store today. Ooh. I was pleasantly surprised by amazing staff who had great suggestions. They were very well educated and felt well paid. Maybe the U.S. isn't different or your patronage is to cheaper stores. See, sadly, Snow Carl, I hate to say it, if, if you're not in the U.S., you're probably not getting the same experience. In the U.S., oh, God. Things, if we hear the same story, I'm skipping have it. have very much declined uh, over the last 10 to 15 years in retail. Like... When I, let me so now he, this is what happened. The truth of the matter is he learned about retail now because cats work in retail now. And now he's kind of learning how it works. And now he's saying all this information because he learned from learning from cat. That's all he's saying right now is how the retail is tough from cat's point of view. Cause that's all he knows. So he's going to say everything sucks now because the one person he knows in his life that he talks to very rarely, but he kind of talks to her sometimes says it sucks. Now that's where every single thing sucks. Everything a retail store sucks. It's like this. Let me give you some perspective. Oh, all right. God. When I first started working at Circuit City, now this was Circuit when I was City. actually in college, okay? So okay. we're talking almost 20 years ago. When I first started working there, uh -huh. all the employees were educated and smart about the products they were selling. Because guess what? They were on a commission-based sales. Right on so time, you wanted yeah. to know what the hell you were doing. You wanted to make sure that the customer was satisfied. And you also, of course, wanted to try to make attachments and other things on there to make money because you, you were, had incentive to do the right thing because you would actually make extra money if you did so. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, during the course of the time that I worked for Circuit City, it converted over from a commission base to a hourly base pay. And yeah. literally what I saw happen over the two to three years that was I was in Circuit hilarious? City, I saw all the educated employees say, this isn't worth it anymore and leave. And you, they hired an uneducated, basically Fuck. just walking off the street Look kind of- blank card. Sorry, <laughs> Black Doom. Blank four turkey star. I got to fix workforce that. who are just taught the basics of what you need to know about a product. And it was a, it was a night and day change. And all retail in the United States has basically become this instead of paying people to know what they're doing and actually be educated. Even even the managers of these stores don't have any education. Go out, go walk into your local Best Buy and ask uh -huh. the manager of the store if he has a management degree. If he went to if he went to <laughs> is that what you do? Excuse me, sir. Do you have a management degree? Thank you. I'll be interested in buying one lightning cable now. Your finest lightning cable. Thank you. College for it. <laughs> no, it doesn't exist. Seriously, like, these people are all uneducated people. They're paid dirt, by the way. These people are not well paid. They're, they're low pay, low skilled workers. They just try to uh, hire an anyone to put a I button in a seat so. and make it seem like the store is staffed, regardless of the fact that they even fucking can help a customer. It's not good. Now, I'm sure there's some stores that are different, and especially if it's not a big chain. If it's a more locally owned small business, you might find the exact opposite because small businesses are trying to compete in a major way and say, hey, maybe you, you come buy something from us. Things are a little bit more expensive, but uh -huh. we know our shit. You come in here, we're going to tell you everything about what you're looking to buy, whether it's clothing, whether it's electronics, whatever it is. The small businesses, that's how they try to stay afloat here in the United States. But the big chains, man, uh, nine so times out of ten, this. if you walk into any big chain yes. and you ask a question, if you just did basic searching on Google, you'll have more knowledge than the person who works in the store. This is especially pertinent hardware stores. If you go into like a Lowe's or a Home Depot, oh my God. Good luck even finding someone to talk to. Oh, I need to, I need, I have a question about making some paint. You'll stand there for 40 minutes before someone even asks you if you need help. <laughs> That's don't, how it is in the United you States. You don't need to know anything about paint because you can't do it without your dad being there. Let's get it straight. Next one. Okay. Oh God, MLB. I can't handle hey, it. This is Best Buyer Circuit okay. City. Both. I've worked at both. Both, dude. Both. I worked at Circuit City for about year and a half, two years during my college years. And then I worked at Best Buy around the mid 2000s. You see he's getting his ass. Oh, come on, defense, defense. <laughs> punch him, punch him with the ball. He duped him right in the face. <laughs> Puts down the shoulder, boom, takes him out like a linebacker. Very funny, very funny, very chill, very interactive. I right, know we're baseball. Next. Wow. Michael Cage says, why do I think Circus City went out of business but not Best Buy? I wouldn't know specifics. I mean, it could be many different factors. Like, maybe Best Buy had the better supply chain 
and had better availability of product that they could get it cheaper. And therefore uh, they were now what? Look at all these <laughs> these storylines now coming out of the woodwork. Now it's about supply chain. Able to sell products even cheaper than Circuit City, so Circuit City couldn't compete. Uh -huh. Um, I know Circuit City basically went out of business way before Best Buy, and likely they ran out of money. You know what I mean? Money to finance stuff. Y you think? So maybe they just didn't. Maybe they were they were late to the game. Best Look, Industry Insider decides company that shuts down might have ran out of money. If I was first, I actually don't know the history of the company, so. Hey, dude, you should be a business analyst. Fight people periodically. So let me get this straight. Company that shuts down when they realize they're not being profitable might not have much money. Okay, okay. I'm getting it. I'm learning. Wow. Get it? Periodically? Anyway, Haseo says, speaking of books, do you still have any or do you believe we should keep paper books around? Because nowadays we can read everything online. Uh, oh, God. <clears throat> I'm a believer that you should have a medium that suits you if you, if you enjoy reading a paper <laughs> you book. You should have a medium should... that suits you. My take on this is you should have a medium that suits you. Okay? Let's keep going. I'm not going to stop there. A purposely missed quick time. All right, 2003. Almost 20 years ago. Feels like yesterday. 2003. I worked at Circuit City at the time. Yeah. Circuit City. Some computers. I was there for about two years. That's it. 2021. One Black Friday, I was like, now this is when I was younger. And I was, you know, I was a lot more. Black Friday story? Adventurous. Let's put it that way. Um, and I actually wanted to see, just for the hell of it. Just for the hell of it? I wanted to see 1. what 5. it was all about going out on a Black Friday. Remember, I, he says, everyone that went out is an idiot. He went out for nothing. Continue, please. I wanted please. to see what it's like shopping for the doorbusters. Oh, God, yeah. doorbusters. So Shut the fuck up with the doorbusters. I went to a circuit city probably about an hour before the doors opened. I got uh -huh. a coffee and a breakfast sandwich from like a Dunkin' Donuts or something like that because they were open crack of dawn for Black Friday. Okay. And I drove over to Circuit City. I wanted to see what it was all about. Now, this is like an hour before they opened, okay? Uh -huh. I'm driving into the mall parking lot, and there's Circuit City on my left, so I'm going to turn into the Circuit City parking lot. As I do this... Oh, now we're getting hand graphs for the driving. Okay. The stories get more detailed as the years go. People are in the dark, by the way, because it's dark. It's like, you know, five in the morning, maybe. Ooh, dark. People are running, running through the parking lot in front of my moving car, cutting me off. They're running for the front doors of Circuit City. Why? Because a mob had started to form at the front door. The store wasn't opening, but people are so dumb, they actually convinced themselves they were about to open, and then uh -huh. if they didn't get there in time, they were going to miss out on the doorbuster specials. So they were like, full ch like a bull, full run charging through the parking lot, running in front of my car. I had to slam on the brakes. Like, what the fuck? Like, now are you insane? You, earlier you mentioned people running into the car. I'm wondering where they went. You, what, for what? You're going to stick a fucking RAM for your computer? You're going to get hit by a car? Like, what the fuck is with these fucking people? And it was insane because I remember I just sat there. I actually parked there in the lot and just was, I was having my coffee. I was eating my, my bagel sandwich. Oh, God. Just, bagel sandwich, sausage running down his face, oil, in the, grease in the, in the goatee there. Can you imagine it? Observing. Listening to the darkness. I believe in a thing called love. Oh, boy, these fucking idiots over here. What do they do? <laughs> these fucking idiots are doing something. I'm just going to check shit out. I'm not going to buy anything today. I believe in a thing called love. <laughs> These people are, in, are are literally insane. They're like trying to crawl over each other. They're gonna fight to try to be the first into the store. Okay, and I remember it was. I'm not even kidding. About another hour before the doors open, these people were running through the parking lot to get to the doors before they opened an hour early and uh, risking getting hit by a car. Uh -huh. For what? What the fuck is wrong with you? Gugats. So saving some money on like a television or something is worth dying. Yes, it is. And I, I actually remember later that day I, I went bought... to the mall to see what kind of Let's sales much... were at the mall. They were Let's... all terrible. Okay. I went back then, FYE was a big thing. I went to <laughs> FYE, and it was like, the best deal was like used DVDs were like $5 each. Back then, DVDs were actually expensive. $5 each now? The price keeps changing. We're $5 each now. How much did you buy? So it was like, oh, a used DVD for 5 bucks, and you could buy like, you know, 10, 15 movies for like 50 bucks. But they were used, so half of them probably didn't even work anyway. Like that oh, was You said they all work, sir. Thanks, though. You said they all work. Now they don't work anymore? What happened? Bucks. But they were used. So half of them probably didn't even work anyway. Like, that was the best deal at FYE. And would if you bought them, wouldn't you know if they were? Because I hope you didn't just buy them for no reason and not watch them. You didn't want to just, you know, make your collection more, have more of them, right? You actually watched them, right? All the normal, all the stuff, nothing was at a good price. You know, nothing was at a good sale price. Uh-huh, nothing, um, dude. 
And I just remember saying, these people are, why would they act like this besides hype? Like, they get, they buy so much into hype that they believe that these things are deals worth risking their health and, and livelihood and, and life for, when in reality, it's just, you're... Now we're back to bl b the Black Friday being risking your life, by the way. Idiot. Uh -huh. You you fell for the mob mentality bullshit. You're such a, yep. you're, you're, you're a dunce. You, were you dunce. know what gets me? What gets you? I was actually just saying this. Uh, I was just thinking this this morning. Door buster. Okay. <laughs> Come on, you gotta be kidding me. How can we get a door buster segment? You said door buster 14 times already okay. today. The whole premise of a door buster. Think oh, about God. what that term means. Busting down the door of the store. We are gonna to pig explain door buster. Now, do you think that any retail store actually wants customers to literally kick down their front doors and destroy? How is it possible to take marketing language this literal? How? How? the front of the store to buy something on black friday no so then why does the company the, uh, you, you know i went to best buy they had a drop dead deal okay and like you gotta die does that mean you gotta die to get the deal i mean what the fuck i mean drop dead deal what i don't want to die for that deal then you're okay let's say you use the drop dead deal okay and then you get your dvd for five dollars and then you're dead okay then what you're dead okay so i hope it's worth it these drop dead deals, dude. Advertise the deals as door busters. You're actually promoting violence and bad behavior oh in the name God. of the sale that you have on Black Friday. Oh my like God. Like you're actually promoting that behavior oh by calling it a door buster. You make people get hyped to grind up for that door and burst through the fucking door dude. to grab that. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are dude. you fucking stupid? And the answer is yes. <laughs> These retail companies have become so desperate for sales now, they literally will risk the livelihood of their employees excuse me, let risk the health and safety of their You have got to be kidding me. the store in order to make an extra buck on Black Friday. That's how fucked up these companies have become. <laughs> Any door buster. No, don't say door buster, you dumb piece of shit. You're going to hurt people. Anyway. What do you want it? To um, all right. So ladies <laughs> oh and gentlemen, last, last couple shout outs. That's the special one right there. I want to save that. That's some, I need to clip some Twitter for that right there. Liter thinking marketing speak is real. By that is yesterday... <clears throat> Since I knew my schedule was going to be thrown out of uh, out of whack by Black Friday, oh, being God, that my Black Friday, my wife works retail, and I wanted to drive her to work and drop her off, and then pick her up later on at night, uh, in order to avoid any kind of problems for uh -huh. her. What happened? I knew this was going to affect my streams, and therefore I said, you know what, I'm purposely going to make it so that the entire day on Friday is multiplayer. That way. It doesn't matter that I have an interruption in the middle of a stream. It's just multiplayer matches. It's not like, oh, we're in the middle of a great story element. We play for 20 minutes. Now we got to stop. And you we're in the middle of a great story element. Got to wait like an hour and a half for me to come back. Or Aren't anything. story elements like part of the story, not including the actual telling of the story? Like one story element could be like, um, you know, betrayal or something. Isn't that how story element, what story element means? Something like that. <clears throat> Call me crazy. Excuse me. So... It went well. Yesterday went well. Uh -huh, although, admittedly, for those of you who are not here, just so you know, Black Friday was terrible out there. Um, the traffic to get to my wife's job was not so bad. But as soon as we hit the parking lot of the shopping center she worked at, it was a nightmare. It was bumper to bumper traffic um, and a bunch of nut jobs, basically acting like animals. And uh, I can't uh -huh. imagine what possesses them to act like this that. This is 2021, by the way. You know, uh -huh. some of the most crazy, stupid people go out on Black Friday. I don't know what else to say. Uh, Let's say, dude, like you did. We're sitting there in the parking lot trying to get through the lot to drop off Kat at her job. And it's like 25 minutes to get across a parking lot uh -huh. because it's bumper to bumper. There's no parking anywhere. Everyone's looking for parking. Everyone's driving like a maniac. Well, we were in a line, bumper to bumper, waiting to turn. Uh -huh. And a guy several cars behind us was so infuriated at the wait. He drives out from our line and drives into oncoming traffic. There's still cars coming that way. He's driving in oncoming traffic, veering uh -huh. around them, yep. in and out of oncoming traffic. To try to go. Yeah, wouldn't you let him everyone. get out of the car at that point? And, and basically cut everyone off because he doesn't care about anyone else but himself. At the same time that he's doing that, okay, someone two cars ahead of us decides simultaneously they want to do a, an illegal U-turn in the middle of this busy parking lot. So we got this guy veering left and right here and this person turning like this and they stop None like of this, this happened. one None inch of this away happened. from each other, almost clobbering each other. Things okay? that never happened, adding this to the list. And we, we're literally sitting there staring at this like, you know, you hear the stories about Black Friday. Yeah, no, no. She's looking years, at her phone, really... watching other hot streamers stream, and you're just staring at it. That's what was going on. You know, I told you guys stories about my Black Friday experience in the past. People running in front of my car at like four in the morning to try to get a deal at Circuit City when they used to exist, even though the doors. You said they ran into your car before. We're locked for another hour. 
some of the most biggest insanity shit, you know. Is it hilarious? So anyway, uh, mm-hmm. finally got dropped off my wife, and then it took me about 20 more minutes just to get out of the parking lot to the streets, and then it took me like another half an hour to That's get where home Jenna lives. because the traffic was terrible on the way home. So essentially, a trip that normally would be like 15 minutes to get there, 15 minutes back, took an hour and a half. Oh my so it god. did throw my stream oh my god. out of whack. I'm very happy. How did you that survive that? I did um, do what I did. Because if I hadn't done that, Cat would have never... Not hearing about this. Next. <laughs> what was I doing in the years 2001 and 2005? I was going to college. I was working at Circuit City for a lot of that time. City? I was playing Street Fighter competitively in arcades. Mostly Marvel vs. Capcom 2, but I dabbled in like CBS 2. Uh, and was traveling and playing mm-hmm. in said tournaments and stuff. Great. That's what I was doing in those years. Awesome. <clears throat> That's it there. We're Mission rounding up Yaw here. 79. That's sig- significant, actually. Isn't that... I think that's Genova, if I remember correctly. Economic Report Space Dev Program. This is the Space Dev Research Laboratory. Click on the plate in front of each library to see which it is. Circus City, of course. You know, Circus City, I used to go to Circus City all the time, and I worked at Circus City for for about a year or more. So, nice. yeah, Circus City, I was totally a, a major uh, customer there. <laughs> the documentary said I had one of the ugliest designs. Major venues. customer there. My favorite and yours, Bassmaster time. We got the hat. An anonymous tipper took me a dollar for these. Is any advice you can give to someone who may be starting up a cashier's job at a grocery store? Not really, and why I say that is because I've never actually been a formal cashier. I can't I hear you. I did the city, and when I worked there, um, I did work the cashier sometimes, but not often. That I, was, I was like you. a backup cashier. I was the one who worked in the electronics department because I knew about computers. And then I actually learned all about digital cameras when I worked at Circuit City. And I actually really liked the digital camera department. So that was where my forte was, cameras and Hello? Uh, computers. Sir? So I didn't really do okay. much at the cashier job. I never had like a job at a grocery store or a normal store where you just can't check people out. I never did that. All right. That was the Get out of here. We're back. Sorry to say we're back. Did I witness Black Friday fights? Like in person people fighting each other on Black Friday? No, I never did. I saw it on Twitter. That's why all my thoughts on Black Friday come from outside of that time in the parking lot where people ran into my car. And when I was out, because I just wanted to check it out. I didn't know. I've told my Black Friday stories uh-huh. once, just just for the sake of seeing what it was, because I wasn't intending to buy anything. I drove to a Circuit City in the morning before it had opened for the doorbusters. And as I was driving into the lot, there were literally people rushing the store, running in front of my moving car in the lot yes. while I was driving. I'm like, what are you doing? You're going to get hit. You're out of your fucking minds. They were just like bolting for the front door uh-huh. and it didn't matter because the front door was locked they were just idiots idiots too. um and then when i worked at, i told you guys the stories about best buy number one there was the guy who was trying to return a game i can't remember if it was on black friday or just okay, after let's hear black the story friday. again so he was trying to return a video game uh-huh. and the people at the customer service desk told him you can't return a game you can only exchange it for the equal game because we don't know if you played it and beat it or trying to return it now so he's like well then Fuck this! And he grabbed the game, and he literally took the box, because it was still in, like, the, uh... Oh, my God. Uh... Hold on. It was in the box. It wasn't just, like, the disc. It was in the whole box. So he was like, fuck this! And he yelled out, and he went like this, and he threw it like this, okay? And when he threw it, it basically did this giant arc in the store, flopping like this. (laughs) And you can watch it go all the way from the customer service desk all the way over the electronics into the center of the store, into the media No, area, it, this is false. To which it landed, and you heard a guy yell, Oh, what the hell was that? So. Now, okay. Let's just keep listening. We're, 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 we're witnessing mental illness right basically, here. Basically, he assaulted someone with this game. He assaulted someone? So we had a security guard at the time who was a former Marine. Now he's a security guard. Now he's a security guard. That's the added. And he ran over to the guy. He grabbed his arm. He tossed it behind him, wrenching him, basically like like he was like a citizen's arrest. And he basically for- <laughs> putting your arm around someone and escorting that's a citizen's arrest. Forcefully ejected the guy out the front door onto his ass onto the concrete and said, "Don't and stay out. Never fucking come back." <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So that was a good story. Okay. So um, now he's upgraded from a random former marine to be the security guard that just kicked him out. Kicked him out, like, get, stay out of here, all right? You're not welcome here anymore. 
Well, it's a catch B. I don't know what this is for. Something Apple, obviously. Apple computers. iTunes. Maybe he's an iTunes dad. Maybe this is like the dawn of iTunes. Oh, so he has an iPod. Oh, yeah. God. We're into 2022 now. That's the old now, school iPod. Five more oh, videos. Oh, is this, is this the original iPod? Is this even the iPod? I think it is. Yeah, this is like the original iPod ad. Holy shit, dude. You're cool. He's dancing. Because I remember that old iPods all look like that. Hey, it looks like they had the mini and everything. Uh-huh. Uh, you never leave your house to keep dancing like that. iPod a thousand songs his comment there was you're never going to leave your house if you keep dancing like that that was the comment in your pocket yeah that was yeah look first ipod commercial 2001 so yeah that's interesting because you know Fuck back yeah. then um back Hello? then ipods were very different yeah i remember when ipods first hit the market because i was working at circuit city <laughs> and when they hit the market everyone's like what the hell is that because it kind of looked like a little, you know, it didn't look like anything. It's like a little box, it like the size, almost like the size of a pack of cigarettes. But it had like a screen and everything on it. And it had that uh -huh. touch. Yeah, they look exactly like a pack of cigarettes. That's how I would describe the form factor. The front. And basically, you know, that was the first digital device where you could put music on it. And then all of a sudden, no one ever needed a CD player like ever again. So CD players like became obsolete almost overnight. And uh -huh. everyone wanted an iPod. But the problem was iPods were super expensive. Like, they were hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So, what ended up happening was other companies figured out that they could compete if they made things that were a little cheaper. So, the first thing they, <laughs> Imagine that. they did is they had um, mini CDs, if I remember correctly, where they were smaller than regular CDs, but they were about the size of iPods, and you could play, like, a mini CD player. Ooh. And then after that, they made MP3 players. And then MP3s, you could basically rip any music you wanted off of any CD and add it to your music library, and mm -hmm. then just load it you know, right into your player. And so when I was working at Circuit City, I remember that they started like launching all these competitors uh -huh. to the iPod at the time. I remember that specifically. Imagine that. And, uh, you know, they were all like, like people would always come in and ask me, what's the best MP3 player? And I'd be like, they're all the same. Like they're literally all the same. The only difference <laughs> is like the bells and whistles. So the iPod. So you're telling me they're different. Is You're telling me they're all the same, but their features are different. Okay. Got it. Got it. God has the screen with the full. Okay, thanks. Oh, well, thanks, sir. That helps me out a lot. I'll be, I'll make an informed decision now. Full name of the song and it has the touch screen on the front, right? But the other MP3 player does exactly the same thing, but it doesn't have all the features, right? <laughs> so I remember I used to sell them. Um, at the, Like I said, at Circuit City, they used to have uh, like Black uh -huh. Friday sale and shit. You know, what's the best MP3 player today? But the thing is, that was the original iPod. That was you saw how big it was. Uh -huh. Then they just shrunk them down. iPod Mini was like real small. You're kidding? And that me. was the era when they started selling all those docks. Oh God, the iPhone. Excuse me, the iPod. You gotta dock. be kidding me. Mini was smaller. Like this fucking did like a stereo. Come on. Just, you put your iPod into it, and it would play the music huh? through the speakers and everything. So that was an interesting ad. I mean, obviously, it effectively showed how you use it, which was nice. It actually showed you. The <laughs> it effectively showed how you use it. You know, he was listening to music. Or you just loaded in there or whatever. Uh -huh. That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad, dude. All right, four more, five more videos left. We gotta well, the finish up. Modern have much easier arcade mode for sure. No, I never played Dead to Rights for the original Xbox. Shit black. Great I, I know what it is. Was that sure. shit black? No, I never played Dead to Rights for the original Xbox. Shit black. I, I know what it is. <laughs> Sorry, shit black. I never played the original Dead to Rights. I remember correctly. I think I was working at Best Buy, uh, or or Circuit City. I remember seeing the game box uh -huh. in the store. I saw the game box, shelf. dude. Hype. But I've never played it. Never played it. Shit Black. Great question, though. Never played the original Dead to Rights, but he did see it, Shit Black. Thanks for that. Four videos left. We're doing that. Let me show you something really impressive. This is this is a very old camera, you can tell. Oh, you think? <laughs> you think? We got a regular reacting king here. Hang on a second. This looks kind of old. Wait a second. This You, you can tell this is pretty old. How many megapixels is it? <laughs> five. Only a five megapixel camera. So this is like super duper old. Wait a minute. You know, How do you I used to sell old? cameras just like this. Okay. Um, at like Circuit City and Best Buy when cool. I worked at those stores. Five megapixel cameras. That's how outdated this is, right? But uh, so let's see what happens. I wonder what goes wrong here. That picture. Remember the picture of the horse I showed you earlier? Well, here it is, blown up. What? What are you stupid? <laughs> 
I'm watching chat very carefully here with his comment. This is a big horse. What? Order now. You get the camera. You He's get the looking. printer. 4X optical He's not looking zoom. at the picture. What an idiot. Schneider lens. Photo printer. What a dunce. SD card. Like, this Look. is a funny thing. Like, you you made a mistake, and it should be funny. Like, you just, you know? You just say, like, hey, oh, it's, just, it's not a horse. It's a butterfly. I'm an at idiot. that horse. <laughs> Look at the, the picture, you tail, fucking idiot. <laughs> what a complete <laughs> moron. He was, he's not looking. Okay, my producer, Tara Cates, just told me this isn't a horse, it's a butterfly. Yeah, actually, it may in fact be a moth. But look at what the Zoom did. I mean, you what can a see details idiot. in the antenna. This dude's just trying to make a paycheck. <laughs> Why would he not even look at it? All right, we're going past. If he gets shut down, we'll go. Three okay. videos left. Lazy video game reviews. I mean, a lazy gamer review. Standably LPR. limited. And that's all. Oh, for that was it. That was the end anyway. All right. You know what I was going to say was, what? I used to see, when I used to work at Circuit City and then oh, later God. at Best Buy, they used to pull that shit where it'd be like, look at this PC that looks totally weird. Oh, but that's for your, your media center, right? So play all your music and movies uh -huh. through this. And it was like, well, how do you do it? Oh, here's a bunch of memory cards, burn a CD. It wasn't practical. Like today, <laughs> we have those. Do you want to know what those are called? What? Amazon Fire Sticks, Whoa. or what's the Google version? There's two or three different versions. There's the Apple version too. They're tiny little devices you simply plug into your, your TV and they run apps to give you all the stuff you want, your music, your movies, your TV, and it's wireless to your internet. You didn't need a three fucking thousand dollar. Okay, are you explaining how technology has advanced in that time? I mean, that's gonna happen. Are you calling them guys idiots? Computer to do it. They were trying to literally rip you off uh -huh, by repacking. Yeah, Roku stick. That's another one. The Roku stick. Roku. They, it the was Roku. ahead of its time for what they were trying to do. It but was they were the trying Roku. to do something for three thousand dollars that today you can buy, no exaggeration, off Amazon for forty dollars. It was the early two thousands when there wasn't even a thought about a fucking Roku or a Fire Stick. So you paid a lot of money for that same feat, the same features. I don't understand how this is like oh, these fucking idiots in the early two thousands, dude. They, like, didn't even have fire sticks. I mean, what? You know? Dudes, back in the days of medieval times, like, they didn't have washing machines. Those fucking assholes, am I right? What? So. Okay. Uh -huh. We okay. still got some time for more. Chromecast for more. is the Google version. Thank you. Chromecast. Is Chromecast. Ah, Shout out to Blabs for the Harry Potter content. Two videos left. Hey. I don't, remember, I don't remember, there's remember a time when Firewire was that prominent. Like, I remember when I worked at, like, Circuit City. They are like, you need to have that Firewire cable for your computer. And everyone was like, why? I was like, oh, because everything's going to use it. And then nothing ever did. Right? It was like, everything would just could use USB, too. So why would you care about Firewire? Even though mm -hmm. I know Firewire was faster transfer, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, everyone said that. Uh -huh. Oh, Derek, all this has been thrown out. I don't have any yep. of this. Like, literally not a single thing we're watching now do I have. Maybe the zapper. Ah. Maybe <laughs> shout outs to Derek, who's we're in Derek vision right now. Good timing, Derek. Shout outs to Derek. I think we just could use USB too, so why would you care about Firewire? Even though I know Firewire was faster transfer, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Uh okay. Some no, people Derek, actually do care about out. transfer speeds. I don't have any of this. Like literally not a single thing we're watching now do I have. This is the amount of shit I bought with that I didn't need. Get it? Get the point? Anyway, we watched this for like seven minutes. Let's uh let's continue on here. Yeah. This is all the shit I bought that I didn't need. This is why Black Friday sucks because I can't say bye to and I can't say no to any marketing scheme on earth. Last video and I got to get out of here after this. So that was nice, you know. My job today I absolutely love because I love, love video it, games. I love having an audience to hang out and react with every day. Uh -huh, love it. Dude. Um it's super fun. So I don't know specifically what the profession would be. But if it was just a profession that I, it was just something so trivial, meaningless, and I had absolutely no affinity towards it, that mm -hmm. would probably drive me nuts. Uh, what is your favorite curse word? Uh, shitty dick. Uh, all right. It's two. Let's end right there. You What's your favorite curse word? Shitty dicks. And we'll end on that note right now. All right, guys. That'll do it. Let's get to our iceberg here. I'll show it to you one more time. This episode was a bit of a grind. Derek's blocking a bit, but you can see it. Um, Jobs is going to be... Come on, Derek. Get out of here, Derek. You're blocking... You're, you're killing the flow here, Derek. Um, The 360 shit story, I do have the video. But why don't we play that on that being said? That's kind of a fun field trip on that being said. We can play the three, 360 shit story on that being said as the opener. 
I got to get out of here to pick up the kids for real. So anyways, the jobs, this is the third edition of the job employment series. Two more editions left. We have Best Buy and then we have Sikorsky and you better hang on to your hat. So next Thursday we'll do Best Buy and the Thursday after that it is Sikorsky time. So hold on to your fucking hats for that. That being said, it's starting in about 50 minutes. I'm not going to do music. I don't have time to set it up. I got to get out of here. But you're all fucking legends. It's very meaningful to me, hanging out, all the contributions. It was a lot of fun. And we'll see you at that being said. And, of course, on Saturday, we're starting the Every Ask the King series starting on Saturday. So you're all legends. Thanks so much, everybody. And uh, I'll redirect you to that being said after the outro song. You're all fucking legends. Thanks, everybody. Bye.